Oh. You're an early bird. Well, now it is. Old habits. Best ones in my experience. What can I do for you? A cup of tea had hit the spot. I could uh, get those uh, sorted and marked up for delivery. Right. I'll put kettle on. Still two sugars, I assume. Yeah, can kip anywhere, me. Number of times he woke us up at the bus terminus. They thought I was dead one time. The driver fainted when he yawned. Ooh. I hope Julie got some rest. We best wake her up. She'll be late. Don't worry, I'm, I'm not going in. Yeah, I figured as much. I'll smooth it over with Luke. <sighs> Thanks. How are you feeling? Oh, I've been better. <laughs> Well, not that I don't appreciate you, you letting me stay and, and giving up your bed. And... No worries. You can stop as long as you like. Thank you. Both of you. Can I get you a brew or...? Oh, I can usually face anyone or anything with a mug of tea in my belly. Not this time. No matter how long you leave the bag in. No one expects you to take this in your stride. There's just no making sense of some things. I know. I've tried. Turned it round and round. Searching for an angle so it looks all right. Not quite so terrible. <sighs> Fat chance. <sighs> We're stuck with each other, me and the truth. Neither of us wanted. Stuck in that little bedroom. Morning. Morning. So, what's the latest? I don't know. I haven't looked at it yet. I think we both know that's not what I mean. I wish I could say I didn't want to talk about it, but I want to talk about nothing else. Went down to the canal last night. She's back. How was she? I don't know. I wanted to talk to her. But the flesh was weak. Mm, all too weak, or not weak enough. I don't know. So what are you going to do? Well, I have to talk to her. But I've got no choice. I mean, the last thing I want to do is hurt people. People have done nothing wrong. Far from it. But? But I thought that novel was the end of something, but it wasn't. It reminded me of how I used to be and what I'd imagined for myself. And I thought those chances had all gone. So, I can't be a literary success, but the rest, it's all there, on that boat. Everything I'd ever wanted, and more. How can I walk away from that? How could anybody? Good. Yeah, well, I didn't expect you to come in. Yeah, well, it must have been a shock. One last full of surprises, eh? <laughs> No, 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 of course not. No, well, it, it's bound to be upsetting. Mm. Yeah, well, look, I've got to go because I've got to find someone to cover. OK, yeah, take care. OK, bye-bye. Yeah. What? Life's full of surprises. Yeah, she's just discovered that her dad's a paedophile. Not one spot the ball. Well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Get away, you're not lost at Samaritans, you love. Ooh, is that from your mum, then? Yeah, I don't believe this. No, no, do I. Who bothers sending postcards these days and only beat them on? But she flipping won't. Andy, much better, but I'm worn out. I'm staying for a few weeks, R&R. &R. Well, what does R&R &R mean? Ridiculous. Reckless, really inconvenient. Take your pick. Nothing. You learnt nothing. Rita was standing there, and you didn't even ask. It's called sensitivity. Uselessness, more like. Are you not concerned? Oh, concerned? That's how you characterise your interest, is it? Of course. 
I want to offer Rita the benefit of my wisdom. I doubt Rita would have much to say right now. I could tell her how to spot a pervert at ten paces. I knew he were a wrong un. Well, you kept it to yourself. He wasn't courting me. Happen I were too old for him. Sixty years too old. How was Rita, anyway? Is this really all we've got to talk about, backstreet tittle-tattle? I mean, there is a world at the end of this terrace. Turn left or right, you won't miss it. Ken! I'm sorry, but if you're going to spend your days endlessly talking about other people's affairs, talk about somebody interesting with something important to say. Like the directors of your subtitle smut, you mean? Or some idiot who turns a urinal on its end and calls it art? Not in this house. No, not in this house. You've got grandkids. The thought of a paedophile walking the streets is of more importance to this family than anything Melvin Bragg has to say for himself. Oh, I'm taking the dog for a walk. Come on. Hello. Oh. Emily said you'd be over here. Uh, well, yes, you see, I, I, I was needed. I'm so sorry. You're very brave opening up like this. Well, you know, It's I... just another working day. The wheels of commerce stop for no man. I know, but I... Was there something you wanted, Mary? I've worked out a professional itinerary for us. Oh. How are you with heights? What? Well, I thought we could navigate an alpine pass, you see, but the Furka's 8,000 feet up. I beg your pardon? The Furka Pass in Switzerland. There's some smashing views, but we have to agree on the route. Look, Norris, I'm fine. Why don't you two... Just go over the road. Oh, and, and leave the magazine orders in chaos. I mean, it was bad enough, Kirk, getting Roy's history today. We don't want Roy with Kirk's nuts on his doormat, do we? No, but make yourself useful. Put kettle on and... Hey, I made the last brew. I didn't. I distinctly remember because you said yours was stewed and should come with the crusty roll. Yeah, and I proceeded to show you how to make a proper cup of tea. Oh, no, you made yourself one, well, not me. I don't call that a proper tea run in my book. <sighs> Thank you very much indeed. Good morning and a big, big welcome to the show. Now, first today is Cheyenne. She's here to try Turn it to off. Her relationship with son Mickey. Thought it'd take my mind off things. Jeremy Kyle. You'd have to go some to top this. Still can't believe it. Well, you saw him, he was banged to rights. At least he had the decency to not pretend otherwise, not like he knows the meaning of the word. It'd be all right, ma'am. I don't want to see anyone. I'm not ready yet. Hey, and um, is your mum all right? Yeah, she's fine. She doesn't want to see you. Oh, I mean, she doesn't want to see anyone. Look, it's all right. Come through, Deirdre. Well, I thought you said you didn't want to see Never anyone. Never mind. I didn't want to intrude. I, I was just worried, that's all. It's fine. I've got to face people sometime. Nobody's going to judge you, love. You can't be held accountable for what your father's done. No. You know what folk are like round here. As soon as I set foot out of that door, I'll be deafened by the whispers. Good question. You'd best come aboard. There you go, Rita. Have you not made Mary one? Oh, oh I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realise you were stopping. Well, we do have to make some decisions. We are leaving at the weekend. Yeah, love, have mine. No, no, I, I'm fine. I, I just need Norris. Well, what, what, what is it we have to discuss? The route, as I say. Um, here's what I've outlined. I thought we could pick up the M602, then join the M62, then um, intersect at the M6 at the Croft Interchange. Uh, perhaps we should fast forward to Calais. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> Right. Calais. Oh, very important. Well? You, you don't mind eating at Toddington Services en route? No. Only they've got a little chef. 
Now, look, perhaps we should uh, discuss this across the road. I, I think so. I mean, we are leaving at the weekend. Yes, well, I'll see you tonight. Tonight? Yeah, after we close. Oh, we've a lot to do, Norris. We're yeah, leaving yes, at the weekend. Yes, I know, weekend. I know, but he did. Bye-bye, love. Bye-bye. Didn't even know Paula was expecting. One minute we're living in each other's pockets. Next minute, she's moved. Why didn't they get the police involved? Different times. All about respectability, keeping face. Paula's been living with it ever since. I was way out of order with her last night. You were in shock, love. None of us want to think the worst of our loved ones. I know that only too well. Even so. When she told me it was Latham, the teacher, I just... I wanted to look him up in the phone book. I wanted to tell him exactly what I thought of him. I want Paula to go to the police. As soon as I find out the truth, the truth that doesn't suit me, I blame her, I accuse her. What kind of hypocrite am I, eh? Have you seen him since? I can't bear to think of him, let alone see him. I told Paula that Latham had Taken her childhood. Except it was my dad. And now he's destroyed mine and all. I've missed you. How's your wife? My conscience needs no pricking. I'm all too well aware of what I've done. Then why did you do it? Lie to us. And carry on lying. It was... It was all so unnecessary. I didn't intend to deceive anyone. It was one small omission that just snowballed. All right, yes, I, I could have put a stop to it, but uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to jeopardise all this. We could still have been friends. There would never have been enough for either of us. I think I've known as much since that first afternoon. This is what I've always craved. Don't idealise me, Ken. This is no Shangri-La. It gets cold on here at night and I look a fright in the mornings and that is a chemical toilet back there. Life on this boat is as real and as imperfect as anywhere else. And I adore those imperfections. Well, maybe not the chemical toilet. <laughs> yes, perhaps I have mythologized this place, but not you. I've fallen in love with you, Martha. Not a lifestyle. Tiling seem pretty cut up. Good riddance to bad rubbish, I suppose. Ooh, how'd you get your head around something like that? Shouldn't start yet. It's all over the place. Maybe we should pop in, you know, get, get some flowers or something. Whoa, 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 stay on. Nobody's died. Anyway, I've already spoke to her. You can go round if you like. On the other hand, she probably needs, um... Space. Nail on head. Mm. Yeah, she'll be off for a while, I reckon. I thought she what fat Brenda's like for overtime. Well, you can sort that one out. I've got enough firefighting to do at the pub, courtesy of Judy flipping charmers. Me? Me mum. You're not spoken to her. Not for a few days. I haven't been able to get hold of her, mate. No, I bet you haven't. No postcards. A few weeks? Oh, come on, you're telling me that if you could have had a couple more weeks sat in your sun lounge just sipping cervezas? I, I would have still come back when I did. I was missing her. A lot more than she's missing me, obviously. Oh, don't take it to heart, mate. 
She's always been very fond of the sun, sea, sand, etc. It's the etc that I'm worried about. Your mother's very fond of etc. You worry too much, mate. Perhaps it's, you know, pop over. Surprise her. Uh, you're stopping here. I've got enough staffing problems without you flying south for the winter. You overdid it on the butter again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't get it at home, just a thinnest layer of low-fat spread. It's kept you fit. I suppose. You know, when I saw you moored here last night, I felt like a drowning man being thrown a rope, or Eccles being plucked from the water. That dog has a lot to answer for. Why did you come back? Well, I'd like to say that it was coincidence, you know, play it cool, but I'm not that good an actress. You're being hard on yourself. I was when I cast off from here. Don't understand. Well, I told you not to idealise me, but had I had to make up a blueprint of someone to occupy that chair, I tell you, it would not be so very different. Just. Wouldn't have been married, though. Oh, I was swore I'd never do this to anyone. You were oblivious. You did nothing wrong. I came back. Because much as your lie had hurt me, I tell you, what hurt me more was the thought that I'd... never see you again. You mean you forgive? Yeah, uh, that is much too noble a sentiment. No, I decided to be selfish. I've waited a long time for you, Ken. And you may never come again. That's why I returned. And I've been waiting here all week, hoping against hope that you'd... wander by. <laughs> so... How's that for playing it cool, eh? So what comes into your head when you think of your dad? Big. He's always been big. Especially when I was little. And personality-wise, tell me your childhood memories. I followed him round the kennels a lot. He could empty a tin of pal with one smack of his hand. Mm -hmm. I'd be shaking the tin, covering myself in it. Not him. Wallop. <laughs> done. And what else? Uh, oh, yeah. I was getting picked on once, so we got a Rottweiler and a Doberman and walked me into school, right into the middle of the playground. I didn't get any aggro after that. Hmm. So a bit of a hero then? Yeah, I suppose. So was my dad. He went on top secret missions behind enemy lines. You couldn't put a pinpoint on his chest for medals. Did he? Mm. I thought Colin drove a coal wagon. Oh, not him. He's not the bloke I imagined when I was growing up. No. Oh, Manny was going to reappear one day. Chuck me up in the air and catch me. Promised me it never let me go again. I see. I'm sorry. Me too. Come here. Chaos! Absolute chaos! It was perfectly straightforward. One section for the weeklies, one for the fortnightlies, one for the monthlies and one for the quarterlies. What's wrong? Well, he's gone and plonked them all in alphabetical order. Well, I say alphabetical order. The man can't spell for toffee, which I notice he spells with one F. Oh, Rita, how could you be so daft as to let that man anywhere near my filing system? 
Oh, look. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that, that, that was insensitive of me. It's all right, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, oh, oh, Rita. Oh, Norris. Oh. How am I ever going to hold my head up out there? Oh, look. You can hold your head higher than any of them. But right now, you're going to rest it on a pillow, eh? Well, I make us a, a brew. Hmm? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, I barely slept wondering if I should come here. Not because it wasn't what I wanted, quite the opposite. No, I was... Well, I was frightened that you'd send me away for good. And there'd be no coming back. It's what I should do. But sometimes the right thing isn't that at all. For either of us. Which is all very well, but, um... Where do we go from here? a cloud. <laughs> if dogs could talk. <laughs> Thank you. I, I didn't know you used those tissues. I, I, I thought you preferred a more delicate one. Yeah, no. I like these big ones now. I don't know why. I've never liked cheap tissues, as you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just the same. <laughs> Do you know what I feel above all else? I feel silly. <laughs> it, it, it was nothing more than a friendship. <laughs> it was more than a friendship, Norris. Engagement aside, yes. And a little bit of grief. Is it not that, that that's only natural? Something's come to an abrupt and painful end. <laughs> Shall we go down and open up again? You're going nowhere. You're just going to sit here all afternoon with your feet up. Stewing, you mean? Allowing myself to feel pity and anger and resentment. I mean, you, you, you weren't to know he had such a... ..disappointing past. <laughs> oh, Rita. <laughs> you silly, silly old woman. <laughs> Riley! Riley! Shall I get it? Better add. Hey, be all right, Mum. Promise. Go on. <clears throat> I've tried to stay calm about this, but I can't. I bet you can't. Because all these years I've blamed myself. Thinking if I hadn't been such a tramp. I didn't mean the stuff I said, Paula. It was unkind. I, I was in shock. Shock? Tell you what shock is, Eileen. Sitting in a hospital bed in Blackburn in 1977 with a screaming baby in your lap. Everybody else surrounded with balloons. Nobody bought me a balloon, Eileen. I'm so sorry. The year before, I had braces on my teeth. Do you remember that? I do. The pain I went through. The shame. Revulsion. Do you remember me, Auntie Barbara? She never spoke to me again. Well, she was a hard faced cow, mind. I could have opened a window and flung myself in car park. 
If it hadn't been on ground floor, I might have done. Oh, clueless, Eileen. Oh, no. We, we were children. We were children. <laughs> Steve, this lad's been saying stuff about our Amy again. What shall I do? No, I will not let it lie. Well, shall I say something to his mother? No, we're waiting for him to come out now. He's got a Doctor Who lunchbox and a Spider-Man jacket. Hey, that's not him, is it? No, it's not him. Oh. Well, I've got to do summer. Do you know what? Forget it. Forget it, I'll start this. This reminds me of student days. Leeds. I shared a flat with a girl called Prue. <laughs> Well, I lived at home. I missed out on all that. Sunday afternoon. Don't want to hear any stories about boys, if that's what you're about to launch into. <laughs> We'd be here all day. Things weren't just possible then. They were probable. That's right. Youthful naivety. Before you know where you are, it's free bus pass time. I don't want a free bus pass. You ride a bike. <laughs> I used to be sexy. You still are. Very. <laughs> I still have the capacity for fun. And good conversation. You did what you wanted. You were brave enough. Before it's too late, do you mean? Not at all. You're still at the start of a new adventure. What a horrible thought for it to be too late. For what? For anything. Life is long and rich, Ken. We must savour it to the very last minute. Did it have to be so packed full of compromise? <sighs> My husband did what you're doing and I hated him for it. Unfortunately, I love you. Is it unfortunate? Hmm? I don't want your wife to get hurt. She won't find out. She should know. Do you want to be with me? Yes. Then why not tell her the truth? That you are in love with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Oh, oh. Blanche and Crone is the other day. Yeah, arguing about who was the poorest when they were kids. Blanche claimed that she only had one toy when she was little, right? A doll. And before she had it, a cousin had it. And before a cousin had it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, just like my dad, that is. So tell her what that other woman said. This other woman reckons my mother was spoiled because the only toy she had when she was growing up was a button. <laughs> <laughs> one button! Oh, it was a tiddlywink, a monocle, you name it. Oh, tell her what the other woman said. Oh, and then this other woman says, you had a button. You didn't know you were born. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh, anyway. <laughs> hey, is Blanche going to be there tonight? We're going around for his tea later, me and si. No, she's going out, thank God. <laughs> oh. So there's a, there's a place going begging at the table, isn't there? What? Would you like to come for your tea, Michelle? Oh, 
Jeez, you look no, I was joking. Don't don't put her on the spot like that. You what? He's embarrassed. I can't have tea with a mate and his family, can't I? Oh, of course you can, love. I feel about twelve now. <laughs> am I uh, am I blushing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you tomorrow. I don't know is the honest answer to that. I'm leaving tomorrow. An inspector calls in Tamworth. I'm playing Mrs. Burling. That's the snob we want. We start rehearsals on Tuesday. And then I'm visiting some friends in Little Venice. They've got some very pretty restaurants there. And then I'm going to the Norfolk Broads for a few months. Reading, relaxing, some more friends. I don't want these afternoons to ever end. Neither do I. I'll be gone by four. If you want the things you say you want from life, you'll be with me. looks mainly and I liked it I used to look forward to coming round in case he were there and then I looked at him just so he knew and then one day you and me were in your room and I went downstairs and you were coming upstairs and that's how it started when did your mum die? 1992. I only saw once before we moved away, after it all came out. Never said a word to me. She kept her head up. But she wouldn't look me in the eye. She died miserable. You should know that. She went off me and... I never knew why. It was me she hated. How she kept her nerve and hid this from me, I'll never know. I thought I didn't love her. Right now I do. I didn't know. I had no idea I was wrecking anybody's life, Eileen. Not your mother's. Not mine. Not yours. So he took you for drives and things? And things. How long did it go on? Weeks. Months. I've... All I know, it's, it, was, it was exciting. And then one day, you and me were on our way to school and I threw up in a hedge in Laycock Drive. Suddenly seemed like yesterday. Do you remember when we used to do Don't Go Breaking My Heart? Messing around, do you remember that? Yeah, it was around that time. And even now, to this day, if that song comes on radio when I'm driving, I can't see. Can't see for crying. Kiki D. <laughs> Colin Grimshaw. Life. As, as I understand it, Rita said everything she needed to say to you last night, so maybe you should just go back to where you came from. Where I came from? It's all right, Norris. You can give us a minute. I don't want to give you a minute. In the back. <sighs> honestly. Never mind, honestly. He's right. Rita, last night was difficult for everyone. And things were going so beautifully. Look, anyone can hide anything. You, you deceived her. Norris. You deceived everybody. In the back. It's like having Rumpelstiltskin selling sweets. You can have this back, Colin. Take it away from me. I committed an indiscretion many, many years ago. You're committing one now. It was rash. 
It was reckless, it was born of vanity, boredom, lust. But I'm begging you not to abandon me. You don't want to live the rest of your life without me, do you, my darling? Please leave me alone. I might be your last chance for happiness, for laughter, for company. I'll get my laughs elsewhere, thank you. And I don't do so bad for company, despite what I say about you. Leave me alone, please. Make things a little bit easier. Just leave me be. I'm the same man you fell in love with. No, that's not the case. It's very much the case. Look at me. The very same man. It's a great, great pity. Leave me be. Duh. 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 Oh, right. Duh. D. OK. D. Nope. Sorry. Oh. Nope. There's his head. Nope. Q. Q? <laughs> Q? No. Well, there's no. no need to say it like that. <laughs> mm, M? M. Ah. Nope. Oh. <laughs> oh, here's Grandad. I can. Hey, hiya. Hey, you've missed your tea. Oh, it's all right. I'll warm you some up. We're just playing hangman, but there is the distinct feeling that Peter is cheating. No, I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. Peter, is it Beethoven's Fifth in C minor? <laughs> Everyone liked me. Everyone liked me, and then boom. I might be identified by one mistake, a mistake I made so long ago. You abused an underage girl. You're that person. Well, you make it sound very different from how it actually was. I was much, much younger for a start. You were 38, Dad. And that girl. All lipstick and confidence. Well, you know what she looked like. That girl. Her name's Paula. She knew what she was doing. How could she know what she was doing, putting herself in that position? She had a woman's body and a woman's mind. I don't think either of us could have helped it. Well, maybe she couldn't, Dad. But you could. Responsibility. Restraint. It was foolish. So, so foolish. You destroyed two families. And whether you like the term or not, however newfangled it might all seem to you, what you did with Paula was abuse. In fact, what you did with her was rape. Is that what you call it? When a young woman asks you to pick her up from a nightclub at one o'clock in the morning? Is that abuse? It is, when she's 14 years old! It was nothing of the sort, Eileen. You judged, yes, but it was not abuse, it was not rape. I'll tell you what they call it these days. They call it a midlife crisis. Here was a young woman who wanted me, unlike your mother. Don't you dare. Because I know what it feels like to be my mother's age. And 30-odd years later, there's a grown-up daughter, another daughter, who is mine. Well, how do you think I feel? Is anybody thinking about me? I will not excuse what you did. Not because time's passed or the words have changed. I blame my mother for everything, and she never said a word. And she protected you. 
and she protected me and she protected Paula Carp. And when she died, she let you get away with it all. Well, I'm not so sure you should. The look in your eye is punishment enough. The look in my eye isn't punishment at all, Dad. Eileen, could I have a glass of water? Ah, ah. I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> so, what did you get up to, anyway? No. This afternoon, uh, not very much. Just walking. Well, how can it not have an A or an O in the middle? It's only three letters. I know. I think you're cheating. Mum! What's happened? She grounded. I think he's had a stroke. Well, you're not going with him? No. Eileen. Wish I got a pound for every time I've come out here and contemplated the universe. Which is how I used to think of it when I was younger. I stew the age we did earlier, eh? Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Very nice indeed. Considering where you've been. I've been walking. You'll be contemplating a disaster, if you're not careful. Never mind the universe. Mum? What? Come on in, eh? Made you a brew. Do you want me to phone the hospital? Do what you like, love. Mum, it's chilly out here. Thought I knew everything, Jase. I know nothing. Join the club. Eureka! Why are you taking your camera to the one o'clock club? It's a bank holiday outing. Our annual mystery tour. Come along. We're visiting a smashing place. I thought it was a mystery tour. Oh, it was. But the last time Ethel Caradus had a stroke. Doesn't pay to surprise people on the wrong side of 80. So where are you going anyway? One of the biggest open spaces in Manchester. There's history, Poetry and a sprinkling of celebrities. Sounds nice. Where is it? Are you coming? Well, I suppose I've nothing else on. You won't regret it. It's a guided tour of Southern Cemetery. Who needs Disneyland, eh? Though I can't help wondering if it's worth some of the older girls getting back on the coach. Do you fancy it? Uh, no, no, I've... Uh... Got to pick out some books I reserved and they won't hold on to them any longer. Oh, well, come on then, love. We don't want to miss this sharabang. Bye. You OK? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a bit tired, that's all. Anyway, goodbye, love, and I uh, hope you have a nice afternoon. <laughs> I am coming back, you know. 
I'll see you at tea time. Mini Kiev's all right. Come on, then. You sure there's going to be room for me? Oh, So no real change, then? Uh, when's visiting hours? OK, yeah. Cheers, bye. What's he playing at? He's ill. Oh, sick's a better word. He's no concern of ours anymore. Ma'am, he's still your dad. Oh, just a detail on my birth certificate, that's all. And if I could change that, I would. Look, I hate what he's done as much as oh, you, but I'm... it sounds not... like I mean, you don't see me rushing off to his bedside with a bunch of grapes, no matter how bad they say he is. He's stable. Ma'am, he's got nobody else. Mm. Whose fault is that, eh? He's made his bed. Yeah, well, this might be his deathbed. You'll regret this for the rest of your life. Yeah. You never see him again. Do you know what? My conscience is clear. She's a downside more than can be said for his. <clears throat> Sorry about him. I've seen I in his neck a wildebeest with more grace. No, no, no. I'm glad he's enjoying it. 20 years I've watched that from across the breakfast table. I feel like David Attenborough some mornings. You handle that spatula with some aplomb. Is that good? Oh, yes, yes, yes. In fact, I, I'm very impressed all round. Uh, you could have a long-term future behind this counter. Oh, really, Rye? You have a natural warmth and rapport with the customers. Any chance of that top-up? I'll be swigging the vinegar in a minute. Oh, shut it, you. One more word, I'll be topping up your wide fronts. Sorry, Roy. You were saying. It doesn't matter, but, but if you were to take on a more permanent position, you would need to do runs to the Cash and Carry Price Co. on Aversmith Road. I know it. Yeah. Well, you would need my password and customer number. Uh -huh. Password is. Um, Puffin Bill. I always got a fag on the go, I say. Who? Bill, let this mate of yours. No, no, it, it is a steam locomotive. Thomas the Tank Engine. Not exactly, no, no. It, it, it was, in fact, the, the first commercial steam adhesion vehicle. But, but more about that another time. The, the customer number. 7354. Oh, oh, I have to write it down. I'm all plus with figures, mate. I mean, I remember the chopping will a bit easier. Enough, puffing, but... puffing, bill, bill. Oh, right. Mm. Best jot that down and all in. Oh, yeah. And the... Number? Uh, 7354. Okay. Five, five. 2553. Three. 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 Gotcha. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mary, but look, we've been overtaken by events. Uh, well, well, yes, yes, of course, I still want to go. It's just that I'm needed here. Well, I, I, I just don't know. Look, look I'm going to have to go now because there's a customer waiting. Uh, bye. You shouldn't have changed your plans because of me, Norris. No, oh, there's no hurry. The wonderful world of the fold-down bed and stand-up wash will still be there next month. Now, look, why don't uh, I finish the order and why don't you go and have a little lie down? Because I might never get up again. I can't hide away, Norris. Need to get on with things. Hello, Jason. You all right? I've had better weeks, but I'm still here. I'm sorry about my granddad. Hardly your fault. Or your mother's. Do tell her I said that. I will, yeah. If she's any idea. Ah. Uh, Colin took us all in. Yeah, well, I think he's paid for it, eh? How do you mean? He had a stroke last night. He's in hospital. How is he? Out of danger, they reckon. I'm glad to hear it. You know, half of me wants to go and see him in hospital, and the other half... I just don't know how I feel. And I'll tell you. Ill or not, that man is a thorough degenerate and the sooner well, he does... dies, you reckon he deserves a death sentence? I'll tell you what, he doesn't deserve sympathy and he'll get none from me. Yeah, he's not asked for it either. Neither have I. Look, take a get well card on us. We've plenty to spare. No, sir. I just came in to let you know the score. All right. Everyone says my long lost dad's a monster. So let's get my head round. I know it can't be easy. <sighs> Maybe it's too easy. I don't follow. But well, what if things aren't so black and white? What if they're more complicated? <laughs> Could it get more complicated? 
Well, it was wrong, but, but even my mother said it, it wasn't abuse. He never forced her into anything. She was 14? Well, when I was 14, I, I knew the score. I knew how to play the lads. Yeah, of your own age. How much easier then? A middle-aged man in a bad marriage, flattered by a pretty girl who looked older than she was. He knew perfectly well how old she was. Well, maybe my mother did all the running. Seduced him. I know it's no excuse, but... Julie, it's no excuse. End of. No, no, it's not end of, Fizz. I'm not writing off my father for a word, a label. I need to hear both sides of the story. <laughs> this one bank holiday, me and Maria stayed at home. In bed, like, you know. Jack and Vera was away, but we heard this noise downstairs. Hang on a minute, Matt. You and Maria? Yeah, me and Maria. As in you and Maria? Me and Maria, yes. All right. So she now one bank holiday, me and Ali Berry went down home base to get some clear soap that she had. She likes it tidy. What, well, so, hang on a minute. Me and Maria was at it like... Well, we was engaged. Yeah. Ask anyone. Anyone round here. All right. Not her, don't, don't ask her. All right, love. Can I do you for? Uh, no, I was just bored. Where's Kevin? Day off today. And you're working again. Right, well, if he's not grafting here, he can come and work up a sweat with me. Mm -hmm. Really? I mean, I've heard of these open marriages, but I never thought... <laughs> We're running together. Idiot, we're training for a race. Kevin Webster in shorts. Oh, I know, yeah. I call him the 118 guy. I reckon he should grow his tap back. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah. What's she doing here again? Why can't she just leave Jack alone? Because he doesn't want to be left alone. Can't you see? Vera's only been dead five minutes. Jack don't want out like that. Just let him be the judge of that. Well, where are you going? I don't think Kev's going to be too happy yeah, with you just... Yeah, entitled to a nose. You're meant to be partners. Though, judging by the amount of bank holidays you work... It's only half a day. And you better be on double time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Hello, what are you up to? Oh, we're uh, just going down the red wreck. I'm going to show him what Man United missed out on, aren't I? Eh? So, you fancy it? No, thanks. My footballing days are over. Well, I don't remember I'm starting. Let's face it, you were no Busby babe, were you? The one time your granddad took me on the park to play football, do you know what he did? He smashed the window <laughs> on the ice cream van. <laughs> <laughs> don't remind me. Always had better things to do after that, didn't you? Yeah, and I regret it. You always think there's another afternoon. Well, today's another afternoon, but better things to do, I expect. Not better, just more urgent. Anyway, I'm glad you're not making my mistakes. No need. You're still more than capable of making your own. Come to the park, Granddad. You can riff for us. I'm sorry, Sam. I really can't. You go easy on your dad, eh? Got to look after him. Right, come on then, jump down. Let's go, come on. Three, there you go. Bye, son. Right, come on, here we go. And it's Tony Curry, <laughs> through to Bobby Charlton, who's with him all the way. I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah. I make it one mega mixed grill and six top ups. I think you'll find it was a mini breakfast on what's all. 320 by my reckoning. 8.50. Plus tip. You want a tip? Next time, don't cremate the bacon. I didn't know whether to eat it or send flowers. I was hoping to find you here. I was pegging out my washing. Couldn't help but notice your garden. Look comes to living next door, that. I see your garden all the time. I look out the window, there it is. I'm surprised you can see anything then through your grass. I, I can't garden with my disability. Besides, the smell of cut grass brings me out in hives. First nice day of spring, I'm like gone on the cob. I've asked our Gary to take it in hand, but I'm not holding my breath. Any road, Gail? I must get on. Uh, me and all. Ah, Kev, what can I get for you? The usual staff discount will apply. I'm afraid not, Roy. I've got some bad news. Oh? I'm sorry, but uh, I've decided to resign. Hope I'm not leaving you in the lurch. Soon we'll be able to fill my shoes easily enough. 
Anna can take your shifts, but I enjoy our chats immensely. Pricking sausages seems somehow less arduous when debating the great issues of the day. You will be missed, Ken. And I'll miss working here. It's been a genuine pleasure. So long as I've done nothing to offend you at all. Oh, no, 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 no. It's simply uh, time for a change. And, well, life rolls on, Roy, and that's how we progress. Well, perhaps. Uh, I've always believed it, if it isn't broken, etc. Progress and mere novelty are too often confused. Often at once peril. <laughs> Him? I mean, did, did he go looking for it? Mother! Mother! Oh! Oh, she's hung up! You were coming on a bit strong. I have no choice! But it must have been hard for her, dragging all this up. She needs time to adjust. Hey, but once she has, I'm sure she'll answer all your questions. No! No! She wants to slam the lid down on it again, and it won't do. Knowing what happened is not enough. I need to know the hows and the whys. Do you? I've dreamt about finding my father for so long. Now I have. I'm not going to turn my back on him. Not until I know he deserves it. There's been a guardian going to the Barlows ever since I can remember. I expect originally it was the Manchester Guardian. Uh, not quite, no. The paper abandoned Manchester around about the time I went up to university. I was hoping to do much the same thing once I graduated. So, so why are you cancelling now? Well, I uh, need to stay active. No reason I can't collect it myself. What about your new statesman? Oh, odd that. We don't get much call for that except for you. Oh. I'll better get a chance to read it now with the grandchildren around. I'll uh, cancel, I think. I'm sorry to hear how things turned out with Colin. Not as sorry as I am. Still, my own fault. Chasing fantasies at my age. Romances for youngsters, not daft old women. Yeah, no such thing. And age doesn't lessen your entitlement to happiness. Far from it. You followed your heart, and it could have led you somewhere wonderful. Still could. It says he, from the comfort of a happy marriage. No, Rita's right. Risks are for the young. We bruise too easily at our time of life. Well... I was just about to thank Ken for cheering me up. You soon put the mockers on that. Oh, well, I'll be off now anyway. Bye, both. Bye. But I was agreeing with you, Rita. Sometimes a woman doesn't want agreeing with. Well, how do I know? I'm a newsagent, not, not a, a mind, mind reader. reader. There you are. I loved helping my dad with his loft. It were heartbroken when a doodlebug did for it. Poor birds, they were blown to smithereens. You couldn't begin to imagine the mess. Oh, you'd be surprised. Mind you, your father taught you well, you know, cos it's easy to distress a pigeon when he's not tired, that is. <laughs> you will be polite, she's a guest. Oh, I never invited her. Oh, I certainly know what you're doing, all right. Just the right amount of pressure between your fingers. A firm grip, but not too much. What's going on? Do you know, I, I could ask you the same. What was you talking about? Pigeons. I was just telling Connie she knows how to handle a bird. Which is more than can be said for my husband. <laughs> Hello again. Hello, love. <laughs> Comfy there, are you? Yeah, yeah, it's a nice chair. Vera always thought so. I'm just um, making some lunch. It's only a bit of chicken, but there's plenty if you want a steak, honey. Oh, thank you, love. So, uh, how is Scarlet? Well, come and see for yourself. Perhaps she'll be glad to see you again. She'll be the only one. Will you give over? We shouldn't be encouraging her. Why not? She's perfectly nice. She's making Jack happy. What's your problem? Oh, dear. Yeah, I bet that that's the last hot pot. 
Well, I'm not sure. You'll have to ask. <laughs> I did consider reheating the remnants of Norris's stargazy pie, but it wasn't his best effort. Even the pilchards were too embarrassed to look me in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there any more hot pot? Ah, check my Betty, love. Thank you. The rovers has often saved me from Norris's leftovers. It's not an elaborate menu, but what they do, they've always done well. Yeah, yeah. can you remember Annie Walker trying to introduce a cheese board? Oh, she did keep trying. <laughs> she saw this place as a Weatherfield branch of the Savoy. Oh, only grander. She was never happier than when she played Elizabeth I on Jubilee Day. Mrs Walker, she wasn't playing anyone. She was Elizabeth I that day. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And she said to my Uncle Albert, you can't rehearse Majesty, Mr Tatt. I think you've got it, or you haven't. She had it in spades, <laughs> no, didn't I? <laughs> there you are, Doc. Um, oh, can I get you a drink, you. Emily? Oh, small cherry, thank you. Oh, good. The usual? Uh, no. No, oh. not for me, thanks. Right. Uh, I've got to go on with it. Oh, no. Have one yourself, eh? Oh, thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye, Doc. Bye-bye. Bye. You know, Emily, you're very lucky. That's the last of the hot pot. I didn't think it would eat that, I guess. Hi, Ken. Prepare to die, Monsieur. On guard. <clears throat> All right. How long have you been there? Long enough. And if you're so keen to cut something down to size, you can start with the Windass's garden. Hey. I say garden. Jungle would be a better word, and that suit Eddie. He looks a bit like an orangutan. Anyway, I want it sorting. And you're telling me this because. Jerry's the landlord. His house, his garden, his responsibility. And seeing as he's not here, it's yours. Come on, Gail. If you don't do it, I'll hire a professional and send you the bill. Have you got a mower I can lend? Absolutely. Right. I brought you a butter. Oh. You have to cough up for this as well. Oh, my treat. Landed on my feet in that cafe, I reckon. It might be a couple of rashes short of a full English, but Roy's very fair. And he knows a grafter when he sees one. Why? Oh, I reckon if I played my cards right, I could have a job for life in there. And if... What are you doing? Uh, you skinned me earlier. I'd not left me flow. I, I've just took 20 quid. I didn't come here to be robbed. Get your own bloody dinner. If you insist, my love. If you insist. Lloyd, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to go. I've got someone waiting. Do you mind if I come through? Be my guest. It's about your... our dad. Yeah, I thought it might be. I can't tell you anything beyond no, what... I just want to know the truth. I know you weren't aware at the time, but what do you think happened? Do you think my mother could have led him on? You want to talk about the past? Well, if Colin wasn't entirely oh, look, to blame... stop right there. I've been down that road and you're wasting your time. Never mind insulting your mother. Well, well that's not my intention. Yeah, well, it's inevitable if you try and excuse him. There are no excuses. I know. I've looked for him. And that's all there is to it? There must be something more to him. Something... Look, that's everything you need to know about him. Well, not quite everything. He's, um... He's in hospital. He's had a stroke. Do 
going home. Go on. I won't, Grandad, I won't. Ah, penalty competition. I tell you what, England could do with this one next time we're in a penalty shoot. Are you going on holiday, Grandad? Uh, no, no, I... Uh... No. He's running away to sea, aren't you, Dad? Off to sail the ocean blue with Captain Crumpet. And I thought I was the only sailor in the family. Peter, please. This is my last chance. I have to. No, you don't have to, Dad. You'll do whatever suits you. You always have. Simon, upstairs. Don't need a Upstairs! I don't need to snap at the boy. Don't tell me what to do. The time for that's finished, it's past. So this is what? <laughs> Forever? What's left of it? And everything you need's in that poxy little case. There's nothing much that I need. Which I took to be some kind of proof. Of what? Come on. Of what? Of how little I'd built up. What, pyjamas? A toothbrush? A book of poetry, perhaps? And one or two things of sentimental value? Yeah, like what? Like a lock of Susan's hair. And a lock of yours. So, were we ever going to see you again? Were you going to say goodbye if we hadn't stumbled in? Or was that it? I would have come round here later and you'd be gone. I was going to wait for things to settle down before I got in touch. I wanted to avoid this. Oh, I bet you did. Well, you can visit. Maybe I can visit too. I, I want to see a lot of you. Yeah, I, I just couldn't face facing it. And what does Deirdre say? Where is Deirdre anyway? Is she crying in a heap somewhere? Unbelievable. You haven't told her, have you? It's all in there. Please, Peter. That woman, Dad, has given you her life! This is no time to exaggerate. It's a marriage of convenience. It always was. And the rest simply isn't your business. You're deluding yourself! Please! Have some class! Look, I won't be spoken to like this. If I'm being selfish, then it's about time. I've wasted too many years, Peter. Far too many years. He came round to explain. He was upset. Well, did it happen because he was upset? Oh, who knows how these things work. And he's in the general, is he? Yeah. I haven't been to see him, neither am I going to. Oh, Eileen. Is he so hateful a man to lie in a hospital being forgotten? Do you know, a one-night stand with a made-up squaddy was better than him. Yeah, he was rarely at home. He spoke to my mother like dirt. He drank and he resented me. How do I know that's the truth? And all of this was done with a big cheeky grin as if life was just one big joke. Well, he seemed OK to me before all this blew He's up. a very selfish man, Julie. He just looks old. That's all. Old and harmless. Well, maybe that's because he is. Old age can hide a lot. It's very deceptive. Some of them are just plain old rotten. And this woman, this piece, she's behind all this, isn't she? Divorced, no doubt. She's lonely, bitter. Leave your wife, leave your wife, leave your wife. She's not like that. She listens and she gives. Yeah, really. She gives out more like. Oh, well, if you're going to bring it down to all that, it just shows that you've really no idea what this means to me. Do you know I've had more back from a few stolen hours on that boat than I've had from a lifetime in this house? No, I know. I can see that. I mean, I can see the appeal of someone whose company you enjoy more than your wife's. And she's different. And she's bright. I take it, is she bright? Very. But, Dad, let's just be clear-sighted about this, OK? You're knocking on. You're an old man. What happens if you need care? What happens if you need treatment or, or you get ill? I, I'm trying to see this from your perspective. We'll take care of each other. What happens if she meets someone? If she gets bored with you? Well, I can't afford to think ahead. No. You can't afford not to. Well, if this proves to be the wrong decision, then so be it. We should all be allowed to fail.
glad we had this chat. So am I. Now get out. Go on, get out. Because we're better off without you. I sincerely hope that's true. See you at Blanche's funeral. Goodbye, Peter. Tell Simon I'll be in touch. Tell him yourself. Explanation gets me nowhere. Tell him later, then. Because you'll see him at tea time, won't you? When you come round that corner with your little suitcase full of socks and your tail between your legs. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. You're not going anywhere, Dad. Because you're ridiculous. You'll be sat at that table come tea time. And at Christmas. And every other miserable day for the rest of your life until we put you in the ground. Snake or two, perhaps. Do you know a chap found a boa constrictor in his allotment last year? In Blackburn, of all places. All the best, Ken. Anyway, Daryl can hack his way through it. What the grass, that is. It's really not that high, Ken. It's up to me waist at least. Up to your ankles, maybe. <laughs> But they'll, they'll be in black and white, though, won't they? Yes, they will. Mm. I like the fact that you think that makes it respectable. <laughs> and was there um, an, an, an assistant lurking around? It was just the two of us, very intimate. And what kind of uh, oh, positions did you get into? My favourite was the Christine Keeler pose. Blind girl? Christine Keeler, on a chair. Oh, I, right, that's when she... No. Okay, so he couldn't actually, um, see anything. There was a twist. He shot me from behind. R right, but he still couldn't actually see anything. Well, it wasn't page three, Dev. He is a professional photographer. Almost. He will be, when he starts making proper money from it anyway. Yeah. And what does he do to survive? He works part-time in TK Maxx, but he's already reducing his hours. <sighs> It's account number 73542553. Password, Puffin Billy. The wife dropped the card on the back of the radiator this morning. It got lodged above a sock. As long as you know the number and the password. Oh, that's on my brain, precious. Phone numbers, lottery numbers, you name it. Teachers used to say, that Roy Cropper is the right one. <laughs> you know, for, for numbers and, and that. All right, Chief. Is your mum any better? Yeah, yeah, she's fine. Irritating habits, my dear. Oh, I'm told I've got plenty. Ah, well, they'll all be mine.
Hello? Well, Kenneth Barlow was I live and breathe. Here I am. Welcome home. But Justin's new work is about urban regeneration. Yeah, but not the work that he did today, though. Well, what did he do today? He's taken pictures of the city in transition. Oh. So, skeletons of buildings, shiny new developments next to squalor and decay. And my favorite image is of a dead rat in the foreground with the Hilton rising up behind it. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so I had an idea. Instead of an opening night, why not project the image onto an emblem of regeneration? A new residential development, for example. Victoria Court. Our brains are totally in sync. Mm -hmm. I'll put the kettle on. No, it's all right, I'll do it. You know, I'd have thought I'd have found the famous ones most interesting, but I didn't. It was the, the supposedly anonymous souls. <laughs> Although, what's the difference, eh? You're born, you try to do your best, you die. It doesn't matter if you're a Lowry or a Barlow. There'll be all manner of milliners and shop girls lined up in there. Insurance clerks, bus conductors, hairdressers. We'll all be just bones at the end of the day. We're nearly out of tea bags. But take me through the point of it one more time. Well, what the point of? Uh, the point of the installation? Yes, yes, the point of the installation. You have said what a brilliant idea it is. <laughs> well, it is. But why? <laughs> well, that's... Uh, it's, it's obvious, isn't it? No. We... It's a projection of, 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 of an image of, uh, like, urban decay. I'm listening. The Gazette have agreed to cover it. Cover? <laughs> cover what, though, exactly? It's an opening like any other, except completely and utterly unique. Dates for your diaries, gentlemen, next Monday evening, Victoria Court. Hey, I told you about Bill's duels, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Did you have a word in them, yeah? No, I didn't. Not yet. It's me old gaffer, right? He was on the phone a few weeks ago, and he drew a serpent playing tennis with a naked lady. It was absolutely superb. Now, that sounds worth seeing. <laughs> The Last Supper. The First Supper. <coughs> we'll get going in a moment. What happens if this doesn't work out? I make you walk the plank, like I do with all my men. You must have heard of the parade of intellectuals that goes missing every year. I hardly call myself an intellectual. It's not a stroll in the park, you know, boat life. I don't intend to sit around. You won't get the chance, don't worry. <laughs> I can't wait for you to meet Frank and Ruth. In London? She is a terrible show-off. But you will like Frank. In fact, I think you'll probably fancy Ruth. She's still in her 40s. Built like a sparrow. She's the dancer. And then there's, um, Pat and Margaret. I've told you all about Pat and Margaret, haven't I? He used to work for the FT, but, uh, he lost friends on September the 11th and he jacked it all in. You know, there's quite a few of us on the waterways. We've all got our different stories, our reasons. It's a while since I've been in London. You must remind me to make some calls. I'll see what tickets I can get. There's something on at the Barbican I wanted to see, and oh, there's a Michael Frayne on somewhere. I do love Michael's work. Anyway, 
I've got an inspector calls to get through before that. I'm, uh, I'm embarrassed about my next confession. Try me. Well, the plays that you're in, not the next ones in Tamworth, but the subsequent productions, yeah. I was wondering whether or not one day there's any chance that I might participate. <laughs> Painting the scenery or um, walk on part, maybe. <laughs> Do you want to be my leading man? Oh, I think I'd be more suited to King Lear. <laughs> <laughs> From painting scenery to Lear, and all in a matter of seconds. Yeah. Maybe I've got a bit ahead of myself. Was it awful? It's important to me that she's OK. But if she's not OK, I don't want to know. Did she cry? Poor Deirdre. On the sight of it any longer, so I cut out the middleman. Men. What's, what's the crack? Where have you been? Well, I had to do a favour for a customer who could only pay me in booze. He threw in some peach snacks, though. Don't worry. What was the favour? Oh, curious little story. Hey, you'll like this, Gail. I dropped this fella off at his allotment. He says, how do you fancy building me a greenhouse? I says, I don't fancy it one bit, me old son. So he says, well, do you like a drink? I says, I, I do. So he can... Is this going to take long? Oh, you are kidding me. What is it? Your mower's bust. Well, because it's all clogged up due to the density of the undergrowth. Oh, what have you had him attack our lawn for with that old thing? I got the ball rolling, now it's over to you. So just get it sorted. I'll sort nothing. You, you can't leave it like that. That'd be like me going to the barbers in the morning, quitting part of my head off. What would you say to that? I'd say it was a start. Hey, don't diss me hair, Gail. I'm serious. Don't diss his hair. <laughs> diss what I like. Right then. Tamworth, here we come. Would you untie the bow? I'd love to. And then with the pole, just a little shove. Thank you for having me. Thank you for loving me. my horizons. I said, I'll broaden your horizons, mate. And that was the last you said about it. I mean, I'm going back sort of 20 or 30 years, maybe more. Irony is, flights are even cheaper yeah. these days. Doris Alcock said her nephew paid three pence for a one-way ticket to Marbella. Oh, I say. I tell you who else chipped in. Your Ken, who were propping the bar up there, said, why didn't I see more of the world? Oh, that's a laugh. Where's Ken ever been? Uh, well, he did go to America once, in fairness, but when Bush comes to shove, he's not that yeah. strong, really. Did I tell you about our Gordon? He applied to go on countdown. <laughs> up there. 
Already! Ken, there's something waiting for you in the bedroom. It's not me, I'm afraid. Something to celebrate with. Ken? Ken? Right, drink up, Mother. Remember, tea bags. Oh. Tea bags. <laughs> Bye, Bye Bethany. Girls. Ta -ta. Take care, Blanche. Bye. Is it, uh, is it all there? Only just. Don't look so depressed. You'll be making me feel guilty. Well, why would I do that? It might stop you coming back in. Oh, kids. Always well, we think they can win back their losses. Ah, well, that's been known. I'm a bit smarter than that. Yeah? You want a bet? Tell you what, let me buy you a drink. Cheer you up. No, thanks. You can only drink so much orange juice, you know. You old fella been away? Uh, I have... I've got no idea. I'd want to know. There might be a stick of rock in it for you. Do you know what? I will have that drink after all. How is he? Oh, he's not a well man. Yeah, I rang him this morning. He looks so frail and old. He's gonna be all right, though, eh? Well, I'm not sure. Not sure why I care after what he's done. Like me. I want to feel sorry for him, but... Well, I don't think he's a bad man. Even if he is, he's my father. Look, uh, why don't you come in for the boo? Oh, I don't want to take up your time. You're not. Lump yourself. Oh, thanks. I'll have a red wine, please. Good for the art. In moderation. <clears throat> What's wrong with you? You've got a face like a dentist's needle. No, I'm um, nothing. I'm, I'm fine, mate. You're not still miffed because I won a few quid, are you? No. I've, I've had a barney with my dad, if you must know. Is that why he was running away? Uh, you know how it is. Fathers. Who would have them? I've not even spoke to mine for about ten years. No? Why not? Because he was never there when I needed him. I was off with other women. I just had enough in the end. It's all right, eh? Yeah, look, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, I'll give you a ring as soon as I've got the fight, yeah? All right. Love you back. Bye. Bye. Yeah.
Wounded, Captain? Just a flesh wound and Colonel to you, lad. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Who's that? That's Lloyd. He owns half the local cab company. Uh, nice lad. Is that his wife? No, 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 no. She just works the switch for him. Good mates, you know. There's a lot to be said for friendship. Oh, there is. I, I... <laughs> In fact, at our age, I often think it's more important than romance. Very overrated. Well, when you've been through years of marriage, you've had enough for all that... Uh... Performance? <laughs> See, they're all talking about me. Who? Well, Jack and his new beard for a start. Oh, let him. Here. Are you sure I'm not putting you out? I mean, this is where we remember. I can't believe how broken he looked. Ashamed, I expect. Did you get any answers out of him? But he swears that he didn't know I existed till last week. And you believe him? I think I do. He looks as stunned as I am. He says he wants to make amends if he can. Doing what? Oh, I don't think he knows. Well, just being there for you, I suppose, eh? <sighs> what use is there in that? I don't even know him. I mean, we've no history, no trust. He's just like... Some old man that I've met for the first time. Except he's a lot more than that. Oh, it's just knowing where to start. I mean, if I can... Oh, sorry. Am I interrupting? No, not at all. How are you feeling? Oh. Well, look on the bright side. You've got a whole new family to get to know now. Sean, just leave it, yeah? No, he's right. I haven't really thought about it like that. So, so who else is there then, apart from you and your mum? Well, there's his brother, Todd, and there's his dad, Tony. Oh, yeah. Oh, you needn't say if it's embarrassing you. Well, it's not embarrassing you. Well, I might as well find out. Yeah, go on, go and get the family album, Jay. Show your Auntie Julie who everyone else is. Twenty-eight p's, though, for a banana. That's nearly six shillings. I don't know. He gets away with it. Cos he knows we can't be faff going to fresh goals every time. Don't even like bananas that much. Oh, now she tells me. Although, you know where you are with a banana. Not like these so-called super fruits they have now. Like blueberries. We never had blueberries as kids, and we were fit as fleas. I'd never even heard of them till a couple of years ago. No, me. I mean, where did they come from? In fact, we got through the war without any foreign fruit at all. Well, don't stand there gulping. Get the kettle on. We're gagging. Forty change. Cheers, pups. You all right, Eileen? Not so bad. You? I don't think I can say much more of this. What? Do you not see that patronising smile she just gave me? She's just concerned about you. Mm, gloating more like, same as everyone else. You'll be a ten-minute wonder, you watch. It's bad enough when you've done something to deserve it. I've done nothing. Yeah, so they'll move on and talk about someone else. Gossip's no good if they can't slag you off with it. Yeah. Stuff them. That's the spirit. A week's time, they've forgotten all about it. You said ten minutes before. That's working in the cab office for you. So what was you running about? Oh, you know, nothing in particular. We just flare up at the drop of a hat. I think it was finding out I had half-brothers in different parts of Manchester that did it for me. Well, your dad was still living at home. Me and my mum knew nothing about it. I don't know. Secrets and lies, eh? I'll leave you to it. Yeah, OK, mate. Take it, you've got the letter. Yeah, so don't panic. I knew you'd come crawling back. So this must be Todd? Yep. And where is he? London. And what's he doing? He's working in a restaurant, last time I heard, right? So is he married? What? Todd's not the, uh, what you might call, marrying kind. <gasps> is he gay? Have I got a gay nephew? No modern family is complete <laughs> without one. Did he always know? No, he had a kid with Sarah before he came out. But your wife, Sarah? Yeah, before we got together. Billy. Died the day after he was born. Oh. 
Oh, poor lad. Oh, look at me feeling sorry for somebody that I've never met. This is so weird. Here, let me show you this one of Eileen at a Silver Jubilee party. This one is hilarious. Oh, no. no. Oh, go back a page. Hmm? Is that, is that her with Colin? Yeah, 1975. So that's how he would have looked when he got my mother pregnant. Same age as Eileen is there. Julie, it will drive you mad all this if you let it. Already has. I saw Deirdre come in here just after you left. She was laughing and joking, so I knew she hadn't read it. So I nipped in and I took it. Save her the misery. Thank you. Yeah. So, how did Martha take it? Hmm? <laughs> you are so predictable. You should be glad I changed my mind. Yeah, but that's not because you took some big moral stand, is it? Hey, come on. It's because you bottled it. Bit of both, actually. Yeah. Look, I'm fully aware of what I've done. If you were so flaming aware, you would have made your mind up one way or the other, and you would have gone with it. But oh no, oh no, you chilly shally around. Why hurt one woman when you can hurt two women? Says the bigamist. Yeah, well, like I've said before, I think we both know where I get that from, don't you? And anyway, since we're talking about you... At this OK, point, OK, you've made your point. I made a complete mess of it and I should have known better. Except that it's not as simple as you're making out. Oh, no, of course not. Well, it never is with you, is it? Hey, there's always some big moral complexity that ordinary folk don't understand. So will you be showing Deirdre that letter? What will be the point of that? Oh, because I know how much you value honesty in your relationship. Or you could do the brave thing. And you could tell her in the flesh. Hmm? But no. You don't do brave, do you, old man? You never have. And you never will. going from college. Oh, I'll book a day off work then in that case. You had the hots for Nick once. Yeah, but things change when you leave, don't they? They just look down on me now that I work here. Another done. It's us and them. Well, you shouldn't have quit then, should you? See, you're doing it now. I'm not, but I just think you're mad throwing your life away for a dead-end job like this. You arrogant cow. I mean, if this was all you could do, fine, but... Where does this leave me? What? I mean, I'm stuck in a dead-end job. Does that mean you don't want to know me? No. We might as well just jack it in now, aren't we? Daryl! Come on. So, you don't see your dad anymore? Well, we sent it for the Christmas cards, but that's about it. Oh, that's a shame. Hello, Eileen. I've just asked him for a cup of tea. You've not been showing her this, have you? Why not? I went to see Colin. Who? Oh, I know how you feel, but he's really poorly. Good. Well, I think he'd like to yeah, see Yeah, and what you. about what I'd like? Well, I know, but... No, I don't think you do. Forty years I've put up with him, spinning tails and worming his way back in. He's sorry now. Sorry? That's just a word he chucks around like a used fiver. Don't tell me he's sorry! Well, if you do change your mind... You'd better go. Give it a break, ma'am. It's not her fault. I just wanted to get to know my new family, that's... Yeah, well, I don't want you to! Cos I don't want anything that reminds me of him anywhere near me, so the less I see of you, the better. All right! I'm sorry if I've upset you. So are you going back to see him? Oh, yes, I might. Oh. Well, tell him from me. I hope he rots in hell. Hi, 
Campbell. Hi. I bought myself a new outfit for the show next week. Nothing like looking one's best. Are you okay? Yeah. You don't look it. Problems with Daryl. There's nothing else it could be. Dev gets on your nerves, but he doesn't upset you. Unless you've been told you have a terminal illness. He wants to finish it. Oh, dear. Does he say why? Thinks there's a big gulf between us, you know, me going to uni and him working where he does. So he's not saying he doesn't love you? No. Sounds to me like he's insecure. He thinks you're going to end it, so he's getting in there first, even though that's not what he wants. You reckon? Yeah. And if you love him, which I assume you do... Yeah. Then all he needs is reassurance. The sooner the better. You don't want this hanging over your exams. What if he doesn't want to know? Oh, I think he will. Yeah? And it's good that he's saying all this if it's how he feels. At least he's being honest in his own way. I know loads of men who aren't. Um, and how much are your favourite women? Lumi. And getting on so well together. This is wonderful. So she has to use her knees more. Now, of course, her knees have gone as well. Who's this? Madge Truitt, on the cemetery trip. She'd have gone to the doctors today. But it's another blooming bank holiday. What do you mean, blooming? We've only just had Easter. Now, I've two bank holidays this month. Who thought that up? There we are. It's only frozen chicken, Kiev, I'm afraid. Oh, what's to be afraid of? Well, I know Ken's not keen. <laughs> chicken Kievs are fine. Oh. That's a first. I usually get a lecture about processed food. Oh, can I have Spock the Celebrity on tonight, then? What? If you're feeling charitable. You normally want to watch the educational channels. You can have on what you like for me. And you won't complain all the way through? Won't breathe a word. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, Betty was saying earlier you didn't quite look yourself today. You're not sickening for something, are you? I'm absolutely fine. Do you remember poor Carr and Teddy Johnson? Uh, sing, little birdie, sing, sing this song. <laughs> Fifty years. <laughs> My dad used to sing that to his pigeons. Very happy days. <laughs> Are you uh, busy tomorrow, Jack? No important, or no. Only I sometimes go to bingo and I was wondering if you'd like to come with me. Oh, no, not if you no, don't. No, no, it, it's... Oh, Vera used to go to bingo, do you see? Oh, Jack, I am no, sorry. No, no, no. No, I wouldn't have asked if I No, no, no don't, don't, don't worry. Look, it was just a thought. Yes, and it would have good one. We'll do it. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> well, you, don't, you don't mind if we keep it to ourselves for now, like? You're not ashamed of me, are you? No, no way. No, it's you I'm thinking about. This lot round here winking and nodding and giving you the third degree. I don't mind that. You sure it's not Tyrone you're worried about? Oh, there is a bit of that and all that. It's fine by me, Jack. Besides, there's no rushes there. No. <laughs> I just want to say I'm, I'm sorry if I upset you earlier. I didn't mean you have a dead-end job. I meant Minnie drifting from one thing to another. No, it was me that were out of order, kicking off like that. I don't blame you. I just get worried, you know. What's going to happen to us? You're going to be 200 miles away. I'll come home at weekends and you can come down to see me. 400 mile round trips? Who are you trying to convince? Me or you? You're worried I think you're not good enough for me. Well, don't be. There's no one better than you. Even though I work in a kebab shop? Run a kebab shop. Which my dad couldn't hack, remember? This place would go under without you. I love you. I love you as well. <laughs> Mum, it's me. Well, ma'am, you played a blinder there. 
Next. She'll be feeling a million dollars off that little lot. Oh, well, I'll never forgive myself. Well, you were a bit over the top, Eileen. Look, it's absolutely none of your business, so why don't you just keep your trap shut? Well, it's not her fault what happened. Look, I've had it up to here the last few days. I go out for a drink to take my mind off it, and what do I find when I come back? Well, I invited her in. Blame me. What business did you have showing her my photo album? That was my idea. Ma'am, we are family, like it or not. She's not my family! What, she what is? you say one more word, I swear I'll... So what were you and Amber chatting about? Just go talk. Mm, just go talk. Anything I should know? Hmm? She's not pregnant, is she? No. <laughs> On drugs? Why do you always worry oh, about her? Because I'm a father. Look, she's too sensible to get into trouble. Yeah. Well, you can tell me if there was a problem. I mean, you know, she looks up to you. There's nothing the matter with her. She just had a little tiff with Daryl, that's all. Nothing trivial, I hope, huh? No. Whoa! <laughs> Oi. Hey. Now, when am I gonna get to see these photographs of you? Mm? As soon as they're ready. Mm. You don't think that we should have ours done together? Naked, like nature intended? Mm? Let's just get this art project out of the way first, okay, shall we? Okay, whatever you say, honey, because I am so, so happy. You know that? And I know we've had our ups and downs, but now it's just like, wow. And I keep thinking I'm going to wake up and find it's all a dream. Do you feel like that? No. I think it's all very real indeed. Well, that's the news. The world's still spinning round. Just, I can sleep easy for another night. Oh, I don't suppose I'll be so long after you. I'm worn out. Now, do I need a hot water bottle? Oh, I may. You wait till you've got an artificial hip. No, I think I'll be all right. Night, anyway. Sleep well, Mother. Yeah, night, Blanche. See you in the morning, if I'm spared. Not had very much to say for yourself tonight. <sighs> a bit tired, that's all. Shall I fix your whiskey? No, I'm fine, really. Well, it won't do you any harm if you are coming down with something. Anyway, what good is a wife if she can't offer a bit of TLC every now and again? I think I'm going to have one myself as well. That's not like you. Well, I think I'm trying to remind myself I'm still alive after that trip to the cemetery. There you go. Gonna run a nice hot bath and sip it in there. Actually, you could um, come and scrub my back if you fancied it. And Mother will be fast asleep. It'll just be you and me. This whole milk. So where's the cream? Morning, love. Morning. When you got it in bottles from the milkman, there were cream on the top. We're being robbed. Oh, mother, there hasn't been cream on the top for years. Not even when we got it in bottles. Anyway, we'll stop deliveries because you complained we'd all get bird flu from the blue tits pecking through the bottle tops. Still doesn't explain why there's no cream on this so-called whole milk. You want me to go and get you some cream? No. You know what it does to me, bowels. Then what? Hey, don't let it get to you. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, fine. Just didn't sleep very well, that's all. Yeah, how did you get up? Yeah, I came down and made a drink. Bad dreams? Something like that. I'm just uh, ringing to find out how Colin Grimshaw is. His grandson. Oh, good. Well, can I come and see him later? All right, cheers, bye. Who was that? Oh, uh, it was just a mate of Sean's, trying to catch up with him before work. All right. Should we get dressed then? Have you seen anything of the paper, boy? Chesney, this time, I've been skilled. 
morning. I don't know what's happened to your bed, but... Uh, not to worry. Right, you ready for the off? Just about. You could call at the cabin and see why Ken's paper hasn't been delivered. No, there's no need. I'll go myself. Why does it always have to be the Guardian? Why can't you buy something that we can all enjoy? You know, a bit of gossip. Which actress is having an affair with a married man? That sort of stuff. You try to be funny. Yeah, somehow I can't see your dad with one of those red top rags. Oh, I don't know. Your dad's not averse to a bit of scandal. Hey, Dad. Not what it ends up with people being needlessly hurt. You can drop me at the precinct. Yes, my lady. Right. Have a nice day. Bye. Oh, morning, Eileen. Hi, love. How are you, love? Oh, I'm still in shock, to be honest, but never mind me. How are you? Me? Oh, fine. Any news of how he is? Don't know, don't care. I'm just staying well clear. Oh, I'm not surprised. Fancy having to find stuff like that out about your own dad. Tina, there's really no need for that. I don't know how I'd feel if it were my dad. Any road, you don't have to do it with me either. Good morning, Ken. Oh, morning. Morning, yeah. Ken. Morning, morning. Um, should you start delivering my paper again? Of course. Had a change of heart. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, uh, do you fancy a cuppa? Jason's out. You can hold the fort. Just a guardian, please. Can I ask you, you know, as a bloke, what do you think about Eileen's dad and her best mate? Don't you think it's sick? Actually, I couldn't care less. Now, now then, lad, <laughs> I didn't expect to see you. Just thought somebody else come and see, eh? So your mum didn't send you then. Mm. How are you? I've been better. How's Eileen? What's that? Is she just let me explain properly? Yeah, well, you know what mum's like, eh? All talking about me, are they? <laughs> I can imagine what they're calling me. I mean, she were the only one, right? Oh, that's the daft thing. <laughs> I liked women who had something about them, not lasses. So why Paula? I probably were flattered. Now, you don't have to say anything. I should have put a stop to it. Yeah, dead right, you should. Did you never think what being abused might have done to Paula? It never seemed like that. Anyway, what could I do? I thought my punishment was not being able to find a woman who was a patch on your gran. Doctor said out. Patience is the last to tell. I appreciate your coming, lad. I do, I do know how how difficult anyway. I I just wanted to say goodbye. When I'm on back on my feet, I'm going to discharge myself. Don't be daft. If you can, get your mum to come and see me. Give me a chance to apologise. All go, is it? Oh, all right. Where's Kevin? Uh, gone to buy a barbecue. Sally wants a new one. So why aren't you busy? Because nobody wants the car fixing. <clears throat> Plenty of people want the car fixing, just not here. You're good, you're cheap. People just don't know about you. You need to advertise. Hello? Do you think he's going to go and see Connor? Who? Jack, who else? You just don't forget about Jack for a minute. This is important. Look, I'd have to ask Kev. Well, don't ask him. Tell him. You're meant to be partners. This place is our future. It's our family's future. Why are you not here? No, oh. of course not. But I will be one day. And, you know, 
I intend to keep practising, so... <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry about Tina. If I'd known she was going to shoot her mouth off like that. Well, she was only saying what everyone else is thinking, including me. Rita, you do know I didn't have a clue about any of this. Well, of course I do. And it's me that should be apologising to you. He's ruined enough lives without adding your name to the list. I've been let down by a fella. It's not the first time. Although it may well be the last. Oh, don't you dare give up, not because of that man. Eileen, he's still your father, however much it may pain you. No. And I might not be able to change what he's done and who he's hurt, but I can make sure he doesn't hurt me or mine ever again. Are you not even going to talk to him? Rita, I would love nothing more than to sit down over a pot of tea and talk it all through. But I don't want to listen to anything he's got to say ever again. Didn't you have any dirty washing? I couldn't find a thing. Uh, I did a load myself a couple of days ago. All oh, right. Deidre, sit down. Hey. Please. What's wrong? You're not ill or something, are you? I'd like you to read this. What is it? So, you're leaving me? No. When it came to it, I couldn't do it. So I suppose I should be grateful you just had an affair? Oh, no, of course not. And what do you want, Ken? Understanding? A round of applause? I thought you had a right to know. In a lot of ways, I think I did. What? You've not been here for weeks, months. Sometimes it was the long walks. The rest of the time it was the long silences. Why didn't you say something? What, Ken? What could I possibly say? What do you want me to say now? This, this letter? Why have you shown it me if it's all over? I don't know. It's it's full of this... this Martha and what she means to you. So much that you were going to leave me, turn your back on your family, your whole life. What made you think I'd want to read that? <laughs> Looking forward to it, telling you. Right, I'll see you later. Tell Alan. And that's another thing, Webster's Auto Centre. Oh, Jack. I mean, for starters, Webster's, it puts you at a huge disadvantage. <laughs> AA or A1, fine. But everything comes before Webster's in the phone book. Yorkshire doesn't. Well, he's going to call a garage, Yorkshire, in Manchester. The bloke at Yorkshire Garage, back of the precinct. Yorkie, yeah, Doncaster lad. Goes in the Legion. You uh, gonna be seeing anything of your friend Connie or whatever today? Might bump into her, yeah. An auto centre? I mean, it's a bit silly. It was Sally's idea. Surprise, surprise. A while ago, she was banging on about making more of the garage, just like you are. Um, I'm not banging on. What was it she said? Uh, we're restricting ourselves by doing just cars and vans. I came up with the slogan, uh, if it's a bus or a lorry, bring it to Webster's, you won't be sorry. <laughs> Yeah, could have got changed. Why are you off somewhere? Legion. You were going to service buses and lorries across the street? It was just an idea. You know, I've got a better idea. New name. Dobbs comes close to the start of the alphabet. Dobbs and Webster's. What do you think? Hiya. 
This Ken. So you're wrong with him? You could say that. He's just told me he's been having an affair. See, or do you want something stronger? You crack on about them. We crack on about these burglaries I'm doing, yeah? And all the money I'm making. And we let Gary here just enough before we shut up. Are you any good? Yeah? Burglaries, are you any good? Are you like up drain pipes or the roofs or are you just smash window? Well, I haven't done any. No, I know that. I'm preparing for the conversation, aren't I? <laughs> Venison, it's dear, isn't it? Graham, I'm not bothered about the price of meat. No. I mean, mutton, sheep, porks, pig, beefs, cow. So why is lamb, lamb? What? Anyway, uh, you do wear gloves, don't you? And a mask, in case of CCTV. If you like, yeah. Another Weatherfield mansion gives over its wealth to a man known only to the police as the Shadow. Or are you a bit more low-key than that? Not to self. Move sausages. I think Ken's got a flipping cheek showing you this letter. It's almost as if he's asking you to feel sorry for it. Well, if I wasn't so flaming angry, I probably would be. I don't know. It's like he's... He's searching for something. Yeah, we all know what that is. I mean, why can't men keep the trousers no, on? No, it's more than that with Ken. It, it's like when he was trying to write that novel. Hardly. He's had an affair. He's nearly left you. Yeah, but if she meant so much to him and he's still come back to me... Oh, Deirdre, don't talk soft. He's actually being very clever. Oh, well, yeah, this is Ken we're talking about. But a guilty secret takes some living with. No, it eats away at you, destroys you, unless you've no conscience like my dad. I bet Ken's feeling a heck of a lot better now he's told you and you're the one having to deal with it. Have you seen Deirdre? Nope. Why, what's wrong? I've shown her the letter. Well, have you gone and done a stupid thing like that for? Yeah, well, how could I be sure you weren't going to blurt something out after that performance this morning? What did she say? Not much, and now she disappeared. Oh, if she's done something stupid, I'll never forgive you, Peter. If she was going to do something stupid, she would have done it after your first affair. Or maybe your second. If I see her, I'll tell her you're looking for her. He wants me to get her to come and see him. The way she was in the shop, we'd be lucky she didn't put a pillow over his face. I think he'd probably welcome that. Should have seen him. He looked half the size he were last time I saw him. Just a sick old man. Yeah, well, he didn't change, you know, what he did. What can he do now? Nobody's interested in sorry. Just ignore me, Jace. I shouldn't be mouthing it off. You know, in that hospital bed, you weren't some evil bloke preying on some young lass. You were a frightened old man. My granddad. Whatever he's done, he'll always be that. I'm, uh, sorry I took a leave on him. I never thought what he meant to you. Hey, Deirdre. Hey, Deirdre. Hey, Deirdre. Oh, Deirdre, thank goodness. I was getting worried. And all the times you were much later than this, and I didn't worry a bit. Maybe I should have. We need to talk, don't you think? You said it all in that letter. Oh, can we forget the letter? I did come back. I did choose to be here with you. You don't know how pathetic you really are, do you? I mean, take that novel. For weeks, you sweated blood over that, like it was the best thing since Shakespeare. And then what? You burned it. Because it was rubbish? No. Because it might have been. You lost your nerve when it was time to send it to a publisher in case someone who knew could tell it was boring nonsense. And 
You've done the same thing with this... this... woman. She's everything you want, unlike me. No. No, yeah. I, with her, you can talk about arts, literature, music, on your narrow boat, drinking real ale and baking your own bread. <laughs> and you know what? You bottled it. I made a choice. Did you really? Because I keep coming back to wondering why you showed me that letter. I don't know myself. I think I do. So I could throw you out. And you could go running back to your mistress with a clear conscience. Oh, I tried to make a go of it, but Deirdre refused. All you've said, Deirdre, makes sense, except for one thing. Yes, Martha might be the perfect woman. But she's not you. I want to spend my life with you. Because I love you. I respect you. And yes, I need you. But do I need you, Ken? Do I need you looking down your nose at me? Going off into a sulk every time my mother kicks off over something trivial? Do I need to compete with a fantasy? should not let menopausal women work in charity shops. Facial hair, excessive sweating, and totally unreasonable to poor pensioners. Hi, love. How have you been? Been to see my granddad. What? Why? Because somebody had to. No, they haven't. He'll just try and wiggle his way back in like he has done all his life. He won't, ma'am. He's old, he's ill and he's scared. Good. Because imagine how Paula felt when she was 14 and pregnant thanks to him. She's not the first underage girl to have a baby. He is using you to get to us. Because he knows that me, Paul and Rita won't give him the time of day. Well, if you're stupid enough to fall for his lies, fine, but do not expect me to forgive him. I didn't say out about forgiving him. Stupid, wrong, pathetic, he may be. But he's still your dad, lying in the hospital bed, seriously ill. Should have known you'd take his side. I'm not taking sides. Ma'am, he's talking about discharging himself. Because he doesn't deserve to be cared for. And all you're interested in is picking on me. And I'm sick of it. Would someone care to tell me what's going on? Not really, no. That, mother, is my husband's farewell note. Or being can, it's more of a long letter. So, you're off, are you? To join your trollop? He's not a... No. He did actually leave, but <laughs> lucky me, he came back. I didn't notice he'd gone. And now he wants a fresh start. Clean slate. Typical man. You've had your fun, and now you're back with your tail between your legs, saying sorry, it were all a big mistake. At your age, you should have had him done years ago. Blanche, let me just remind you that this is my house. Oh, and uh, let me just remind you that it wouldn't be for much longer, not if I took this letter to a solicitor. OK. We'll say no more about it. Sorry? He wants chucking in the gutter. See if he can find his morals. I don't want to hear any mention of any of this ever again. Thank you. I don't know who disgusts me more. Him or you for allowing him to get away with it. Look, it's all over and done with. I don't want to hear another word. I'm just and saying... And if that doesn't that... suit you, you can go. Hey, I'm not having you telling me what I should and shouldn't do anymore. If you can't keep your mouth shut, you can get out. <laughs> Well, 
Well, that's nice. He's the one who's made a fool of you, yet I'm the one sent back in. I'm sure Deirdre didn't mean it. You'd see your own mother on the street, just to save your pathetic sham of a marriage. You see, this is exactly why I want you out. Because you won't be able to help yourself going on and on about it. You just can't sweep all this under the carpet. It'll eat away at your will, this, like a horrible cancer. Oh, mother, will you please shut up? Right. That's it, then. Go and get me that suitcase from upstairs. The one with wheels. Got a bit lost there, lad. Forgotten where you live. Just got to keep out my mum's way for a bit. We just had a massive argument. Oh, she's proper vicious when she gets going, as Eileen can make a till of the hun cry for his mummy. Actually, it's my fault. I went to the hospital. See my granddad. Dead sad, you know. You don't care whether he lives or dies. I just want my mum to go and see him. It's a lot to ask of her. I mean, under the circumstances, like. Yeah, should have kept my mouth shut. She's been for enough without me kicking off. Calm down, kid. Don't worry. She's tough as old butcher, ma'am. She'll be all right. See you later. <sighs> Waterproof. <sighs> Can I make you a cup of tea? Just had one, thanks. Is my bag in here? Ah. Won't get far without it. I can't believe it's come to this. All I did was try to defend my own daughter. Look, this is the last thing I wanted, you two falling out. And please, can we discuss this like civilised human beings? All right. Off on your holidays? Yes. I'm going to hell in a handcart. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> you are so lucky. I wish I was creative. you got a good head on your shoulders. The world's always going to need people who can think. Art is just a luxury. No, not to me it isn't. I do it because... I have to. Oh, right. Well, so you feel, what, compelled to take photos of women in the buff? And there's a name for people like you, my friend. You know that's not all he does. Mm. But I bet there's a certain, uh, freeze on to every conversation you two have, knowing that you've seen her, what, naked? Deb, what is wrong with you? I'm out of here. You are utterly pathetic. So jealous. What's he done now? <laughs> You need to get a grip, mate. I'll see you later, yeah? Mother! I wasn't expecting you. I know I should have filmed first, but I tried your flat and then I realised... Oh, it's all right. Come in. Hello, boys. All right. Oh, no. You're having your tea. I should have thought. Don't be daft. I'll put the kettle on. Uh, me and Ches will nip out for a bit. Do you want anything? No, thanks. See ya. Yeah, see you later, then. See ya. How are you? I'm fine. Well, actually, uh, no. I'm not fine, not really. I thought it should be better by now. I set the table for three as usual because uh, I thought she'd be back. Yeah, you said. You must be worried about her. She's a grown up. She can take care of herself. But what's going on, Deirdre? All this? I don't get it. Well, what did you expect, Ken? Big drama? Shouting, crying, carrying on? I'll tell you. I've got nothing left to give. Nothing. 
I'm exhausted. I mean, what you've done knocks me sick. But there's no point in going on about it because it doesn't change anything. I'm so grateful to you for giving me another chance. Oh, you were too spineless to leave me. Maybe I'm exactly the same. Maybe that's it now, eh? Me and you, stuck with each other till the grave. I had a crush on him. It was as simple as that. He was handsome. Funny. Well, the crush is one thing. But what you did, and with your best friend's dad. Lads my age seem so childish. If they fancied you, they did something stupid, like... chuck a frog at your head. <laughs> well, not the most romantic gesture, I grant you, but... you were only 14. I was flirting with him. It was a game, really. But then one day, he took me in his arms, and he kissed me. Why are you scared? Well, I hate to admit it, but actually I was proud of myself. I never imagined a man like that would take me seriously. Mother, he was using you. I thought we were in love. Daft cow that I was. Oh, I loved every minute of it. How did Nan and Grandad find out? Oh. Me and my mum were out shopping for an outfit for my confirmation. There she was, smiling, all proud. And I was in this gorgeous white dress, posing, you know, this way, that. Well, I was only a slip of a girl, so bump were quite obvious. And you had no idea you were pregnant? Well, to be honest, I did have an inkling, yeah, but... I was stupid, really. I just buried my head in the sand and tried to convince myself it wasn't really happening. Anyway, I told her. I blurted it all out. I said it was Collins. And we were in love. She never raised a hand to me before then. But that day... Why did you not tell Colin about me? They wouldn't let me anywhere near him. My dad went over to Eileen's mother and told her what had been happening. Well, you can imagine. And because we were renting, you know, we were gone by end of week. They made me promise not to tell anybody where we were going. Or why. I just went along with it. They were so disgusted with me. So disappointed. And then I came along. Oh, you were such a lovely baby. But I was too young to cope. I was only a child myself. You know how I struggled. I am so sorry. It's not your fault. It's so sorry. Hiya, Eileen. How are you, girl? That's the worse than I thought you were doing your sympathy voice. Jason said you had a row. Yeah. He thinks I should go and see my dad. What do you think? Oh, it's doing me head in. Decrepit, sick old man lying there, feeling abandoned, thinking nobody cares about him. He knows you, Eileen. Deep down, he knows that you care. Well, then I get cross with myself and I think, just stop caring, stop it, because he doesn't deserve it after what he did. As you said, he's old and he's ill. He needs his family around him. Why don't you just nip over the hospital? Hello, I'm working. Shift your backside, I'll take over. I do not know what to do for Ryan's tea. You run out of ideas, don't you? I don't. Well, I was a trainee chef. Right. Yeah, I love working with fire me. You should have joined a circus then, shouldn't you? I could watch it all day. It's beautiful, the way it seems to have a life of its own. Yeah. Are you trying to tell me some hurt? Yeah, well spotted. Time to shut up shop. All right, bye then. Bye-bye. Yeah. 
Hey, look, if, uh, if you're at a loose end tonight, why don't you and Ryan pot round to mine? Oh, no, you're all right. I mean, I'm only doing a stir-fry, but I've bought enough to feed the 5,000, as usual. <laughs> In fact, you'd be doing me a favour. Simon keeps getting stuck on his uh, super monkey game and maybe Ryan could help him out, you know? Mm. All right, go on, then. Uh, great. <laughs> Half six? Yeah, all right. Great stuff. See ya. You will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boss, come for my wages. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, uh, hang on a minute. You all right? Sound you? Yeah. Fancy you can? No, I'm not stopping. That's it? Yeah, it's all there. Taking out your tax and your national insurance. I don't suppose I can get an advance as well, can I? I'm totally skint. Sorry, lad, you earn it, I pay it. Other than that, I'm on the bones of my backside myself. Cheers, love. Fancy drink then, Tina? One pint, two straws, how romantic's that? Oh, ah, yeah. Last of the big spenders. And I will even throw in a packet of crisps. Big wow. <laughs> I hate it when you push me away and say terrible things just to hurt me. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the last thing I wanted to do. You know, I could kick myself sometimes. I'm glad we do it for you. And there'll be a queue of people behind me waiting for that turn. Yeah, I know. I know. be a right pillock sometimes. You're such a hypocrite, treating me as if I'm going to run off and have an affair at any moment. When I've never cheated on anyone in my life. Never. Can you say the same? You know I can't. You know, if we're going to be truly happy together, then deep down in my heart, I believe we can. We just have to be honest with each other. You're absolutely right. If we're not able to trust, what's the point? No, I trust you completely. Now, the next time I get these stupid, jealous thoughts, I'm going to put my fist in my mouth and walk out of the room or something. OK. You know you can trust me. Can I trust you? Of course you can. You're sure there's nothing else you want to tell me? <laughs> Think very carefully. If you've done anything at all that... I should know about. Now is the time to confess. <sighs> Everything's out in the open. I promise. Hand on my heart. Right, I'll get these then, since I'm a bit flush at the moment. Nice one. You said crime don't pay. Shut up, you div. Oh, yeah. Uh, two bottles of lager, please, and keep change. Right. So, it's going well, then, my little light-fingered friend. Yeah. Got another nice little owner coming my way as it goes. Yeah? Well, you're prolific, I'll give you that. Hey, you could retire to the Costa del Crime by the time you're 30. Yeah. Next job should be worth a few hundred at least. What's this? What? Nothing. I heard you, um, bragging about robbing stuff. <laughs> nah, I think you need to get your ears tested, innit? Yeah, mate, we were just talking about a film we'd seen. Gangsters and robbers and that. <laughs> oh, I should have been an actor, me. Little De Niro, they used to call me at primary school. Hey, you do us a favour and lend us your iPod. Yeah, only you'll have to get your own earphones. Got an aversion to other people's earwax. Oh, we need a digital camera. In fact, anything you've got that's worth a few quid. What? Ah, I see where you're coming from, mate. Hey, I think you've really got what it takes to live a life of petty crime. <laughs> he spark out, bless him. Flipping it, that was quick. Not slipped him a Mickey Finn, have you? What's that? A drink that knocks you out. But you used to do that to me all the time, didn't you? Hmm. 
Well, I thought about it, I'll tell you that much. You hardly ever slept when you were a baby. I was like a zombie till you were about five years old. It's all right if I get off now. Oh, you're not going to stay for some food? Uh, no, I've arranged to meet my mate in town for a pizza. Who, hey, Phil? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, uh, have a nice time and don't be back too late, yeah? OK. All right, see you, kid. See you in a bit. See you, mate. I've even made you some pudding. I hope you like panna cotta. Right. Made it yourself, have you? Well, I've not so much made it as, you know, defrosted it. <laughs> or, I mean, if you like, we could always just skip the food. Hello. I hope you're decent. I've left my case at the bottom of the stairs. You can go in the bunk bed with Simon, and I'll have your bed. What's happened? You'll need to put clean sheets on, though. Terry Towling, if you've got it. Um, shall I just... Uh... No, j uh, just hang on a minute. Blanche, I... What's going on? You can be proper gormless at times. Deirdre's chosen her philandering two-timing husband over me. Chuck me out, she has. Oh, you're joking. Went round to my friend Nora's. Thought I might stay there. But she's a fiend for the great outdoors. Wore the legs off me, she did. Think I'm getting dropsy? Yeah, uh, I'll just leave you to it. Yeah, look, uh, Michelle, I'm, Michelle, I'm so sorry. Just I'll, I'll see you at work, yeah? Yeah, yeah. see ya. So, how long are you planning on staying? For the duration. What's for tea? Um, I'm going to have a bath. OK, let's. What's that for? It's for being a wise and wonderful daughter. I do my best. You know, I've been thinking about what you said. And uh, you're right, Tara is, she's lovely, and uh, I'm lucky to have her. At last he talks sense. And I am going to ask her to marry me. You're not! Yes, I am. <laughs> you might want to get shut of that first. She can sign them to the dustbin of history, or at least the... Uh, Shove them in a drawer. So, when are you going to do the deed? Right. Well, you know the uh, the uh, event she's on on Monday? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to make a really public declaration of my oh. love for her. Well, it's something amazing to tell the grandkids. <laughs> Shh! I feel sort of lucky in a way. Because me and you, we've been given a second chance. My heart goes out to that 14-year-old girl. Pregnant and scared. Nobody in the world to turn to. My heart goes out to me as well, as a baby. And a child growing up and... knowing deep in my heart that something wasn't right. You do know I tried my best, don't you? I wish you'd told me the truth before. We've been through this. What would have been the point? Look at all the people it's hurt. But if you'd told me, then I could have got to know my dad. Why would you want to? It's not worth knowing. He's a man who took advantage of a girl. I accept that. But that's not all he is. You're not going to forgive me for this, are you? Thank you. Thank you. What for? I thought I'd never see you again. I wouldn't have blamed you if you stayed away. Well, I'm here now. That stroke. It felt as though my heart was breaking. I'm so sorry for what I've done. That's the first time I've heard any genuine remorse from you. 
I've had plenty of time to think. Being in here, it, it was you who made me realize. I began to think about you when you were 14, and I, I asked myself, what would I have done? If a 40 year old man had got advantage of you, Shh, don't. I would have knocked the living daylights out of him. I know. I destroyed my marriage. I, I ruined everything for you and your mum. I caused terrible trouble for father and Jewel. Look, just rest now. I've got to concentrate on getting better. It means everything to me that you come here and forgiven me. Just because I've come to visit you doesn't mean I've forgiven you. But you will. Won't you? You will, in time. You can manage to find it in your heart to forgive me. You ask too much. Please. You're all I've got. You and the boys. Stay away from Jason. Please. Sorry. I can't. Let me take you for breakfast. I'd love to, but there's still a million things to organise. Can't they wait for an hour? No, they can't. Sometimes I wonder if you realise just how important today is for us. <laughs> well, I think I do, babe. Uh, but you're right, maybe I should let you go. Yeah. Mm. But you wait. Uh, this event is going to uh, blow people's minds. As long as you're there to see it, that's all that matters. Huh? Oh, man, you have it so bad. Oh, I feel like I'm drowning in chocolate. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, yeah. So what's the plan? Well, let's go and find a ring for my queen. Now you're talking. <laughs> uh, do you want a cup, love? I'll grab one at the cuff. I'm offering, Chase. Go on, then, cheers. I thought about some of the things you said. OK. So I went to see your granddad at the hospital. You kidding, when? Last night. And you're right, it did help, and I should have done it at the start. How did it go? We talked. And? Mum, what do you talk about? I told him I wouldn't be seeing him anymore. Sorry, love, it's for the best. This is all my fault. Don't be daft. I thought I was helping. Well, you got him speaking. That's summer, I suppose. No. I'm going to put this right. But I think I'm making headway. Do you know? I give up, I really do. What? What are you on about? This little Monday morning pick-me-up courtesy of my beloved mother. You say she's texted you at 2.30. But I've caught no doubt. She always manages to turn everything around so it's about her. She's having a go at you just for being honest about your dad. She's her? What about you? Well, apparently I'm not the victim here. Oh, she don't know what she's on about. You know, all my life I've taken her criticisms. And when I have the nerve to point out one of her mistakes... Hey, hey, come on, you can't let her get to you like this. Oh, it's easier said than done. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without you guys. At this rate, you'll be the only family I've got left. Hey, and we are not going anywhere. Isn't that right, Kurt? Too right. Oh, come on, we'll go. Mm. No, delete it. I'll delete it. Okay. Girl, this a newspaper. It's frightening what some folk will read. Then don't. Simon, come in here and finish your breakfast, please. Coming! Got him well trained, I see. Oh. I don't know how you were sleep in that bed of yours. I've been in agony all night. Well, you know, first off, Blanche, I don't normally do much sleeping. Oh, now what kind of breakfast is that to give a growing lad? 
Claire says that the key to peak physical conditioning is balanced nutrition. Oh, does she? That girl's flaming potty. Might as well give the lad sawdust and have done. It's healthy and filling. Notice there's nout about tasty in that description. You wait, love. Tomorrow, Granny Blanche will make you a nice big fry up. Wow, can she, Dad? Yes, we'll see. OK, go brush your teeth, good lad. You promised me you were going to be on your best behaviour. You get to my age, you make a lot of promises. Come on, pet. Let's see if we can't buy your bacon butty on the way to school. What do you mean you don't need me? I've got my butt off. And Joe appreciates it. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Look, this isn't about you, all right? There's hardly enough work for me as it is. At least you're still getting paid. I'm skint. I feel for you, pal. That's just how it is. Oh, cheers, mate, cheers. Look, I don't need this at the moment. We start in phase two soon. There'll be tons of work then, yeah? Yeah, whatever. See you about. Morning. What all that about? Come up and see me, make me smile. I'll do what you want, run on wild. You gotta stop stewing about that text, kid. Like you said, she was probably drunk when she sent it. Who sent what text? Um, her mum's gone off on one again. I thought you two had made up. Oh, so did I, till last night. All I said was that sometimes I wish I'd known me dad. I mean, is that so unreasonable? And what's Eileen's take on all this? Is that supposed to be a joke? Let's change the subject, eh? She doesn't want to know me, Dennis. I might as well be dead to her. Oh, come on, she didn't say that. I can meet between the lines. You need to give it time. These things don't just happen overnight. It's complicated. Well, it doesn't look like that from where I'm sitting. It couldn't be more straightforward. Julia is the innocent party here, yeah? Jan, you don't want to go there. Arlene's her sister. End of. Half sister. That's one thing she's made crystal clear. Well, you're better off without her, love. I mean, I know she's family, but blood doesn't mean now it's if there's not some heart to go with yet. So we picked a winner then. Lagger at eight to one. Blimey, you're feeling a bit daring, aren't you? When you get to my age, you can do with a bit of excitement in your life. <laughs> you take the biscuit. You really do. First you invade my home, and then you undermine me in front of my son, and now you're monopolising my only member of staff. Leave her alone! Now, you see what I have to put up with? Don't you play hard done by, Blanche. It won't wash. You've made your own bed and you stole mine. She had nowhere else to go. Well, whose fault's that? He'd have me grovelling at his feet if he could. Peter, you can't just turn your back on her. Oh, no, you're too right I can't. She's already got you wrapped round her little finger. I don't know. I mean, I wish I'd have never got involved in the first place. I must be crazy. Talk about a flaming turkey voting for Christmas. Are you finished now? Yes. Good. Right, so why don't I make you a nice brew downstairs? Oh, sounds smashing. You don't work today. No flies on you, is there? You and Joe had a little tiff. No, it works a bit like that saw, but it'll pick up later in the week. So I gather you're at a bit of a loose end, then. What's it to you? I just wondered if we could do a bit of business of his own, that's all. Check it out. This is 100 quid retail, brand new. I'm gonna let you have it for 50 quid plus a free game. Practically mugging myself. No, I'm skimp, mate. Did I mention my excellent credit terms? Suit yourself. Of course, if you do change your mind, you know where to find me. Not having second thoughts about binning him, then? None whatsoever. He's had more than enough chances. So when does he get the good news? There you are, ladies. Uh, we're very excited about your exhibition. <laughs> Me too. So how long do you think it'll stay up for? Well, that depends on how shocking people find it. Oh, no, art should challenge. The more shocking, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Then I can only hope my audience isn't disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> You're up to no good. This isn't just any exhibit, is it? You've got something planned for Dev. 
That's what you meant by payback. Maybe. But go on, you can at least give us a hint. Come to the show later and all will be revealed in glorious detail. So you don't reckon it's a little, uh, understated? Understated? Dad, that diamond's so big, it has its own postcode. Mm. <laughs> right, now look, I better, uh, check up on Uncle Umed and you guard this with your life. No props. Keep Tara away from the flat while I work my magic. Hey, what would I do without you? Doesn't bear thinking about... Oh, been shopping. Just a bit. You'll see what, Dad. It's mm. occasion. Well, you may well ask. You may well ask. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. What? As soon as Rita puts that awful man behind her, the better. Good riddance to bad rubbish, if you ask me. I'm not sure it's quite that simple. It has been very traumatic. She's a survivor. Mark my word, she'll be firing on all cylinders before you know it. Oh, well, one would hope so. <sighs> and it'll be a huge weight off Norris's shoulders. I wouldn't want to set off on our travels with that business still hanging round his neck like the Sword of Damocles. <laughs> uh, so your trip's still on? Mm -hmm. The moment he gives the thumbs up, then it's all aboard the beautiful beast and off into the sunset. <laughs> it sounds very adventurous. <laughs> Is that a beast and a half or what? You're not wrong, lad. You've got to be a seriously insecure weirdo to have one of them. That's number six on the things to do before on 40 list. All right. Uh, anyway, how are things on the domestic front? All right, I suppose. And Julie? Not brilliant. She had another up with Paula. Between you and me, I don't know how many more knockbacks she can take. First Eileen and now this. It's getting well out of hand. Tell me about it. We've got to get her and my mum together. When and where? Soon as. Today. We'll sit them down the rovers and they sort this out once and for all. I like it. Lay down the law. And they don't leave until they've sorted it, right? Sounds like a plan, Batman. I notice they've opened a new bookies near the arcade. Oh, really? Any good? Oh, tear up, why don't you? A very upmarket. They have these huge televisions. Marvels they are. You can almost smell the horses. Hmm. Must be viewing in high death. Oh, whoopie do. And you get free beverages. So do you. Theirs are worth drinking. Oh, and the chairs. Comfortable? Smashing. You'd happily expire in one. <laughs> fat chance of that. <laughs> Splash the cash, matey. 100 fat ones. Well, you've not won again. 130 at Chepstow. This is unreal. <laughs> you are so jammy. Lucky in life, unlucky in love. Mm, is that right? Nah, I'm just trying to cheer Pete up. I'm practically baiting them off. Really? Well, I'll tell you what. Go and buy yourself a nice new hat. Go with that big head of yours. I'd prefer to buy you dinner. Behave. Afternoon, Branch. Save your breath. I'm not setting foot back in that house until Deirdre's apologised, and that's an end to it. Oi, over here, Romeo. Let's see if you can't buy me a new life of luxury. I certainly need one. Anything for you, Duchess? One night, and she's already doing me, Eddie. Climbing the flaming wall. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure what else I can do. I mean, Deirdre won't back down either. It's a classic impasse. Yeah, it's a classic summit, all right. Have you got any idea the kind of effect this might have on Simon? No. No, neither have I, and it scares me to death. Well, I'm sure it'll only be for a few days. Peter, you best get yourself back in here. Blanche and Luke are going halves. He's on a 12 to 1 outsider. If ever there was a woman to drive you to drink. Hey, that's not even remotely funny. Hey, relax, yeah. I was thinking about antifreeze. Oh, I, I wouldn't say Rita's exactly full of the joys. I, I never implied that. And we, we have spoken about this at length. I mean, you don't recover from something like that overnight. Well, it's actually been over a week. <laughs> oh, just a person. Emily, explain to Norris, would you? Uh, explain what to Norris? That Rita is now hopefully ready to move on with the rest of her life. Uh, well, 
I suppose, in a, in a sense, she is. See? Even so, I mean, I can't just up stakes without so much as a buy your leave. I understand that. And as for renting out your house, well, I really think you should have consulted me before making such a major decision. Well, it, it's not as if I'm homeless, Norris. I've got everything I could possibly want to need in the beast. <laughs> I, I won't put any pressure on you. As soon as you're ready to go, just say the word and I'll be right outside. Waiting. I'll let you get on. Bye, Emily. Bye. Bye. Well, I, I suppose you do have to admire her fortitude. What's she gonna do? Where's she gonna go? Well, I haven't the foggiest idea. Although, at the moment, she's parked just outside our house. Right outside waiting. Oh, no. Oh, Mary wouldn't. Hey, you can do this. I can do this. No mercy. No mercy. Of course, of course. My nephew has helped Tara enormously. <laughs> like his uncle, he has an eye for talent. The younger, the better, in fact. You don't have to print that long. <laughs> Look, I can't help you, mister. Nada requests comprende. It's just one song. No, it's James Boring Blunt. I don't play vanilla. I'm proposing to the lady. Good for you. Still ain't happening, no. Wait. I've got a reputation. Look, you've got a 30 second McNugget, right? Then you're busking it. Why is she dad bribing a DJ? No idea. Back in a sec. What's he up to? You'll know soon enough. Just enjoy the show. If this sucks, I'm totally disowning you guys. Hey, Mr. A is lucky shop. <laughs> Thought you were swerving this one anyway. Uh, uh, me, photographer, big event. Think about it. Oh. Hey. Hiya. Hiya. Yeah, see, that's why I'm not getting you at the moment. At the drop of a hat, you can go completely it. But now, when you're like minutes away from doing this insane thing, you're the chilliest I've ever known you. Okay, bottom line, I won't have any regrets. For once, if that's going to do it right. Yeah. Well, don't ever tell anyone this, but um, sometimes you're my hero. <laughs> have one drink with her. There's no pressure. I said I'd go. Stop trying to sell it to me. And please just listen to what she has to say. The sooner you guys clear the air, the better. I couldn't agree more. I don't know if I should be doing this. No way, you're backing out now. I think it's too soon. Well, the longer you leave it, the worse it'll get. I haven't got a clue what to say to her. Trust me, ma'am, it'll come to you. Just speak from the heart. Yes, I'm afraid it did actually just say that. Oh, here we go. Game on. <clears throat> Hiya, love. Hi. Thanks for coming. Well, you've not heard what I've got to say yet. What can I get, everyone? Double anything. I tell you what, why don't you guys grab a table and I'll well, bring the drinks over? If it's all the same to you, I'd rather do this toe to toe like. <clears throat> right, well, love, I know you're angry. Oh, wow. You can read my emotions already. Well, that's freaky, isn't it? Perhaps we've got some kind of psychic sisterly link. Da -da 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 -da. I just want to talk. Why? Come on, Julie, don't be like this. Well, no, I'm serious. You were totally on the money the other day. There's nothing between us, so there's no point in pretending otherwise. Yeah, I mean, what I said, you know, about the less I see of you, the better. It was cruel and small-minded and hurtful. Have I missed anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was also the truth. Mum. Well, there's no maybes about it, is there? Well, however you want it, love. That's fine. Your loss. You can't lose what you've never had, Eileen. Mm. 
Remind me why we're doing this. Go supporting your local community. Huh? Hey, Blanche, what do you keep giving him this rubbish for? It's called supporting your local shop. Full of preservatives and e-numbers in these. Which is why it's tasty. What's a preservative? Just means it makes it last longer, mate. Can you name one? Formaldehyde. Thanks. Are you all right? You look a bit zapped. Just nervous. I hate public speaking. Oh, don't sweat it. The art will do the talking. I must say, I'm surprised you're here. I didn't think this would be your scene. Are you kidding? Justin's a legend at college. Everything's set. Let's do this. Okay. Good luck. Amber, I wish... Listen, have a drink. It's really, really nice to see you. I wish today would never end. Enjoy the show. Thank you so much for coming. What you're about to see is a defining moment in my life. It's a statement. And Justin Turner has harnessed his incredible vision to create a single and perfect image of truth in all its ugly glory. Hey, she's got the patter, I'll give her that. And it's particularly fitting that this first view is held in a community where Dev, who has quite literally been my inspiration, is so respected and admired. Oh, no. Apologies for the interruption, but before we continue, I would like to introduce another work of art. Tara Mandal, everybody. Let's give it up for this fantastic lady. <laughs> now, like any great work, she has beauty and depth, and she can inspire feel your heart and take you places you've never dreamt before. She is the Mona Lisa come to life only better looking. No offense at Da Vinci. <laughs> You're gonna need that, babe. My world was empty before I met you, Tara. It's a blank canvas. Become my wife. Make it a masterpiece. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't deal in fakes. that you think I'd actually marry you. What? Do I have to spell it out? Lisa. I know all about it, Dev, so don't even bother trying to lie. Who's Lisa? Another one of his tarts. Like my mother. Only this one was younger and much more recent. You've been, you've been planning this for weeks. You've been, what, you've been dragging me down to the You've been taking all this money off me just for this. You have no idea how good it feels. I never trusted her. Her mouth is too wide. It's a liar's mouth. He's the liar! <laughs> oh, God, you read! 
Get some money, you just get up on the roof and you get that damn thing now. You get it down now! Get your hat. You humiliate me like this, then you explain yourself and you do it now! I feel like Brillo Paddy in me eyeballs. <laughs> Don't look at me. With my arthritis, I can barely peel a satsuma. Hey, Deb, nothing to be ashamed of from where I'm standing. If you're going to do a calendar, put me down for one. Factory girls would love it. <laughs> Wish I'd got me dog dogs now. Why don't you go over there, eh, Mum? You heard her. She wasn't out to do with me. Well, I might not be the most sensitive bloke in the world. Ten out of ten for observation. But even I can see she's hurt. Look, confused. But she's not the only one. Well, all the more reason for you two to support each other through this. Oh, how very Oprah. Maybe we should all strike up a chorus of lean on me. She's your sister, I. Does that not mean anything? You didn't mean it, did you? What you said to Eileen before. I've managed to find without her so far, haven't I? One thing I've learned from all this, Kirky. You can only depend on yourself. When can I have my stuff back? Soon. Man, I need my iPod, innit? For my butchings. It's an integral part of my process. Just chill out, yeah? Man, I need my tunes, innit? You know, like, a bit of M&M for chopping chops, punchy, aggressive. I'm gonna shut up and play along, will you? Yes. Lager, please, Flower. Is that some kind of coded reference to pansy? Cos if it is, we don't do casual homophobia in here. I'm just being friendly, mate. Good. One lager, coming up, cock. Right, I can let you have this for 45, and that's mate's rates. But it don't come with a guarantee for obvious reasons. Yeah, right then. Listen, can you get me a wee? A bit out of my price range. See what I can get my hands on. Show's the stuff again. How can I be sure you'll keep your mouth shut? Oh, come on, who am I gonna tell? Neighbourhood watch. All right. But most of this stuff's already spoken for. If you do see anything you like, let me know and I'll see what I can do. That's it. One picture of him, Starkers, and we're done. It's not terribly flattering either, is it? Well, well the gallery is called No Wall Painting. <laughs> odd way to propose, if you ask me. Oh, well, he's always been odd. <laughs> Bob? <coughs> Sounds good to me. Actually, uh, me and Michelle are going to take Simon for the pizza. Yeah! Right. Maybe see you later, then? Good. I love a pizza. Especially them salad bars. I have a very funny anecdote, Reed Beetroot. Can't look at the stuff without smiling. Oh, no, I know. Beetroot, Blanche. Opens the floodgates for lots of us, that. Anyway, listen, we should go back to the flat, get your coat, because it might get cold later, OK? You're getting a cold. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. I can see it. You'll wake up in the morning, you'll have a cold. What's this? Is it some kind of voodoo curse? <laughs> it's not that bad. Daryl, look at him. Are you the daughter? Look, bog off, mate. She's got no to say. I've got nothing more to... Amber. To celebrate. Don't try and make me feel guilty about Amber. No, I don't think I need to. <laughs> Have you any idea what this will be doing to her? I need to pack. Now, of course you do. Of course you do, cos we've been here before. What? Uh, no, I uh, slept with Lucy and you like packed your bags and you'd gone. You swore you didn't want anything more to do with me. Oh, so now it's my fault. You cheated on me. Are you any idea how shattered I was when you walked out? Hmm? And I was drunk and I was alone and I turned to somebody else for comfort, but just once. Just once and you told me it was over. You'd have made a great lawyer, you know. All of your clients would have got off on a technicality. How is it a technicality? You walked out on me! <laughs> we were on a break. Is that it? The friend's defense? <laughs> I, th I have no idea what you're talking about. After I found out about you and Lisa, 
I gave you chance after chance to come clean. No more secrets. Ring any bells. So if I said to you, yeah, by the way, I slept with Lisa the night you dumped me, you would have what? You pat me on the head and told me how much you admired my honesty. We will never know now, will we? No, and you know what? As excited as I was about proposing to you and as proud as I would have been to walk you down the aisle. After what I've seen today, I can't help feeling that I've had a lucky escape. Julie, I need to speak to you. Paula? Oh, do you know where Julie is? Bob. Oh. Well done, Einstein. The state she's in, she's going to make things worse. So I didn't care, Mum. Um, Paula, why don't you come back with us for a bit? No, no, I've got to see Julie. I've got to sort yeah, out. Yeah, I know, I know. But I tell you what, come back to ours and Jason will make you a nice hot black coffee. Oh, all right. Here, what's, uh, what's all the hoo-ha? <laughs> hoo-ha doesn't even cover it. A man had his nuddies out on a massive picture. <laughs> he did, yes. Dev no less nuddies. Uh, Dev? Nuddies you are? Him. Starkers, 20 foot high. They were like something out of the Kama Sutra. Oh. I can't believe you missed it, Norris. Yeah, I used to know them. <laughs> I wanted Tic Tacs. <laughs> I just want a quick word. Just do one! You are parasites. If you persist, I shall contact the Press Complaints Commission. Shift slime ball. Just I don't know why you're so worried. Madam needed some publicity for this arty farty gallery of hers and she certainly got it. Oh, Paul Taylor's only started sending the photo around. It'll be all over college by now. Oh, no, he's got that weird blog everyone reads and all. Oh, pull yourself together, girl. Art's night but nudity. Look at that book Madonna did with the doodahs all over at shop and everyone else's doodahs all over her. I mean... This isn't about art, you stupid woman! Tara planned this to humiliate him! No! Why? Because he cheated on her! I don't know why I should be surprised. Guaranteed when things are going well, my dad will screw things up. I'm sorry. I don't know how much you liked her. I was so excited that he was going to propose. We had it sorted down to the last detail. And it turns out that he's a cheat and she's a psycho who's been planning this spectacle for weeks. There can be funny things, families. So, I thought I could make a nice dinner for all three of us. Oh, actually, I have a shepherd's pie just ready to go in the oven. It'll freeze, won't it? Oh, yes, I suppose so. Don't know where I would have been without a freezer looking after Mother. <laughs> I'd say to her, what do you fancy tonight? And she'd say, for example, chicken stew. And then come tea time, I'd get, I don't want chicken stew, I hate chicken stew. <laughs> oh, she could be quite aggressive after golden balls. Oh, dear. So, I'd say to her, well, what do you want? And she'd say, for example, lasagna. And then I'd bob in the freezer, out with the lasagna, in the microwave, on the table, before she could change her mind. <laughs> It all sounds very wearing. She was very dear to me, Mother, but sometimes I could have quite cheerfully murdered her. <laughs> Look, why don't you lot get off her? Me and Amber could do with that time. I wouldn't mind betting Tara is already using her alluring feminine wiles to make up with him. I flaming up, not. I don't want that psycho anywhere near me again. Like in a week's time, no one in college will even remember that photo, and it's only the geeks that read Paul Taylor's blog anyway. It's not that. It's just... I thought we could be, like, a proper family. And she brought out the best in my dad, got on with me. Look at all the effort she made for my 18th. All part of her plan to draw you in, I shouldn't wonder. No. No, she was dead lovely before. Oh, then to think these past few weeks she's been pretending to be all, like... My best mate, she's been planning this mad mental trick. It's pretty mental. Maybe it is my dad's fault. Maybe he drove her to it. Well, I can't say I've always been the best mother in the world. Get away! But you don't stop making mistakes just because mm. you have kids. You can still be as embarrassing and daft and selfish as you ever were. Yeah, 
well, this is the last time. I'm 18 and I've had guts full of him getting me hopes up and then letting me down. Don't blame me. I can't go home tonight. Is it all right if I stay with you? Yeah, of course it is, as long as you like. As far as my dad's concerned, he can swing. Sure I can't get you something to eat? Oh, no, Tal. feel a bit sick. Oh, so daft of me drinking like that. I just want to get back to normal with her. It's like she blames me for everything. Of course she doesn't. There's only one person to blame and we both know who that is. She says she just wanted to know her dad. I don't think she's ever going to forgive me for keeping it from her. You both must know it's not going to be easy. But just keep talking her. You'll get through it, I promise. And if I can help in any way... <sighs> you already have. And this was up the side of the building? Dev's uncle reckons it's some big revenge thing of his girlfriend's. Hey, been playing away, apparently. Really? We look devastated. <laughs> oh, no pun intended. <laughs> you think this is appropriate, you taking a photo like this? Maybe it is a bit insensitive. Send it me, will you? I could even Bluetooth you if you like. Oh, how very modern. <laughs> Oh, thank God we have finally got rid of Lance. <laughs> got us three pizzas, though, didn't she? When she found that air in her wire. <laughs> Do you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if she'd slipped that in there herself, honestly. Oh, come on, she's a scream, Blanche. Yeah, well, she certainly has that effect on me. You can't fool me. You're dead fond of her. Yeah, well, Simon is. They're like partners in crime, them two. They run rings around me. <laughs> you two a drink? Oh, yeah, white wine for me, thanks. This is all up the side of the new flats. <laughs> Maybe he's having a break, though. It wasn't him what put it up, it was Tara. She found out he'd been putting it about. Oh. Never a dull moment, eh? Oh, I could do with some dull right now. Oh, and no, love. I wish there was something I could do for cheer you up. What now? My whole world's been turned upside down. My very existence exploded in my face. Hey, it's a bit like, who do you think you are? It gets very emotional. <gasps> Imagine if you'd been on that and... Maybe not. It's so, a mum she's worried about. I just wish I could get through to her. Make her understand. Oh, she won't listen. It's ironical, isn't it? Just as I find my dad, I lose my mum. Mum, Phil's dad's van's knackered. He was going to take all our equipment to the gig and now if we can't find someone else to do it... Yeah, all right. Just calm down a minute. But the gig's in, like, two hours and all our mates are coming. I'd take you, lads, but I don't think I'd get all your stuff in my car. I could let you have a van from the factory if you like. Even drive you if you can wait half an hour. Yeah? That'd be mint. Let him stay for the gig. Any good? Think very hard before you answer. <laughs> no, they're great. Loud, but they're great. That's really kind of you, thanks. Yeah, cheers, mate. You're a lifesaver. I'll meet him from the factory in half an hour, yeah? It's half of that. Really, you're a star. Hey, who knows? You might end up as big as you too. Dedicate an album to me. Yeah, well, uh, let me know how that works out for you. Do you know what? He's been acting lemon all day. Couldn't get tickets for this Locarno's gig at the weekend. Sean's favourite band. And baby, just please pick up. And I know how uh, how upset you must be, but uh, please just uh, give me a chance to explain. <laughs> I love you, little girl. Um... Uh, I'll send for the rest of my things tomorrow. <laughs> uh, hey. I never imagined that today would end up like this. Huh? <laughs> no. monstrosity shift and it's starting to look like a trailer park. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, it, 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 it's in hand. Ap apologies. Oh, no. Hiya. Hi. Sorry about that text last night. We're a bit late. 
I'm afraid I'd had one too many. I thought as much. The spelling was atrocious. I should have a go at predictive, but my friend Susie comes up as purge. That were enough to put me off. Anyway, I didn't mean it, not a word of it. I'd never want to hurt you, love. I don't want to fall out with you. Neither do I. Why don't you come in, Arze? We're going to have an Indian. Oh, would that be all right? Of course it would. As long as you don't hog the lime pickle. <laughs> Amber! Amber, I just... I just wanted to explain. I'm so sorry if I've hurt you. I never intended to do that. You know how fond I am of you. It's just your father. When I found out what he'd done, I was so angry and so humiliated that... Let's go home. That's great. So, Saturday night, yeah? Yeah, brilliant. Listen, mate, I owe you one. Yeah, cheers. The Archduke Ferdinand. Right, uh, sorry, Blanche, I've got a dash. I've got this gig of Ryan's to get to. Hey, listen, thanks again for babysitting, yeah? I know this one. I saw it in the film. The Archduke Ferdinand. Come here. No, Blanche, I've... I've... It's a lonely, take a sec. The Archduke Ferdinand, you stupid woman. He looked nothing like Peter Eustinoff. It's a funny looking thermometer, this. It's rectal, but it's been through the dishwasher. And, and there he was, bold as brass, naked as a jaybird, all up the side of the flats. I mean, well, there, there must be a law that... Sounds more like Bangkok than Manchester. Huh? <laughs> and, and will you be... Going to Bangkok on your travels, do you think? We're in two minds. Not keen on the lady boys, but the sunsets are meant to be glorious. Mm -hmm. Well, the meal certainly was delicious. All dishes from some of the places Norris and I plan to visit on our travels. Well, I, I particularly enjoyed the Greek salad. Mm. It's the plumpness of the olives that's the trick. <coughs> Mary. Uh, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but uh, the motorhome, uh, I'm a bit concerned about the legality of it. You know, I mean, you living in it right there on the street. Well, it won't be for long, will it? Right. Nicaraguan coffee's all round. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to Nicaragua? Well, we haven't finalised the uh, exact itinerary. <laughs> Are we fit? Where have you been? I was thinking about going off with these two. They've uh, been on the phone to an old mate. You know, promote to see if I could get hold of them gig tickets you were talking about earlier. And could he? Better than that, you and your plus one on the guest list. That do you? Will you please be my new dad? Ah, <laughs> oh, Peter, you're a star. Uh, <laughs> times I've heard that. Hiya. Hi. Everything turned out all right, then? Oh, we're getting there. I just bobbed out while my mum was getting stuck into a chicken booner. Thanks, Eileen. Oh, hey, it's not to me. Oh, it is. My mum told me how you talked to her tonight, and I'm, I'm really grateful. So I just thought... Didn't have to do that. <laughs> Sis? <laughs> That's going to take some getting used to. <laughs> might be fun. Yeah, I think it might.
Listen, Grandad, you can't discharge yourself from hospital because you feel like it. It's madness. All right, well, at least hang on there till you've seen a specialist, please. Whoa, sorry, mate. Look, Grandad, I've got to go. I'll be in to see you later, yeah? Just don't go anywhere till you see me, please. Don't do it, puppy dog. Don't call her. You can't appear desperate, not to your daughter. No, I think you're forgetting the obvious. You have no credit. No, I am desperate. Honestly, I'm fine. Oh, oh all right then. Mm -hmm. Norris, mm -hmm. can I tempt you to one of my special Mary morning mix-ups? What? It's uh, what Mary here calls a fry up, apparently. Oh, I, I, I'm uh, more in the mood for something brandy. How about an ice egg on toast? No, I really am in the need of some bran. I spare you the reasons why. Right. <laughs> oh, Mother used to love my Mary's morning mix ups. <laughs> she was funny about my cooking. <laughs> I'd say, Mother, this food is called en bleu. And she'd say, no, Mary, this food should be cordoned off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was our little joke because um, actually I am a rather talented chef. My um, devils on horseback were the talk of the cul-de-sac. I didn't know you lived in a cul-de-sac. There was quite a competitive drinks and nibble circuit in the late 90s. Let's just say that Mother's Lazy Susan could tell a tale or two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Norris? Yeah. Uh. I'm feeling adventurous and hereby invite you to a dinner party this evening. <laughs> you and me, what you say? Where? Um... No, I've had a bit of a run on the uh, gazettes. Surely, seeing Dev naked sniffing his pink petal isn't that much of a draw. Well, somebody's buying them. <laughs> How's your dad? I don't know, but uh, he'll be out soon, so you'll be able to ask him yourself. Where will he go? Not my problem. Back to his flat. Can he look after himself? Well, social services will have to sort some it out. I'm sorry. I'm all questions this morning. But all I care about with that man I have the misfortune to call me father is that I can make friends with Paula and her Julie again. Might be easier said than done. Oh. Spooky. Hi, Paula. She's talking about you. How are you? I've um, been down the development this morning and the big man's coughed up with the first payment for the grand there. Brilliant. We're rich. Want a cup of? You can always put another bag in the pot. No, Ty, you're all right, Gail. I've had about three cups this morning. Wouldn't mind using your bog, though. Is that all right? You know where it is. Cheers. I'll tell you what, Joe. I'm not doing work for, like, another hour or so. And if you wanted, I could nip down to the bank and pay that in for you. Not a bad idea, with your bag. Yeah. Uh, Cheers, mate. I, I need to keep half of it for petty cash mining to buy some bits and pieces. But yeah, here, uh, bank 500. Uh, ah. I'm just making a work call. You don't need to go outside. Well, it's boring for you, isn't it? Silly man. <laughs> All loves you, baby. Mwah. Hi, it's Joe McIntyre. I've, uh, I've got some more money for you. Give me ten minutes. <sighs> just call. Yeah, just let me know you're all right. I love you, God damn it. Oh, leave her alone, Dave. And put the phone down and talk to me. No, I don't, I'm not in the mood for talking, Uncle Matt. Well, baby, we need to talk about this. No. I tried to do some damage limitation, buying every copy there was in the shop. But I'm assuming this publication is available far and wide in the Northwest slash Manchester type region. No. 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 I know. I know. I know things feel a little bad today. Is it bad? Bad? <laughs> damn. 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 You know, I was supposed to be engaged to them. Why am I? All the best men in the world are single. Laughing stock. Hiya. Oh, are you trouble? I've uh, you had the latest. Big boots are back in. No, it's Grandad. He only reckons he's discharging himself from hospital today. Oh, are you joking? Wait, he's not ready. I know, his mind's made up. You know what he's like. Oh, this is it. I don't. 
I've been robbed of a father all these years and I'm not totally old fave is I his psychology. Anyway, uh, once Gronner makes his mind up, he can be quite stubborn, you know. Well, he hasn't had me to deal with before, has he? And I can be very persuasive. I best get some time off work. Oh, and Jason, you're coming with me. Please, Daryl, I just need this one book from the college library, but I can't show my face. Why, well, you're not that ugly. No. So what happened with the dad there? Oh. Oh, right. Please, will you just go get it for me? Oh, why don't you go into college yourself, love? Eh? If I cared about what people thought about me, I'd never get out of bed in the morning. Clearly. Oh, here he comes. Sex on a stick. Remember? What's your big fella? Hey, let's face it. How often does big mean five stories high? See you later, Daryl. Yeah, Emma, please. Dad, just leave it, yeah? I've got A-levels to pass so I can get out this dump and go to uni and get away from you. Yeah, but we just need to talk. Dad, just get out of my way. Haven't you embarrassed her enough? I'm surprised she called this eatery a dump. You're practically a tablecloth away from a bistro. Get out while you're here, cock. No, Gary. Oh, go on. Oh, Gary, will you stop it? How many more times? There's got to be some perks to this job. Oh, what? Having you mithering me for free bacon baps. Haley's replacing the loo roll in the ladies. She could come out at any time. Everything all right? He wants freebies. It can bog off. Well, I've got to say bog off in public, ma'am. I've got a certain level of cool to keep up. Do you get me? <sighs> I get that you've overdone the body spray, you stink. What is it you're after, Gary? Bacon sign it to go. Cheers. It's funny, sat here waiting for you. I would convince people were talking about me. Oh, I doubt it. There's a lot of gossip round here. And if folk are dining out on it, I just think that Collins it'll do is just cold leftovers by now. Thanks for making me see sense yesterday. Well, too many relationships have been ruined by that man. Just let's get something positive out of this, eh? You and me, mates. Wish I hadn't let you know the way I did. Oh, could have been worse. Could have used a loudspeaker. I was just that worried that Jason and Julia, you know, wasn't easy to hear. I mean, stuff like that is never easy to hear. Compared to you, though, I think... Oh, do you know what? It's in the past. You and me, we're all right. I swore I weren't going to do this. Oh, give over. When in doubt, gets me down your screech. <laughs> to us. To us. I might get a doorbell fitted. Musical. Mothers used to play Row, Row, Row the Boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I bought her this. Oh, how lovely. Did you know, there are four times more species of orchids than there are mammals. I, I wasn't aware of the uh, absolute facts, no. I love orchids. They, they remind me of ladies, um... Never mind. Come through. Thank you. to just it because a fishy smell can linger. Oh, oh, are we having fish? Uh, kiwi fruit blini. Oh, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> <laughs> to the untrained eye, one might think that I was sitting on a sofa, but you and I both know that at a flick of a switch, this flips over and becomes bed number one. Uh, at first glance, it seems roomy. It is. But once you actually get inside, it uh, teeters on the snug. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that must be the amuse bush. Oh. <laughs> uh, consult the place more and uh, join me at top table. <laughs> Colin. 
Why don't you stand there staring? Give me a hand, you lazy mare. I've had a stroke, you know. This is hard. Colin, if you can't even button a shirt, how are you going to fare at home? I'll manage. Oh, to have your confidence. You should try sometime. Might get a smile on your face. Wonders never cease, eh? Looks like you've got company. Hi, Colin. Oh, well, Dad. How's tricks? I've had a stroke. What do you think? You're not still adamant you're going home, are you, Grandad? Certainly is. Oh, will someone chloroform her? Sorry about him. Unfortunately, it's not the uh, side effects of the WhatsApps. I can imagine. <laughs> What's the matter, Dad? Is it your button? No, leave me alone. Oh, well, we can't leave you alone. Where are you going to go? My gaff. But if you're struggling with the most basic of tasks... I'm going home, whether you like it or not. This is on me. I've been telling tales out of school. Tara put the pressure on me big time. And you just what? You blurted it out? I thought that was a bit too classy to just blurt. But I had no idea she were going to go so public. I'm sorry. But she reckons she's been lied to all her life. So you not coming clean about... Oh, Lisa. ...was the final straw. And she's so hard done to, huh? They've had a lucky escape. She was all right. You know something else? That. that was a good photo. Yes, love, what can I get you? So where did you get to earlier? When? When you nipped out for half an hour. I told you I had to pick up some bits for work. You came back empty-handed. What is this, cross-examination? Oh, yeah, I've uh, got you this. Receipt for that cash. Oh, you're a good lad, David. Yes, all right. All right, mate. You all right, loser? Gonna flash the cash and buy us a pint or what? Hey, you've already had a bacon sarnie out, mate. What do you think I am made of money? Well, I've seen how much you had, earlier. Where's? Where'd you get it from? Hey, not in public, yeah? Oh, mm. Dad, what are you doing now? Mm. Being a plonker, that's what he's doing. Oh, shove off. Oh, Dad, think about it. It's lovely here. It's filthy. I'll catch some of... The care is top-notch, isn't it, Jase? Yeah, Todd used to work here. They'll look after you properly. Grandad, don't be a div. Oh, oh, oh my giddy aunt. Come on, Trevor. Oh. You never oh. listen to your Grandad, eh? If you said something interesting, I might pin me lug holes back. Oh, are you all right? Fine. Are you irritating? Very. Yeah. We could take him back to your place. Yeah, my mum would love that. Mind you, there's not much time for that else. I find a man with a healthy appetite a life-enhancing mm. thing. Like a big queue at a bus stop. You find a queue at the bus stop life-enhancing? Well, yes. Because you know any minute now something's going to come along. <laughs> ah, yes, but what if it's not your bus? I get a pass. I'm not route-restricted. Oh. <laughs> Did my... Uh, Fish pie, past muster. Yeah, it's very uh, tangy. Capers, a personal pet of mine. <laughs> Mother used to say I was caper crazy. No. <laughs> oh, she was only joking. <laughs> Guess what's for pudding? Uh, caper pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Norris, you are a card. You know, I've often found that an odd expression. Ditto. I mean, how can you? liken uh, someone to a, a greetings mm. card. Thus speaks a man who spent a lifetime in stationery. <laughs> oh, now, come on. I've not always been in stationery. I've made your favourite for dessert. Ah, now, I wonder what that could be. Could it be a chocolate mousse? Yes. <laughs> <sighs> I find food a very poetic thing. You know, I, I used to say the plural for mousse should be meese. As in goose and geese. Oh. <laughs> I find words sensuous and appealing, ah. as do you. My first uh, friend was pretty lousy, word-wise. Well, what can you expect from a man whose favourite poem was Milk, Milk, Ma Lemonade, Mary, 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 please, the... please, this uh, is a civilised evening. <laughs> Oh, 
open wide for the choo-choo train. Woo-woo. What on earth are you doing? Nothing. I fancy you put too much brandy in your amuse bouche. You're quite a different person this evening. Who am I? Sheena Easton. Sorry, who? Dirty lady. Risque lyrics. Avant-garde hemlines. Oh. Took in. <laughs> Food first. Fun later. <laughs> mm. Right. Let's get off. Get the tea on. You Jason Skivvy then? Oh, chief cook and bottle washer, that's me. I bet you wouldn't have it any other way. No, but don't tell him that. Must be nice to be needed. Julie needs you. Julie's always been a very self-reliant person. Poor cow, she's had to be. I've tried to reach out to her in recent years, but I think it's too late. Some days I used to hate... Well, no, hate's too strong a word, but... I don't know, I'd look at her and I'd... I'd feel nothing. Because she was part of him, you know? That's not right, is it? Poor thing. Oh, me or her? Take your pick. <laughs> You will come and see me, though, won't you? Any time. You know where I am. You might regret you said that. This is just too weird. I know. But nice weird. Come here. <laughs> Amber will have calmed it down now. Children are resilient like that. They bounce back. I remember your very old mother <laughs> dropping your pram down the curbstone and you falling out. And it is true, you really did bounce on your head. Mark my words, she will have forgotten all about it. As if my day couldn't get any worse. Worse? But guess what, Dad? You're all over the internet. You're getting hundreds of hits. Everywhere I go, people literally wet themselves, and that's not a good look. <sighs> but anyone would think that I took the photo myself the way you're carrying on. So I just came to tell you I'm never going to speak to you again as long as I live. Sometimes bouncing back takes time. Me, Norris. No, no, thank you. Oh, I often like to express myself through the medium of dance. <laughs> Woo! Oh. <laughs> oh, imagine the nights we'll spend together, Norris. You, me, and Sheena Easton, <laughs> alone, beneath a panoply of stars. <laughs> oh, should we get one of the beds out and see what it feels like uh, to watch the stars through uh, the sunroof? No, no, no. Uh, I can imagine. I have a very vivid imagination. What do you wear in bed, Norris? Oh. Pajamas and an eye mask, <laughs> you? Tweed by Lanthric oh. and possibly a scrunchie. I tend to heat up at night, so I like as few layers as possible after lights out. Uh, oh. I just lie there stroking my Mew Mew till I fall asleep. <sighs> mew Mew? My cuddly monkey. <laughs> oh, what was that? Can, can, can people see in here? So what if they can? There's nothing to see, is there? <laughs> Unless we... Uh, Give them something to see. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I should be making a move. It, it's been a charming evening, but... Oh, no, no, stay, Norris. Uh, we can try the beds for size, you know. <laughs> scare each other with ghost stories. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Do you like my dress, Norris? It's meant to be worn by a woman of the world. And when we get out on the open road... That's what I'll be. Look, I really must insist on leaving. Good night to you, Mary, and thank you for the dinner. <laughs> no! Oh, Mary, please, what are you doing, Mary? For goodness sake, control yourself, woman! Oh. 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 Hiya! Hiya! Oh, is that you, Julie? I've just had a drink with your... Mum. And we've just had a nice cup of cocoa with me, Dad. He's not a well man. I know, he's sick. Sick in the head. I didn't want to come. They made me. Well, you know where you can go, don't you? He's your father, and he's had a stroke. What are you going to do? Don't you dare use emotional blackmail on me. Let him rot 
Got in the gutter? I remember what he was like. You're living proof of what he was like. And it was a really long time ago. Oh, I'll just go. No. And that's supposed to make everything all right, is Look, it? Look, Mum, he was determined to leave the hospital and go home. But if he goes home, he has nothing and no one. Well, he should have thought about that before he started messing around with her mum. I don't need to listen to this. He was practically committing suicide, Mum. Was I, heck? Oh, and I thought Todd was the dramatic one. How could you do this to me, Jason? What part of your brain thought that I'd be all right with this? And what part of your brain says to leave him to die in his own home? He's not dying. Is he? No. No. But he would do if there was no one there to look after him. One night. One night he sleeps in your bed and then tomorrow you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> not going to tell me about your dinner with Mary last night. What is it you want to know? Well, did you have a nice time? <laughs> a nice time? I mean, why do people always have... I mean, why isn't simple, honest friendship enough anymore? Oh, dear. Has something happened? Well, something's been happening for quite some time now, but I just... Ignored it, thinking she'd get the message, but <laughs> she wouldn't get the message if it was written in letters a mile high. The message being? That I'm happy to be a friend. Travelling companion, even, but that's as far as it goes. But she wants it to go further. Oh, I, I, I had to fight my way out of that motor home last night, and, and that's there with it right outside our front door. I mean, once we're on the open road, well... <laughs> And have you made all this clear to her? Oh, I, I, I don't want to hurt the woman's feelings. You haven't. What? No. Oh. oh, but you must. And the sooner, the better. But how? What am I going to say? Well, you say that there's been a misunderstanding and that you... you... No, 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 I, I'm not going to dictate the words to you. They, they've got to be your own words, and they've got to leave her in no doubt what you've decided. Just the facade of <coughs> standing. It's like keeping a box and throwing away the toys that were inside it. So crush away, crush anything. There's pages and pages of carols in here, Grandad. Grandad, you listening? Yes, yes. I mean, you should wait till you get your assessment through, eh? No, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. Right, I'm going to make a start. See if they've got any vacancies. See how much it costs and all that, yeah? Why can't I go back to my flat? Oh, where I can... Because you've had a stroke and you can't look after yourself. We've been through all this, Grandad. And you can't stay here? Yes, we know, ma'am, you said. Yeah, but do you, or do you think I'll just pretend to ring a few places and then say that you didn't have any vacancies and I'll say, well, you'll have to stay here then. Well, I'm not going to. Do you understand? You can hardly not. You've said it enough. I just wondered, cos I'm not feeling too mobile this morning, if, if Ches would mind taking Ozzy out for his walk for me. Of course I will, yeah. Well, you should have come early. You could have done it. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm spoiling everything. No, I'll take him. I have to take Michael anyway. Then I'll do my work when I get back. Go on, then. Thanks, Ches. Hey, listen, the back door's open and his lead's on the table. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Fizz, I wasn't thinking. It's OK. Sit down. Do you want a coffee? Yeah, go on, then. Hey, but you're not working today. Oh, um, no, I've got one of my days off. I've um, got a, well, an appointment this afternoon with this teacher that's helping me with Chessie's schooling. All right. Do they come here, then, do they? Oh. No. I go and see him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought you looked like you made a bit of an effort today. So, what's he like? He's not like anything. Not like you're trying to make out. He's helping me and I'm glad, but that's all. Mm? Well, I believe you. Can I get you anything else? Oh, no, thank you. That was lovely. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hello. Do, do, do you mind if I... No, 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 sit down. <laughs> oh, this is uh, rather difficult. 
What is? Well, it's, it's something I, I should probably have said before, you see, but, but I didn't realise... Oh, dear. What didn't you realise? Just what you... I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's your fault. Of course not. I'm, nobody's fault. It's just well, one of those things that happens sometimes and... Oh, I'm not making much sense, am I? No. But I can probably decipher what it is you're going on about. About us going away together. <sighs> you don't want to? I wouldn't put it as bluntly as that. It... No. Because you're too nice. Which is why I'm saying it for you. It's just that your view of life and, and, and what you want is not the same as mine. Probably not. Once upon a time on a day like this, I would have been at the bookies putting my money on GGs. What made you stop? My wife. Oh, she laid the law down, did she? No, she left me and took all my money. Oh. So I had nothing to bet with anymore. <laughs> ah, now I think I recognize. Good morning, Amber. Morning. So, have you yet found it in your heart to forgive your poor father for being the victim of a cruel trick. That's not what I'm forgiving him for. Oh, so I have this wrong. What was it then? For always making a mess of everything and now doing it in public so it's me people are laughing at as well as him. So, your pride is hurt. Well, yes. Yes, only if your pride is hurt, think how he feels. See you later. That's just 60 pilo. Thank you. And I um, ought to tell you before you hear it from anyone else, my dad's back at my house. Well, you've surprised me there. I didn't think you'd have him through the door. He got through before I knew anything about it, but he's not stopping. I put my foot down at that. And how is he? Well, he's not so clever. I mean, you wouldn't trust him to make a cup of tea, but then you wouldn't trust him full stop, would you? No, but... Uh... I wouldn't like to think of him suffering. Yeah, well, he's still got plenty to say for himself. But he'd love to see if you fancied looking in. Well, I might. If only to try and understand why I was all set to share my life with him. I mean, is he a brilliant con man or have I turned stupid in my old age? Oh, he's a brilliant con man. He conned all of us. Oh, Eileen. He is. He's a bad one. A greed reader. I'm afraid I'd have to, yes. I've been just speaking to your daughter. Where? The cafe. She was sitting in a corner hoping I wouldn't see her. In fact, hoping no one would see her now that you have made her a laughing stock. Well, that's what I've done. Her words, not mine. You know, for days I've done nothing but call her and leave messages all apologetic about how I know I was to blame and how I hope that she'll forgive me. Now, what else am I supposed to do? I don't know. But then I think perhaps she doesn't either. So it's like stalemate. You know what this is like? No, I'll tell you what this is like. This is like how Tara used to behave when she didn't get her own way. I think she always did. And you know, I'm not going to have another little princess treat me like a slave at her beck and call. So if you see Amber again, could you please tell her that, yes, I will be glad to see her when she is ready to apologise for the way that she has behaved. If I see her, which I probably won't, then I'll tell her. You know, as for me, I've apologised enough. I, I feel like I'm letting you down. Of course you're not. It, isn't there somebody else you could go with? There's nobody else I want to go with. <laughs> I I'll tell you something, shall I? If it hadn't been for you, I, I wouldn't even have got this far. Oh. I I've always been a dreamer, but you've given me the confidence to go the extra step and turn dream into reality, and I I'll always be grateful for that. Well, as 
I've never had that confidence. <laughs> and I can't give you any of mine. No, it doesn't work like that, does it? <clears throat> but you, you, you will keep in touch. Of course I will. Every time I come to a new place, the first thing I should do is send you a postcard. <laughs> so in a way, you'll be coming along with me after all. Unless you really want to come. Last chance. Sorry. <laughs> He's got bags of energy. Never stops. Oh, so now can you see why I'm having trouble with him? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll walk him every day if you like. Oh, Ooh. thanks, Chess. Now, get on with your work. Hey, um, I was thinking... You always go for teachers, you? No, John, yeah, but that's all. Yeah, and now this new one. Ah, you can deny it, but I can see you. Can't wait for this afternoon. Yeah, sure. So, what's his name then? I'm not telling you. <sighs> Bye. And you can't forgive him. I'm not sure I can, actually. Because you think what he's done is unforgivable. Well, that's that. Mary's gone. And I'm still here. Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was until I watched her drive off and then I wished I was going with her. So, it's another opportunity spent. I might uh, just have a rest, take a tablet. I think you should. And then I'll be back behind the counter, and life will have passed me by once again. And who can blame it? I shan't ask. Oh, we have these little crises from time to time. What you said, it's not that I think what my dad's done is unforgivable. I just don't think he wants forgiving. I get the impression he's unaware he's done anything wrong. I was um, actually looking for somebody, uh, Mr. Norris Cole. Norris? This is his shop, isn't it? Half of it. And normally you would find him here, but he had a bit of business to attend to. Oh. S so if I came back later? Oh, yes, you should find him here. Yeah, then I'll do that. Uh, can I take a message or tell him who called or... Suit yourself. <laughs> Everything all right? Uh, I was seeing Mary off. See you? Are you not going with her? Well, uh, she's gone, and I'm still here, so obviously not, no. Oh, dear. Why? What happened? I'd rather not talk about it if it's all the same to you. All right, well, then don't. Oh, and you've had a visitor. Somebody asking for you. Oh, who? No idea. Wouldn't give his name. Didn't want to leave a message. Anyway, I've got a bit of business to attend to, so you all right on your own? Of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? It's what I've been most of my life. I won't be long. Ah. Right, now, you, you take your coat off and get comfortable, and I'll... I'll um... No, I've, I've got a better idea than that. What? I'll put my coat on and we'll take a nice stroll down to the Rovers. It's a bit early. Well, we'll walk slow <laughs> so we get there on time. Go on, then. Right. I'll nip upstairs and make myself looking decent. <laughs> I've got a good reason for calling. I want to ask you something. What? No, I'll tell you down at pub. No, go on. Give us a clue. Uh, Spain. Spain? <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you now, aren't you? Yeah, go on. 
I've got a friend who owns an apartment in Spain which she normally lets out. But the arrangements for the next couple of weeks have fallen through. So she says I can have it if I want to go over and take a friend. So go and get ready because I've got to let her know today. Right. Right, aye, aye. Grandad, you've got a visitor. Oh, Rita, this is a surprise. Mm. I've surprised myself coming here. How are you? Oh, I'll probably not make the Olympics, but all right, yes. Do you want to sit down and make your brew? Uh, no tea, thank you. you know, I'll say, you're, you're looking as lowly as ever. Now, don't start that again. I fell for your charms once, not anymore. So you've written me off as well, have you? And all on account of one mistake, and it was a mistake. I'm not denying it. All the same, do I deserve to be banished from human society for the rest of my life? Nobody's banishing you. I think they are. We're just trying to help you, Grandad. You'd think nobody else had ever made a mistake. No one had ever put a foot wrong. Perhaps they're just wondering why it's taken this long for you to admit it. Because I was hoping I'd never have to. I was hoping it would all be forgotten about. Some things never are. No. No, I've learnt that if I've learnt nothing else, but what a price I've paid, eh? Amber? It's nice to see you. You OK? Me, yeah, I'm uh, fine, thank you. Uh, especially seeing you coming through the door, which I hope is a sign that you forgive me for the... It's the mess I've made of everything. I'll go for a walk so you two can be private and say what you want to say to one another. <laughs> All I want to say is uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have gone on at you. It wasn't your fault. I, I didn't think it was. Where is she? Tara, what's happened with her? I don't know. You know what? I don't, don't care. That one was a witch. Your father had a close escape. No, she wasn't a witch, Ume. There's no need for names. Tell her. Tell her how you have put the art gallery up for sale. Huh? The art gallery, which was a complete waste of money and time. Come here. Sorry I wasn't more supportive. You were upset. <laughs> so listen, uh, does that mean you come back home to stay, yes? If that's OK. Is that OK? <laughs> it's what will make him most happy. <laughs> it's OK, isn't that? Any time you like. OK. Anyway, I've got stuff to do. Yeah, sure. Hey, give me a... Mm -hmm. OK, see you later. Yeah, uh, bye. Two ninety change. So very much for me. Shall we uh, we'll check the weight of a street, though? Yeah. Mm. It's a lovely apartment, Jack. Three bedrooms. It's got its own pool. I'll get some photographs from her, and then you can see for yourself. Right. Uh, w w would we be going together, like? <laughs> I'd hope so. Not much point going different ways. No, except... no, 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 that's, that's not what I mean, but... Oh, what? I'm, no, I know what you mean. We'd be going as companions. Separate beds, separate bedrooms, even separate bathrooms, because there's one each of them. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I said to him, why don't you just close for half an hour and come and have a drink with me and Emily? But no, he's been in a state since last night. How on earth was he going to tell Mary that he didn't want to go with her? Oh, I see. Uh, a vodka and tonic, love, please, and a sweet share of coffee. Thank Coming you. Up. Only now, when she's gone, he seems to be having second thoughts. Oh, they're no good. Well, here he is. I was just telling Emily how you refused to come and have a drink with us. <sighs> Can't do any harm once in a blue moon. <laughs> so, no more regrets about not going off with Mary? Oh, no. I, I think there's a lot to be said for knowing yourself and where you'd be most content. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Oh, and can I have half a bitter as well, love, please? Thank you. Uh, 
smiling then. So, he's allowed. Yeah, but I know why he was smiling. Is he on your way to see? Mm, I'm gone. Hello? It is, yeah? I was, yeah. In fact, I'm just on my way now. Oh no. What? Well, what's the matter with him? Is it serious? There's something happened. See, the folk round here still think of me as being married, but I know, I know I'm not, I'm a widower. You wait till they find out that I'm going away with a lady friend on holiday. <laughs> it's going to be, what would Vera think? Ignore him. Oh, I will. Mind you, I've got a box clever with Molly and Tyrone, you see. Well, I, I would have thought that Molly would have been delighted for you. Oh, well, she might. But the lad, you see, he's, he's a bit old-fashioned, and I don't want to set them up against each other. Jack, do you want to come? Or are you just looking for an excuse so as not to upset me? No, I, I, I do. I, I do. I will. When we're setting off. <laughs> Norris. Oh. This is the gentleman who is asking for you. We've been a bit naughty. We've closed for his dinner. What, what, what do you want? To see you? To have a talk? Well, don't you think it's time we did? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not sure I do, no. Oh, no, come on. And, and, and just walking in like this. What were you trying to do? T take me by surprise, shock me into talking to you? Is something the matter? Oh, yes, something's the matter. You can say that again. Um, I'm Norris's brother, Ramsay. But we haven't met for a long time. Too long. No. No, not too long. In fact, not long enough. So would you please just, just leave me alone? I, I, I don't want anything to do with you. All right, Norris, no need for that. Please, just... Just leave me alone. I, I, I have nothing to say to you. Well, perhaps you might have later when you've got over the shock. I very much doubt it. In fact, I very much doubt I shall ever have anything to say to you. No, I'm sorry to hear that. Very sorry. What on earth was all that? That was your brother. I didn't know you had a brother. Half-brother, to be exact. And that's a half-brother too many. Why? And what were you talking to him like that for? It's a family matter. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, but we do. Where does he live? <laughs> I've no idea. and I don't care, just as so long as he goes back there. Yeah, but he's obviously come looking for you. And he's had a wasted journey. And that, excuse me, I think it's time one of us got back to the shop. Well... So who is it, Shrenya? The homeschooling people? Not them, no. All right, well, somebody then to tell you that this man you were going to meet has been taken to hospital? Yeah. All right, and did they say why? No. And which hospital has he been taken to? Well, I asked them, but they wouldn't tell me. They wouldn't? Oh, Fizz, this is stupid. Somebody that you're friends with has been taken to hospital and they won't tell you which one. We'll just ring round them all then until we find it. No! They won't tell you either. What, the hospitals won't? No. What is this? What's so special about him that everything's such a big secret? He's in prison. Prison? Oh, no. No, it's not, is it? John. <sighs> yeah. John Steve, that's who you were going to see. Oh, so there's only these two possible here, look. And that one there, they said they can't move him in till Monday. Is your mum still saying he has to be out by today? She is, yes. 
Right, well, it's just that one then. Yeah, and they said that I was welcome to have a look round that, but, well, I wouldn't know what I was looking at, so... so you want me to come with you? Yeah, if that was all right. Well, I suppose I can take a couple of hours off if I say it's a family emergency. Oh, yeah, cheers, great. And are you happy with all that, Dad? Mm -hmm. Me and Jason, we're going to go and check out the care home that Jason's chosen for you, see if it's all right. He's not chosen it, he's chosen itself because it's the only one that's cheap and has got a run going. Don't be daft. We're going to go and check it out, OK? Well, I don't know why you're troubling yourself since you'll only come back and tell me it's wonderful. We will only do that if it is. And I would think the less you tell him about his past history, the better. Well, I'll tell them all about it when I get there. And then they'll send me straight back here. To jail. That's where they'll send you. Right, we're off. Fingers crossed it's somewhere really nice for you. I just don't know how you can sit there and look at him and talk to him. I'd already tried everybody else I could think of and I needed somebody to help with chairs. Well, it didn't have to be him, did it? What? But why not him? Well, you really want me to remind you? No, it's all right. <sighs> so, how many times have you been to see him? Just a couple. <laughs> so now he's going to be thinking you're going to be waiting for him when he gets out. What, you will be? Oh, is that what you're planning on doing, is it? No, I'm not planning on anything except to help Chesney and John was the only one I could find to do that. Now, I'm sorry, right, but I just don't want to talk about it. Yeah, well, obviously you don't. Or else why wouldn't you have told anyone? I'll tell you why, shall I? Because you knew what they'd say if you did. Which is exactly the same as what I'm saying. That you must be completely off your head if you even think about going to see him. I'm going. He'll only do the same thing again, Fizz. You do know that, don't you? He's let you down once and... <sighs> Crazy. This has all the local bed and breakfasts and hotels. Oh, that's very helpful. Thank you. Are you not from round here, then? Yeah, once upon a time. So long ago, I hardly recognise a thing. All changed, does it? Oh, everything. Well, not quite everything. No. Attitudes. They haven't changed. Hiya. Oh, yeah. I, I can't remember. What time are you finishing here today? Five o'clock. Why? No, no reason. Uh, what are you up to that you want to know where I'm going to be? Nothing. I'm going into town for a walk about. See you later. Mm. Why'd you do it, Dad? Hmm? What? Fourteen-year-old girl, why? Did you ever think about the lives you'd make a mess of mine, Paula's, my mother's? Do, do you really think I planned all that? No, I don't think you planned any of it. I didn't. I didn't plan, I didn't think. Well, you should have done. And so should she. Are you blaming her? No. No. Did you ever think about the damage you'd be doing? I never thought at all. And did I regret it? Yes. And how often did I regret it? Every day. And how many times a day? A million. Do you mean that? Do you think I enjoyed your mother leaving me and losing you and never knowing what else might happen and never knowing whether my sin would rear its head and spoil everything like it did with Rita. Eileen, I'm human. I want the same things that all the humans have. Especially now when I need a family, Rami, and I haven't got that, have I, because you throwing me out? Oh, Dad, do you, do you blame me? To be quite honest, no, I don't. Could you forgive me if I'd done something as bad? Of course you couldn't. No. No, I can understand you were surprised to see him. I mean, it was a bit odd. He didn't let you know he were coming. Wouldn't have made any difference. You'd still have been hostile. If you want to put it that way, yes. Even though you haven't seen him for how many years? Nearly 50. 
50? And you haven't had any contact? No. So, why? Rita, I'm not going to tell you any more than I already have. It's a family matter. I thought we were your family. Me and Emily. Well, in, in some respects, yes, you are. But not in this one. The real reason I've uh, come back here is to try and make peace with a member of my family, one I fell out with a long time ago. Oh, then I wish you every success. Thank you. I don't seem to have got off to a very auspicious start. <laughs> sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, 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 you're not doing it. <laughs> Can I get you anything else? Oh, uh, sorry, that's what I meant to ask when we got talking. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I'm glad we did. Uh, nothing else, no. Uh, thank you. <sighs> well, it's time I, um... I don't know what I'm going to do. Decide on my next move, I suppose. Afternoon. Yes, afternoon. Oh, before I forget, do you think you could manage without me for a fortnight? Oh, I'm not sure. Might we have to? Uh, Doreen from Blackpool Run. Oh, yeah, Doreen and Jeff. Oh. Off on the travels again, wondered if I could nip down there and keep my eye on things, so I said I could, you know. I mean, come on, two weeks strolling down the prom, taking in the sea air. <laughs> Try and stop me. <laughs> you like Blackpool, don't you? I do. Even though me and Alvira didn't make it, that wasn't Blackpool's fault, was it? Well, great, eh? I wish I could come with you. Mm. I'll be going on Sunday. Cash or account? Uh, account, I think. Yeah, put this on my account. And your number, please? It's uh, 735425553. Thank you. And your code word, please, Mr Cropper. Puffing Bella. Yep, yeah, that's fine. What? What's going on? I, no, I, I, I've made a mistake. It's a mistake. Um... Now, what that was, Mr. Cropper, and I'm sorry, it must have been a bit of a shock. It was our computer telling us that you are our. Wait for it. One millionth customer! <laughs> Our one millionth customer since we opened here. And to celebrate that, we'd like you to accept, well, first of all, a glass of champagne. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. And uh, secondly, we'd like you and your partner to be our guests as you go on a romantic weekend break in a European city of your choice. Well done, Mr. Roy Cropper. <laughs> oh, here they are. Biscuit packing. Right, well, we've been and had a look at the place. A palace, is it? No, but... Uh, well, it'll be absolutely fine until we can find you something better, won't it? Yeah, it's um, it's nice and friendly. What you mean is it's scruffy and run-down and full of scruffy, run-down old chaps like me. Friendly. Me and Jason will take him tonight, Eileen. Fine. Only I need to show my face across the road. See you later, Dad. Now, come on, tell the truth. I'm going to be sent there anyway. What's it really like? No, it's all right. You know, they've got television and everything. Eileen, did you hear that? They've got television. Well, I'm really looking forward to that. Well, congratulations again, Mr Cropper. Cheers. 
Oh, and don't forget, we need to hear from you about where you and your wife want to go for your luxury weekend. I'll have a word with her. She's always wanting to go abroad. And her birthday's coming up, so... Well, could have worked out better. I suppose not, no. <laughs> <laughs> Though, I must say, you did look a bit startled when the balloon went up. I wonder what was going on for a minute. I thought you were going to arrest me. <laughs> 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 well, anyhow, like you say, we'll be in touch. Yeah. Bye, Mr Cropper. Oh. Hi up. About time too, we're starving here. Where have you been? Took a car on a test drive and the clutch went, which wasn't what it was brought in for, but of course, we had to fix it. Well, the tea is ready as soon as you are. I'll just have a wash. Oh, make her quick and will you? Hey, and um, Jack's off on his holidays on Sunday. He's going to Blackpool. Yeah? All right. Jeff and Dorian have asked me over, so you two will have this place to yourself. Right. What? No. Hey. Eh? Some matter. Well, if there is, I've no idea what. I must say, if I still had my brother, I think I'd be glad to see him no matter what had happened in the past. Yes, well, you haven't, have you, so you don't know what you're talking about. You were quite upset when you said goodbye to Mary this morning. What's she got to do with it? Well, I'm just wondering if it had left you in the wrong mood for bumping into him like that. Mary's got nothing to do with it. I would have felt the same whenever I bumped into him. And, well, he's not a young man, is he? Maybe this will be his last visit. Yes, well, let's hope so. Oh, Norris. Look, I'm being honest. You obviously want to know what I think, and so I'm telling you. Well, I just don't want you missing an opportunity and then regretting it for the rest of your life. The only thing I regret is that he's seen fit to walk back into my life, bold as brass, when, when he knew he wouldn't be welcome. He knew no such thing. <sighs> He was smiling and holding out his hand to you. And all I'm going to get now from morn till night is questions about him and about my behaviour as if I was the one... The one that what? No. No, I, I, I'm sorry, Emily. I, I know you're trying all your little tricks to get it out of me, but you're not going to. Right, now, is there anything else we need to take with us? Yes. What? Plenty of money, because that's the one thing them people will definitely want. I've got everything you brought back with him anyway. OK. OK. Right, Dad, I'm going to go and get a taxi, and then we're going to have a little ride to this nice care home, where they can't wait to meet you and start looking after you. Why? Are they stupid? No, they're very kind, and it's something that they know how to do that we don't. Oh, so you're stupid. Yeah, we are a bit. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, he'll be gone in ten minutes, honey. Yeah, and he'll hate it the minute he gets there. And they'll hate him and who can blame him because he'll be that objectionable calling them names and making a nuisance of himself. Just let him stop here. Would you really mean that? I don't know. I didn't know I was going to say it, did I? Well, maybe he can just stay here till we find somewhere better, yeah, Mum? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. What? And then we go through all this again? No, thank you. I don't want him here and you know why. But he's here, he's my dad, I can't change it, so I'm stuck with him. But you are only staying here... Are you listening to me? Yes. You are only stopping here until you are well enough to go back to your own place. But what if I never get well? Do you want me to change my mind or not? No. No, shut it! I don't want us falling out. And I know that you're dead concerned about him, Fizz. So I'm sorry, you know, for everything that I said. It's OK. There's people around here who'd say a lot worse. <laughs> so... Have you found out any more yet about why he's in hospital? Well, I rang again, and what they said this time, there'd been an incident as a result of which John Stape was considered in need of hospital treatment. Been an incident? What does that mean? Somebody's beating him up? Oh, hang on, you don't know that. And I'm never going to at this rate. Oh, Fizz, I'm so sorry. You won't tell anybody else, will you? No, of course I won't. Drop pint then, Jack. Aye, right, so on. Go on, I'll help you carry him. Two pints of bitter and half a lager, please. Right, you are. So, what were you looking at me like that for when I told you about Jack going to Blackpool? 
What, it didn't make you wonder as well? Wonder what? Whether he was going on his own or attacking that woman. No, it didn't make me wonder. Because it's none of our business, is it? Well, if we're like his family, like he says we are, like he said at our wedding, then yeah, it is our business. Well, he hasn't said out about her, has he? He's just talked as if he was going on his own. If you could choose anywhere in Europe... Uh, why are you asking me, though? Where would you go? Eddie. Rome, Paris, anywhere. Uh, not until you tell me why. Barcelona. Oh, all right. Uh, Paris. I'd like to go to Paris. <laughs> Now what are you going to say? We can. And if you could choose, what sort of hotel? Posh or very posh? Oh. oh, excuse me. Oh, hello. Me again. Only I thought I'd have another go at talking to him. Well, I admire your persistence. Do you know, I've never seen him like that. I haven't. Oh, um, I wonder if you can point me in the right direction. Or perhaps you feel you shouldn't tell me anything after the way he was? Well, I can tell you, he's a very obstinate man. And when he makes up his mind, he takes some shifting. Oh, believe me, I'm aware of that. Right. Well, the other thing I can tell you is, he lives just over there at number three. He lodges with Emily Bishop, a friend of mine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is your birthday coming up? Hmm? Yeah, but Paris. Eddie was skint after our last holiday. We're well, not as skint as you think. I've been putting a few bob aside whenever I've had the chance. Well, how much do you think it'd cost, the travel and accommodation? Doesn't matter. Whatever the cost, the money will be found. Oh, found how, though? Oh, Eddie, you're making me nervous. Why should this birthday be any different from all the others I've had when... Well, I'm not complaining, but you've... Never exactly pushed the boat out before, have you? Look up the Eiffel Tower and uh, uh, all sorts. <laughs> well, whatever there is to do, we'll do it. So, um, you wouldn't mind if we did a bit of redecorating? No, it's all out. Do what you like. Well, yeah, I know. But you know when you said you're going to Blackpool? Blackpool, yeah. Why? Are you going on your own or are you just going with that Connie? Well, that's none of our business. Chat won't mind telling us. Why should it? Because some things are private. Well, fine. If he says that, I won't ask anymore. Am I going to Blackpool with Connie? Yeah. No, I'm not. Right, everybody happy now? Well, no, I'm not, because I don't think he should have asked you a thing like that. Yeah, well, he did, and I answered him, so no big deal. Here. Uh, yes, he is. Would you like to come in? Oh, well, thank you, but perhaps if you were to let him know I'm here first. I'm not quite sure. Well, what how many it? times do you need to be told you're not welcome here? Well, no. Can't we just sit down and talk? About what? There's no talking to be done now. Just, just go away. Please. I think there's everything to talk about because I'm being unfairly accused here. Not unfairly at all. Well, I feel that I am. I always have been, and now I want this settling once and for all. It was settled 50 years ago. Now go away, just go on. Well, you, you won't even talk to me? No, no I won't. But he's your brother. But it's nothing to me, nothing. And, and anyway, what do you know? This is none of your business, so please just keep out of it. Oh, well, I shall. You needn't worry about that. If the cheek of the devil show in your face. I just want to put things right between us. How? After what you've done? Oh, Norris. Fifty years. Fifty years, but you've still got blood on your hands. What are you playing at? What are you doing? Listen to killers, why? Yo, where are you going? Because your granddad's got an appointment at the hospital. Well, I'm going to work. You know I'm going to work. Well, he's having tests. You'll have to go with me. Can't go on his own. Yeah, well, Bill's asked me to give him a hand, so I'm going over Oh, there. it's your fault he's here, so you're going. And it's your fault that I'm stood in the street in my dressing gown, so thanks very much for that. Mum, I can't... Jason, your mess, you sort it. Slightly common to be shouting in the street, I believe. 
What's occurring, Gary? Oh, shut up, Julie. I'm not in the mood. It rhymes. Sorry. Who's rattled on, Nicholas? What? Cage. Couldn't do us a favour, could you, Julie? Go on. Go on. Get out. I'm sick of this lackadaisical attitude to paper delivery. What does lackadaisical mean? Look in the mirror. You've got it written through you like rock. Now, go on. Hey, Norris, don't be so heavy-handed. He's only a kid. You don't know the half of it. Well, I know bullying when I see it. Uh... Ryan, we won't be lining his pockets today. Mm. Nice one, Norris. <laughs> what is that, Norris? A rolled-up woman's weekly. Not that it's any of your business. What's getting to him? Keep your voice down. His half-brother's turned up without so much as a buy-your-leave. What is a buy-your-leave, anyway? Out the foggiest. And they haven't spoken for years. I think it's as many as 50. What? Did they have a big falling out? Tina, 50 years. That's nearly as old as these tights. <sighs> oh, yeah. Stupid question. I wonder what it was over. Mm -mm. It was over something quite awful, actually, you, you pair of idle gossips. You know, the French have a word for people oh. like you. Tricotage. Mm. Oh, well, who is that knitting? Oh, we're just concerned for you. Oh. And desperate to know what this dreadful thing could have been. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi, yeah. Um, I'd like to talk to someone about a prisoner, please. Well, no, not just any prisoner. One in particular, obviously. You all right? Hi, Chess. Who are you on the phone to? <laughs> Wrong number. Yeah, right. Do you want a biscuit? No, Tart. And what do you mean, yeah, right? It's rude to say, yeah, right, actually, Chesney. Very rude. You were on the phone to him, weren't you? No. Who? Lover boy at the home school network thing yet. I'm not daft, you know. Yeah, well, that's as maybe, but I'll tell you what you are, Chess, you're wrong. Now go home and get on with your work, all right? Whatevs. And can you try speaking English? Hiya. Hiya. Just opening up the salon. Oh, great. May you go in? Nowhere, really. I'm just getting some air. <laughs> you call this air? It's 90% exhaust fumes from Kevin Webster's garage. <laughs> Better than being stuck inside. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Fizz. I was just wondering, um... What? Well, have you heard yet why John's in hospital? I'm hoping to find out today. But thanks. See you later. See ya. That was so out of order. There's no other word for it, like your hair. No way am I taking hair advice off you. What <laughs> cheeky, I love you. Morning. Hi, mate. Listen, thanks again for getting them gig tickets. I know I went on about them a bit, but I'm just proper into them. As you can see, he's made up. <laughs> what are gig tickets? Tickets for a gig. Who's your favourite band? Um, is it The Wiggles? Metallica? <laughs> All <laughs> oh, right. Seriously, it's amazing what Blacks makes him listen to, you know. <laughs> well, it's like you going to see them in a concert. We done a concert at school. Did a concert at school. That's what I said. Right. <laughs> see, what's he like, eh? <laughs> He's a character. Right, come on, you be late for school. See you. See you. Bye. Bye. What? You so fancy. Oh, behave. Do you want? Well, you sounded a bit stressed on the phone. Yeah, I'm sorry I blew you out earlier. But I can come in now. I just had to wait till my dad went to an appointment at the hospital. No, no, you uh, take as much time as you need. Why are you being so nice? Because I am nice. So you're not going to fire me? As if. Look, I heard your dad was in a bit of a oh, mess, so... To be honest, Steve, I am sick to death of even thinking about him. He's disrupted things long enough here. As soon as he's better, he's out of here. Is, uh, is the kettle on? No. Could it be? I'll tell you what, the cleanliness in this place might not be top banana, but they do a lovely line in a pamphlet. This one's about emphysema. It's a nice name for a girl, that. 
Are you worrying about these tests? Julie, you know I go on them sometimes. That's right. Use me as a verbal punch bag. It's good to take it out on those closest to you. Come on, mully me. I'm worried about our Eileen. Oh. She's never going to forgive me. Look at me. I am your daughter, and Eileen is your daughter. We both want you to get better. Just give her time. I am sure one day she'll find it in her heart to forgive you. Oh, hiya, love. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm, I'm with my dad. I could ask you the same question. Um, I'm just... Oh, look, I'd rather not... I'll tell you later, oh, I promise. I don't. I can't yeah. stop, sorry. Excuse me. Yes? I'm looking for a patient, John Stape. OK, do you know what ward is on? Uh, no. No. Are you his partner? Um, yes. Let's just have a look at the patient locator page. Well, if you are his partner, You'll understand why I can't tell you where he is. Please. Nor will he be accepting any visitors. I just want to know he's OK. He's a prisoner. Ask his prison. I'm sorry, Ken. Is this station too lowbrow for you? Can you not breathe unless John Humphreys is wittering on about the economic downturn? Might be an idea to turn it down. I recognise this place, it's the Hacienda. Deirdre, I can hardly hear myself think. Thank you. Anyway, uh, I was wondering if it would be possible that one of you two could pick Simon up after school. I, I know it's an imposition, Dad. With pleasure. Oh, excellent. You're my kind of dad. And I've been thinking, you know, um, it must be really grating on you having Blanche around. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't say that. And, uh, you know, if you want to uh, open up a discussion about her coming home, we wouldn't stand in your way. No, you know, I thought that I'd hate having her around, actually, but... I mean, who wants to live with her gran when they're 44 years old? But she's brilliant with Simon, and he worships the ground that she limps on. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I was just thinking... Yeah, he was just thinking that I'm grating on him so much, it'd actually be a relief to have the mother-in-law back to lighten the load. And don't you dare tell me any different. I should go. Sorry, I, I... I'm sorry, I, I was just about to... Uh, uh... Oh, uh, is this Norris? Uh, he's just my contact details. Uh, we, uh, you know where the shop is. He's at work, I'm afraid. Oh, well, maybe that's quite fortuitous. Um, I wonder if I might pick your brains, Mrs Bishop. Brains, plural. Flatter will get you everywhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting nowhere with Norris. I'd appreciate some advice. I've just opened a new box of macaroons. Come through. Oh. You sure you won't drop in here? Mm, thank you. Not the school gates. Eight ninety, please. And you seriously think I'm paying you after that sniper, Rooney? Come on, Dad. There's only so much taxi driver bo I can cope with in one day. Look, there's Eileen. You what? What's happening with him? 
Oh, he's just come back from the hospital, love. But what are you bringing him back here for? I want pain. Please don't stop, Paula. Have you forgiven him? It's bad enough having fellas like him in the cab without the insult of non-payment. He is living here, Mother, because despite what you say... Well, are you taking him in? I mean, is his daughter and she loves him. But uh, am I invisible? Shut up, Julie. You always have to meddle. You're like that, I will not move until I receive the princely sum of eight pounds and ninety pence. <laughs> you two are a disgrace to women, the pair of you. The man always comes first, doesn't he? Even if he abused a 14-year-old girl. Mother! Will you shut up? No, I will not shut Paula, up. Just come in. As long as there's breath in my lungs and blood in my veins, I will not shut up. Eight pounds and ninety pence. <laughs> this is your mess, Jason. Oh, I don't have to listen to this. Come on, well. please come in. So, you see, I was uh, very much estranged from Norris. Oh, well, you can't get much further away than Australia, can you? <laughs> and after I was adopted... Oh, that must have been tough for you. Uh, is this tea hot enough? Oh, yes, yes, I, d I don't like it too hot. Oh, Norris likes it, so it burns his tongue. <laughs> Asbestos mouth. <laughs> I'd uh, I like to heal things um, um, between us before I head back to Australia. I'm... Uh, I'm going to, um, uh, retire there. Norris recently lost a dear friend. Oh. Oh, she didn't die. She went round the world in a motorhome. Uh, right. I, I think that her departure may have affected his emotions at the moment. You caught him at a, quite a low ebb. I see. Mm. Yeah, I'm not expressing this very well. Oh, Mrs Bishop, I think you're wonderful. He's very lucky to have you in his life. Please, Emily. Emily. I suppose what I'm saying is, don't give up hope. Another macaroon? Um, actually, I, I, I'm not a great fan of macaroons. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I might have an Eccles cake in the larder. Uh, please, not on my account. Turncoat. Paula, it's not how it looks. It's exactly how it looks. Look, just calm down and let me explain. No, I will not calm down. All these years I've protected you by not telling you the truth. Because I didn't want you to think ill of your dad. What a... How thick was I? You're not going to think ill of him. Look at you. Slide us into trouble and you roll over. Oh, just take it up with Jason. Oh, it's never your fault, is it? You were just the same at school, clumping around in your platforms, eating a meat and potato pie, shrugging all the time. All the other girls used to laugh at you. I was mates with you because I felt sorry for you. Oh! Oh! oh. Yeah, all right, Norris. Keep your hair on. You all right? Just looking for something to cheer me granddad up. Just 17? Might be a bit too old for him. Sorry. Don't you start. I've got Paul around there now. I bet she's kicking off. Can't be easy. What, women rowing? Avoid. Women rowing over a bloke? Avoid even more. Yeah, I just feel sorry for him. It was one mistake. It was years ago. Well, it's not exactly black and white, is it? It's messing with me head, all this. Listen, whatever he is, whether he's the best bloke in the world or the worst, he's dead lucky to have you sticking up for him. Gardening? Is he into that? Don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Two eight, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Ah, oh, cheers, mate. Mm -hmm. So, Michelle. Michelle. Yeah. What about her? Well, you know. Do I? She's my ex. Oh, she's quite easy on the eye, isn't she? I see. Oh, no, I'm not saying anything, except she's very attractive. She's hot, as a youth of today would say. Yes, but she's high maintenance, and high maintenance isn't hot. It's cold. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Likes to be treated like a princess. Which one, Anne? Take her out all the riding, get her to say never with. <laughs> you fancy her? Well, which bloke wouldn't fancy her? This one. 
Good luck to you, mate. I didn't say I did. Bye. Right. What's that? It's a cop. I'll see him for it. All right. Thank you very much. Cheers. Fez, everything all right? Yeah. Sorry. Say, see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. I shall report you for harassment. Tina, shall we go in the back? I think this kettle will have our name on it. Don't leave me with him. Um, well, Norris, I'm, uh, I'm sorry me turning up like this is, is, is upsetting you so much. Well, is, is it any wonder? I, I, I only want to make things right between us. Look, I know you're angry. Angry? Angry? Ramsay, I'm livid. You could at least talk to him. He seems all right. He does that. Oh, you've got quite a little fan club here, Ramsay. Well, you're welcome to him. You can throw yourselves at him for all I care. I won't go that far. <laughs> yeah. Don't get excited. But at the end of the day, this is the man who killed my mother. What's the matter, Ramsay? Can't you take the truth? I'm sorry. Turning up out of the blue like this, fighting at Mother's funeral. Inexcusable, I know. I've done some terrible things, I know, but now I wish for all our sakes that I'd done things differently. What? Like not kill Mother? Oh. I know you believe that the shock of seeing me tipped her over the edge. Killed her, yes. But she didn't die for a whole year after she saw me. A whole year. So, Norris, can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Hey, Norris, come here. Come here, group hug. <laughs> Norris, I'm so sorry. I just need to do some paperwork. What's in that? Mmm, a gorgeous tin of sardines. And curry powder. Mmm. Well, it's an interesting play on radio tonight. Mmm, how exciting. It's by a 15-year-old from Bradford, all about her life in care. I thought we might go to the pub. Oh, it's all told in iambic pentameter. Oh, I can hardly bear the excitement. I'll rephrase what I just said. You are taking me to the pub. I can record the play. Gardens, Grandad. Oh, mm. lovely. I bet you love gardens, don't you, Daddy? Not much. And stop calling me that. Oh, it's slip of the tongue. It's got, like, um, loads of pitch in it and that, you know, of uh, loads of gardens. Mm. Oh, maybe when you're feeling a bit rosier, we can take a run out, Dad. See some gardens. Some people, they open their gardens to the public. And I'm not just talking stately homes. Well, that's cheating, isn't it? They've got a whole team of gardeners working for them. No, I mean a more suburban affair where love and effort has gone into every herbaceous border. Oh, I would love to have a garden I could open up to the public. Mm. <sighs> Does she ever shut up? Well, it sounds like a nice idea, eh? Oh, I think it sounds boring. Oh, are you still here? Well, you know he's still here, Eileen. You've taken him in. I meant you. He's my dad, too. Just want to see he's all right. Don't you think you should go and see your mum and check she's all right? She twists things. She always has. She's got a gift for it. I can't say as I'm keen, thank you very much. Well, I can understand why she's upset. You two have put me in an awful position with her, just when I was getting to know her again. Maybe we should go back to work, eh? No. No. Mr Gordon was very understanding when I explained the whole shebang. Uh, and I'll thank you not to go washing my dirty laundry in public. Oh, I never told 
told him any of the sordid details. I'm not completely stupid. <laughs> no, you just do a very good impression. Who's that? I don't know, Julie. I can't see through brick walls. Flippancy is a very unattractive quality in a lady. And as you well know, I'm no lady. Oh, I'll get it. Why do you hate me so much? I don't hate you. I hate this. I hate everything about it. Mother, if you've come for a row... No, I haven't. It doesn't need upsetting, Paula. I just thought I'd better warn you I've been to the police. What about? Oh, she's had her hanging baskets. What do you think about? They've interviewed me about Colin's abuse. And you can expect a visit any time. I'll let myself out. Yeah, go on. You go on. You never can let oh, things lie. Me, just stop it. Calm down, eh? Get your arms off me. <sighs> Mum, what are we going to do, eh? I don't know, Joyce. I just feel sick. <laughs> Do you reckon she's bluffing? Ma'am. Who's that? W what do you reckon the police are going to do? Has anyone eaten? She told the police he went with an underage girl, ma'am. Ma'am! What do you want me to say, Jess? Well, I don't know, but you can't just let it happen. Well, it's up to them. Do you not even care? No, I love it when my world comes crashing round me ears. Get out of my way. I'm sorry she's done this. It's not your fault. What happened sandwich, Dad? I feel like it is. So long ago. I can't understand. Well, we can either sit here crying about it or we can get on with life, you know, spilt milk and all that. I'll talk to her. Well, she's hardly going to go back to the police station and say, oh, I dreamt it all up, I was joking, silly me. Do you know you want to eat something, Dad? No, but she can tell them that she wants to change her statement. People do. It's worth a try, yeah? I'll try and get through to her. You happy now? What have I done? Well, this is all down to you. If you hadn't brought your granddad back here, none of this would have happened. You had no one else to turn to, man. I'll move out. Oh, and that'll sort everything, won't it? Right, we'll do you some food. Well, why would I want to eat at, at a time like this? Because you need to take your pills, Dad, and you have to take them with food, all right? Mother. You go back to your new family. Oh, don't be so silly. Come on, it's on me. Did you take a nap back there and this lot wouldn't even notice? Well, there won't be anybody sleeping when the toothache starts. Who do you fancy? That should tell you. That's not how you spell one, David. Ah, but you're not after me for my spelling. You're after me for my charms. <laughs> See? I make you laugh. What time and where? Oh, now, how about in your dreams in the ninth and ever? Come on. One little drink. One little cheeky drink. Oh, whatever. Now clear off. I've got work to do. Later then. Yours at seven. Possible. Julie's gone to torture and then... We'll know what she's told him. The police. She really went to the police. You heard her. We don't know what she said. Yes, we do. She used to follow me round. <laughs> she won't have told him that. Oh, she was a school kid. They won't do anything, Grandad. Crying out loud. Well, it was years and years ago, and I'm not going to be interested, are they? Do you know what, Jason? If you can't say anything sensible, just... Give your jaw a rest. Right, I will. I don't know why I try with me flaming so-called family. Family? What a joke. Right. When in doubt, put the kettle on. Cup of tea, Dad? I'm wrecking everything. You and Jason, you and Julie. I ruin everything. I just don't know what good it's going to do after all this time. I dare say, none at all. Then why? Why now? I didn't want it to come out like it did. I've been trying to tell you properly, just you and me. And then it all got too much, seeing him at his party with all his friends laughing, happy. Balloons and drinks. Rita. <laughs> I was planning to marry her. Oh, please don't cry, Mother. 
Then he comes out of hospital and you all take him in. Well, what else could we do? I'm sorry. Oh, I've had enough of this. Enough crying. Do you know there was a time when I'd have done anything to get married? <laughs> but enough's enough. There's just one big question left, really. And that question is, if he denies everything and I have to prove what I'm saying, will you let them take a DNA sample? It's only a swab inside your mouth. It'll only take a couple of seconds. Um, then that'll put an end to any debates or denials. Oh, no, I'm not sure. It'll put Mom, it all I, to bed. I... What, you'd rather let him get away with it? Oh, he's old and ill. He was big and strong. He had a deep voice. Oh. And thick brown eyes. Don't. He had a Ford Capri. It made me feel so special. <laughs> I was just a silly young girl. Are you going to help me or are you going to oh, side with him? I, I don't want to make things worse. He's my dad. I'm your mother. <laughs> and I brought you up. How can you turn from me to him? Oh, but he, but he didn't have anywhere to go. We couldn't just leave him out there in the yes, street. Yes, we could. <laughs> if you gave me any thought, if you cared for me at all. Oh, but this is not fair. I am too old to be in the middle of a tug of love or a tug of bitterness and nastiness and mess. When you're ready to talk to me, instead of just using me, then you let me know. Don't want me here. Just drink your tea, Dad. You don't? Not really. I'm just a nuisance. And now this. Paula was upset. When she calms down, it might not come to much. You heard her. The police. Don't get yourself worked up. Just drink your tea. You're only going to start crying. No. Oh, I can't go to prison. Eileen, I can't. I'm too old. I'm too ill. If I go in, I'll never come out alive. It won't come to that. What use is putting someone like you in a cell? A cell? How will I manage? Well, you wouldn't, so they won't. Dad, no one's going to put you in a cell. The load of criminals and all them stairs. Don't take that. Where's my coat? What do you want that for? Well, I'm going to get myself off. <laughs> you are not. I shouldn't have come back here. I'm going to get away as soon as I can. Dad, you can't even put your own shoes on. Well, I'll go in my socks then, won't I? Get me my coat. Well, all right, I'll get in myself. I'm going to go and do the washing up. When you finish shouting, I'll come back. I'll die! <laughs> they put me away, Eileen. You know I will. Look, I need to ring the surgery to sort out your repeat prescription. She's going to have the police come after me. A manhunt for a poor, sick, tired old man. And you couldn't care less, could you? <laughs> I care. Then help me. Get me a taxi. You're not well enough to go anywhere. You know that, Dad. Do it myself. <laughs> Oh, I don't... You... You... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hello, Rita. Hello. <laughs> Tina. Norris. What's this? A name check? Are we all supposed to put our hands up and say, present, miss? No, I'll, I'll, I'll get out of your way and then you can talk about me to your heart's content. Still sulking, then? Oh, more than a sulk this time, Emily. He blames Ramsay for his mother's death. Yeah, but what planet is he on? Hmm? Ramsay killed my mother. Anyone would think he'd taken an axe to her, but it turns out he just upset her a bit by turning up unexpectedly. Oh, but she didn't drop dead. She died a year later. Hmm? And, and he's built all his hatred on that. Oh, it's more complicated than hatred. It's all tangled up with grief, which is such a shame, because all Ramsay wants to do is mend fences. I've got Ramsay's guest house here, 
And his telephone number. Oh, perhaps you should check, see if he got back all right. He was very upset. Mm. Well, you know where my phone is. Mm. <laughs> you two? I'm going to London. You don't know anyone in flaming London. Well, nobody knows me. Oh. Why won't you help me? I can vanish down there. I can get out of your car. I can leave you and Jason and everyone in peace. You're ill, Dad. You're not thinking straight. Oh, I've done enough harm to you. I've done enough harm to everyone. I just want to get away. Well, of course you do, because that's what you always do. Create havoc and then leave someone else to sort it out. And why not? Nobody wants me. Well, whether I do or not, the truth of it is I'm stuck with you. Well, there you go. Uh... Eileen, now you're being so truthful. Tell me, do you hate me? Eileen, love, help your old dad. <laughs> like them old cowboy songs your mum used to like so much you can hide, but you can't run. Wrong way round. Not after a stroke, it's not. You're right. I've never faced up to anything. It's time I did. What are you going to do? Well, you can help me with my shoes and my coat. Oh, Dad, you're not going to London. No. No, the police. It's time I went to the police. Told them about Paula. Admit what I did. The sort of man I was. <laughs> Trouble halfway, Dad. Well, make your mind up, girl. <laughs> it's wrong if I run away. It's wrong if I don't. Go, I could shake, Paul. I mean, we were all right, weren't we? We were getting on for the first time in years, and you and Rita and... Let's go. Let's just get this over and done with her. I could shake you. Uh, yeah. Shoes. Oh, what's the use? Mm. Bad luck, is that? New shoes on the table's mm. bad luck. Or in this house, it's everything on the table, everything on the floor, every breath I take and every rotten person I meet is all bad luck. <laughs> You've got some words to throw at the world, you have. <clears throat> so what are you going to do? Just go down the police station and give yourself up? That's the general idea, yeah. Uh, uh, how do I get them on? Guess you'll get your servant to do it. <laughs> oh, Dad, just do what you want, like you always do. Just wait on your hand and foot. And I don't know why. You've done nothing for me my whole life. And you did nothing for me mother. Oh, no, silly me, you did. You broke her heart. But that was the worst thing that you did to me, Dad, was let me think for all those years that she was in the wrong, not you, that she'd abandoned me and I could never forgive her. Oh, well, you do what you want. You go to flame in prison and see if I care. says that a ten-year-old child could put it together. Well, at this rate, we may have to find one by the end of the day. <laughs> I've been a bit nervous about getting too much stuff ready. You know, just in case. I can understand that. But you really need to start enjoying this baby. It's difficult, I know, but you're going to be a great mum. Do you really think so? I know so. 
Hey, look, if you want to get that, I'll go upstairs. Suppliers, you can wait. Right, well, I'll go and get you some biscuits then to keep you going. How are we doing, love? Oh, I'm looking for that um, Holmes and whatever. There it is. <laughs> I can't see for looking. You know, you've had a lot to cope with, all on your own for a very long time. But I've never seen you like this before. What's happened? Nothing. Oh, nothing, really. Tell me. I feel a fool. Very alone. Like nobody understands or cares. I understand. They've taken him in, Rita. Eileen, Julie and Jason. They probably didn't know what else to do. My own daughter. They'd rather be with him than me. Oh, now, I'm sure that's not true. He's given them a terrible dilemma. Oh, yeah. That's what he's good at. Mm. You don't have to stop in every evening, Blanche. I mean, I'm going to have a night in front of the telly. Why don't you, uh, why don't you go out for a change? <laughs> no. Has anybody ever told you you've got a suspicious mind? No, of course not. No. The over-60s club, well, there you go. Sounds good to me, yeah. All oh, right, OK. Well, how about this? I'll pay for a taxi both ways. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether they'll let me come back home tonight. They will. Oh. If I've got you two in my pocket, I, I won't feel so alone. You'll be back, Dad. I won't let them keep you. You'll uh, sort them out for me, will you? Of course I will. Hmm. <clears throat> right. I best phone Steve and order that cab. Mm -hmm. Don't you get bored? <laughs> Stuck at home all day. I've got work to do. I'd get bored. I'd miss break times and footy and all my mates. Yeah, I cry for Kenzie Judd every night. Hey, do you know the best thing about school? Girls. Where are you going to find a girl now? Why don't you take Schmeichel for a walk? Nah, you're all right. Come in if you're gorgeous and sexy. And she is gorgeous and sexy. I must have known it were you. Oh, sorry, Ches, you're working. Not anymore. Is Fizz home? Door, she's at work. Oh, is she? Was everything all right? At the hospital? Ah, oh, Fizz. What's she doing there? Oh, she looked a bit upset. There's nothing wrong, is there? I don't know. She's been acting dead funny, though. Oh, maybe she's just having some tests or something. Tests? She must be ill. I didn't even notice. I thought she was sneaking off to see some fella. Right, Steve said uh, ten minutes, so that'll be twenty. You don't have to come with me. I'm coming. I'll be him. Doesn't he usually pip his horn? Well, he's not supposed to. Oh. Best go, love. Let them in. You stop here. Uh, we're here to see Colin Grimshaw. He's not a well man. Oh, can we come in? But well, he's not long out of hospital. We're aware of that, but we do need to speak to him. Well, you're not coming in. And you are... Eileen Grimshaw's daughter. There's been a complaint. Well, do you know how long that goes back? You're not coming in. You can't just force your way in. Well, uh, I'd 
do wish you'd go up to my flat and relax before you go back home. Oh, Rita, I'm sorry I landed you with all my misery. Oh, don't be silly. We all have our moments. But you could put your feet up, have a little nap, and then we could go over to the Rovers later. No, I think I'd better go, thanks. Well, if you change your mind... No, honestly, thanks what very me? much, Rita. Right, wait. Well, you have to have a warrant, don't you? You're not making this any easier than anyone, Miss Grimshaw. You come in, I'll sue you. I mean it. What's it's happening? Oh, dear. Well, who are they? Eileen's worst nightmare. Look, we just want to talk to him. Let's she... get you inside. Yeah, of course. She doesn't want an audience. Will we go somewhere a bit quieter? Get your take on it? Got nothing to say. Bit the background, that's all. Apparently Blanche is going out tonight. Yeah, just after I'd splashed out on two stakes. Oh, we'll keep. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Mind, her and her teeth. It's a bit of a mistake. Should have bought her a uh, mint, you know, or or sausages or something. You wouldn't ever want to grow old, would you? Well, it's better than the alternative, isn't it? <laughs> hey. I know. How about you come round for dinner? Uh, tonight? Yeah, steak, witty banter, Mark Lack of Geriatric Company. I'm sorry, I can't tonight. I've got some up planned. Oh, right. Well, not to worry. I suppose they'll keep a few days. We'll reschedule, eh? Sorry, Dad, they won't be told. Well, go on then, interrogate him, do what you've got to do. Just remember, if he dies, it's your fault. He's a sick old man, a stupid, stubborn, sick old man. Miss Grimshaw... I'm not leaving you alone with him, if that's what you want. Oh, Dad? What? Do something. C can you do something? I'm sorry, he's, he's been dead for some time. This is my fault. Is this my fault? Because I, I didn't let you in. I'm sorry, Miss Grimshaw. Oh, Dad. It's not much point you two hanging around, is there? He's hardly going to be helping you with your inquiries now. I'm sure it meant a lot to your dad that he died at home. I'll make control now. Right. Can I get you a brew? Oh, no. I'm fine, thanks. Another stroke, was it? It looks likely. But he went peacefully. I'm his GP. I saw him last week, so I'm quite happy to issue the death certificate. Right. What do we do now? Oh, a funeral director can sort that out. Take your dad directly to a funeral parlour, if that's what you'd like. He could hardly stay here, can he? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. Do you mind if I just to complete the certificate? Oh, no, please, help yourself. The old rascal. Managed to give everyone the slip again. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's a Mr. Colin Grimshaw of 11 Colonies Street. You can't persecute an old man like this. Do you know he's just come out of hospital? And there uh, you are? I am his daughter. Eileen! Why didn't you call me? Let me know! It's not long happened. Oh, no, it's not fair! I'd only just found him. I know, but it just went, just sat there, and it couldn't have been more peaceful. Peaceful? The Asaliza 
had these last two weeks. Just calm down, Angel. Don't you tell me to calm down. I've just lost my father. I better phone Jason. <laughs> phone him. I don't know how you can be so cold. Why don't you just bob him a text? Hi, Jace. Your granddad's dead. What do you want for your tea? Are you going to be all right here? <laughs> more emotional one of the family. You need to register the death within five days. Thanks, you've been very kind. I'm so sorry. I'm sure there must be something we can do to sway Norris. Oh, I hope so. I must say I'm rather disappointed he doesn't have uh, children. I was rather hoping I might have a nephew or a niece. He was married briefly. Angela. Oh, what was she like? Oh, I shouldn't have said anything. No, no, it, it, it's just that Norris should be discussing things like that with you. You're right, of course. <laughs> oh, he's very lucky to have friends like you, so respectful of his privacy. Wait till you meet Blanche. Go on, lad. One more go, you got the jackpot. Yeah, with my luck, fat chance. Go on, you big girl, it's 25 quid if you win. Come on! <laughs> Drinks it on you, lad! <laughs> you are joking. What did I tell you about my look? The flaming thing! Oh, Can you believe it? Hey, hey, whoa, 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 what the hell's going on? Well, you tell me, 25 quid I should have won. What are you trying to do, Steve? Rip off your customers? Yeah, all right, calm down, I'll give you your money. Oh, hey. Jace. Not now, my mate. Jace, please. Just leave it, eh? your granddad, love. He's died. Happy now? Would you want it or not? How do you mean? I just saw him. It's just happened, love. I'm sorry. Come on. Eileen? What's happened? It's my dad, Rita. He's died. I was going to do old made fish pie tonight. Look at me coming over all Nigella. Great. Because, <laughs> you know, they say fish is supposed to be brain food. So, I thought. Fish. You are okay, aren't you? <laughs> What's that? Well, when Julie says she saw you down in the hospital. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're dafting. I was with Maria once I for a checkup. All right. Of course, yeah. Oh, Mum, have you been worrying? I'm healthy as a horse, me. Why don't you go and lay the table, eh? You'll be late for Rye. <laughs> it's so unfair. All those lost years. Yeah, but you could look at it another way. Like... <laughs> How do you mean? Well, uh, if you hadn't met Kirk and come living round here, you'd have never got to meet your dad at all, eh? So you think it's like kismet? Eh? Fate. Someone up there wanted me to meet him before he left this mortal coil. Well, maybe, yeah. But whatever, you, you got to meet him, didn't you? And know him a bit. <laughs> There's wisdom in you, Jason Grimshaw. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> oh, Dad. So much unsaid. <laughs> OK, thanks a lot. Bye. Funeral director. Going to be round in a bit to take him to the chapel of rest. You OK? Yeah. Nothing wrong with his timing, is there? Pegging it just as he's about to be arrested. Are you all right? Don't know. It's great having him here. Felt like we're getting proper close again. Yeah. Todd's gone, and God knows where my dad is. 
It was just nice having blokey conversations around here for a change, you know? So we Sean. <laughs> He'd not have survived jail or the court case even. Can you imagine? Yeah. Maybe it's for the best in a way, eh? How's the wailing widow still throwing herself on the body? She's upset, ma'am. Yeah, don't we all know it, Jase? Ma'am. Well, there was less hysteria at Princess Di's funeral. Just leave it, eh? People react in different ways. She barely knew him. She's making a right meal out of it. I'm not upset to you, ma'am. I've got to phone your brother. And they only went and won a whacking great motorhome. Then, this young piece of Norris's goes and parks it outside Emily's, if you please. Rita. Oh, thank you, love. You walked past at the wrong time of the morning and you could see a silhouette of her giving herself a stand-up wash. Would you like me to walk you home? No, I'm fine. I think. Mind. It's one way of avoiding council tax, I suppose. <laughs> Did you not get a round in? Oh, Blanche, please. Could you stop wittering on? Rita's had a terrible shock. Oh, pardon me for breathing. Uh, no pun intended. Blanche. Well, we all knew what it was. Uh, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm intruding. Don't be daft. Uh, well, it's... Rita's clearly lost someone very special. You do need catching up. Maybe I will go home. I'll come with you. No, really. Thank you. I'd rather be on my own. Well, you will call. Yes. It's... I will. Thank you. You'll want to discuss the arrangements between you, I'm sure. There's no rush. Thanks. Just a minute! <laughs> Sleep well, Dad. God bless. Are you all right, love? I'm not sure. Are you? Same. Where did you get that holy water from? Oh, the fun you did. Uh, I thought you two were supposed to be doing your own work, your mum said. Yeah, we are. It's a project for social studies on the effects of video games on modern teenage interaction. Can you believe that? Yeah, it sounds terrific. Yes, and if I was ten years younger and I didn't have a kid or a job... Right, well, thank you for thinking of me anyway, JD. All right, darling, bye. Hello. You look nice. <laughs> Thank you. What was that about not having a kid? Oh, nothing. JD's got another gig going all round Europe. Six months. Wonders if I fancy it. And don't you? Well, I'd love to, yeah. The money's fantastic, but it's just all that time away, babe, and it's pretty much non-stop. Well, I'm not going to Ireland again. No way. So, here you go. You can go back to the flat if you like. Simon's at a sleepover at Josh's. You'll have the place to yourself. What? I, I miss all the action here? No fear. Norris has long lost brothers turned up, and that pedo's kicked the bucket. It's all go. Red wine, please, Steve. And a pint of bitter, please. Oh, thought you were a half man. <laughs> well, you said it. All oh, right, just a little joke. Drink, Peter? Oh, God, no. I mean, I like orange juice as much as the next man, but after your third. 
Um, you think we should join Emily? Are you hoping I'll make up with my mother? Well, it's gonna happen eventually. Please, Deirdre, I'm begging you, please make up with your mother. I thought you liked a living with you. Do you think that's Norris's brother that Emily mentioned? So Blanche said, yeah. Oh, perhaps we could just join them for one. Do you mind uh, if we join you? Oh, no, no, of course not. Um, Ramsey, uh, this is Ken and Deirdre Blanche's daughter. Oh. And a terrible disappointment. I'm a terrible disappointment. You try having a till of the hon for a mother and see how you do. Please, both of you. We just heard that Eileen's father passed away. A little respect. <laughs> Not that I get much. Oh, no. Poor Eileen. When's the funeral? I'll have to get the day off work. Well, I don't know. It just happened a couple of hours ago, I believe. Yeah, it's a terrible time for a family, funerals. Please, I've been to more funerals this year and you've had hot dinners. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, you needn't be. There were nobody she knew. She just likes going to random funerals. So, you're having a go at me hobbies now, are you? Well, she's a strong woman, is Eileen. Yeah. Which is fine if you want a sofa shifting, but not for something like this. You know what I mean. Well, me and Jason are arguing over the fruit machine. Eileen comes in, tells him that his granddad's dead. I don't hear her say this, and I come charging over, thrusting a load of money in his face, yelling like a loony. I mean, what the hell's wrong with him? Tell you what, Peter, you make a star, and I'll take over when you get hoarse. <laughs> Sorry, hello. All right. Uh, white wine, please, and... A pint for me, please. Um, want to get a table? I'll bring them over. No, no, it's all right. I'll get them. You knob a table. Liberated woman, me. Uh, maybe we can get that meal next week, yeah? Yeah, sure. Be nice. Um, anyway, go and have a good night. I'll uh, bring them over in. Cheers. Morning, Mr. Jones, uh, pizza, boy. How come you don't see Sophie anymore? You were dead close, you used to. Always with the new mates now. Down that church youth club. I phoned her a couple of nights ago. All I could hear was loads of laughing and Leona Lewis in the background. Leona Lewis goes to Sophie's youth club? The music you plank. Oh, right. I was going to say, I thought she was supposed to be touring Japan. You know, we got it wrong about Fizz before. She's not sick. She was down in the hospital with Maria for a checkup. Well, that can't be right. Maria's checkup's tomorrow. I'm taking her. Nah, you got that wrong. I've not, mate. She phoned not an hour since checking. I was still up for it. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Bye. I've got a slot at the crematorium, so I've booked him in for eleven thirty. Why well, do you know he wanted to be cremated? <sighs> Pete's put him out with the bins. Mum. <gasps> Well, who knows what he would have wanted? I mean, and what does it matter? He's dead. Oh, I don't know how you can be so cold. I don't know how you can be so hysterical. You barely knew him. Which is what makes it so upsetting. <laughs> what would you rather I do? Suffer in silence? Yeah, give that a go. Look, this has come as a shock for all of us. We should be pulling together, not arguing. Yeah, you're right, love. We need to get down his accommodation, get his stuff. <laughs> I can't imagine they'll be much worth keeping. Well, there might be. Photographs, keepsakes, knickknacks. Well, I don't want any of it. <gasps> can I come with you, Jace? See what's there? Yeah, of course you can. His things, they might just help me piece together the man he was. Like a jigsaw. <laughs> what's on this corned beef? Rika Lily. <laughs> All those fragments of the man he was. <laughs> it might just help, that's all. Fine. Knock yourself out. So he's definitely been discharged. <laughs> so, um, can I can I book a prison visit for Friday, please? Um, yeah, it's um Fiona Brown. You've got me details. Oh, look. I am dead grateful. I know I've been a pain. Yeah, 
Cheers. Oh, ho, ho! it's him right in the family jewels. Who are you on the phone to? Oh, uh, oh, just the homeschool network again. They must be sick to death of me. I'm starting out some new work for you, so no slacking, Battersby. She seems happy. Yeah, and I know she's lying about something. I just want to be involved, that's all. Give him a proper send-off. I'm sure he'd love it if he weren't dead. I want to do for him in death what I couldn't do for him in life. Right. Is it OK if I choose a song to play at the funeral? What, like Teenage Kicks? Fizz, I need to ask you something. <laughs> Do you wear? What's <laughs> up? It's me, Dad. He's dead. Oh, my God. Oh. Come on, sit down. You only have to go an hour or two out of Sydney to see some of the most breathtaking terrain on the planet. The Blue Mountains, for example. Yes, I've heard of those. Big surprise. Oh, the whole enormous range covered with eucalyptus trees and they give off this uh, incredible blue haze you can see for miles. Yes, I, I imagine that the smell must be wonderful. It must be a truly majestic experience. I wonder if it's like it is in Virginia, you know that Laurel and Hardy song? Oh. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia On the trail of the lonesome pine In the pale moonshine Marks and twine This looks very cosy, I must say. Uh, why don't you join us, Sir Norris? Should I go after him? No, I, I think I should, but I think I shall need this sherry first. So, what's this bad news that Eileen's had then? Her dad died. Oh, no. Oh, God, after everything else. Poor Eileen. Mm. Have you been to see her? No, I should, but I'm, uh... I'm on my own here, so... Right. Go on, then, you've got ten minutes. Hey? Look, I'm doing this for Eileen, not you. I know how close you two are. Michelle. Listen, I said go. I know what it's like to lose family, remember? Look, Michelle, it's really kind of you, but... I should leave her be tonight. She's got Jason there. And, you know. Coward. Do you want to, I don't know, talk? Fine, love. Go and have your bath. Honest, go on. Managed to spread six slices with one knife full. Three scrapes in the marge. One, two, three, four, five, six. Corner to corner, smooth as you like. Fancy. Hey, if this sandwich business ever hits the skids, I might retrain as a plasterer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julie, love. How are you? Oh, you know. Funeral get in there. At catering sorted. Have you got everything you came in for? I was offering me help. I want out in for business. We're fine, Tar. Hey, well, listen, you take good care of yourself, sweetheart. 
Uh, we're going to clear his flat. Are you and Eileen? No, Jason uh, and Kirk, if he's got time. Eileen's... Well, Eileen's Eileen. She's got a lot to deal with. Yeah. Um, after empty boxes, if you've got any. I know that she's got a lot to deal with. But that doesn't mean that I get no say. Say in what? The funeral. It's like I've got no right to feel out. Well, I can't help you, I'm afraid. Why does everybody take her side? No, oh, I meant about the boxes. I can't help you. Norris has them taken away. They're a fire hazard. Oh, oh right. Oh, well. Julie, there's no sides in this. I just want there to be some... Uh, one thing that says that I was his daughter too. That I made some contribution to his funeral. Right, Kirk, you'll give him his tea tonight, eh? Uh, I'll get chips. Cos I said I've got this homeschooling thing. I don't know when I'll be back. I'll get chips. Jason's helping Julie clear her dad's stuff. I want her help after I've took Maria. Oh. Can anyone see me? I said I'll get chips. Right, well, make sure Roy gives you something proper for your dinner. You never ate anything proper last night. And you never ate your breakfast this morning. Eh, uh, what's this? Neighbourhood food watch. I wasn't hungry. Where will I get boxes? Julie will need tons of boxes. Um, hey, uh, chairs, chairs, don't forget to say thank you to Roy for helping you. I can fetch the cab here if you don't want to walk around. Oh, no, it's fine. Let's walk. We'll be sat for long enough in the waiting room, won't we? Is it normal to have two hospital appointments so close together? I told you. The other one was just to check everything was OK for today, wasn't it? Our trip to the hospital. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, um, that was just a check thing, that. Right, go on, chairs, you'll be late. Go text on. me if Roy's got empty boxes. Bit early for you, isn't it? A busy day. Weddings and funerals. Everyone wants the do done, especially the atheists. Believers know God sees them on bad hair days too. So you won't get a lunch break? I might. And if I did, should I be in the rovers at say one o'clock? Hungry? Uh, <laughs> sorry, Mr. Gordon. You've not forgotten that I'm doing half a day because I've got a homeschooling network meeting this after. Fizz, I allocate a portion of my brain exclusively to recording the minor shy of your life. Is that a yes? Yes. Ta. One o'clock then? Quiz night Monday, folks. All welcome. There's no prizes for winning light, but losing team gets shot. That'll make you focus, eh? Chance of death. <laughs> um... Body. I don't fancy body. Yeah. Beer? No. Gin tea, nice <sighs> glass of wine. Oh, let me think. Well, when you're ready, it's on barmaid. Mm. I'm uh, going to pick up the rest of Granddad's stuff with Julie. I'll have a spritzer, please. Spritzer? Have a nice holiday. I've just been talking to Steve. I'm sorry about your dad, Eileen. I said I'll cover switch today if you need more time off. Well, haven't you got some unpacking to do? Took two minutes, only warm me trunks. I said I'll do tomorrow and all so Steve can go to the funeral with you. Give me that flaming drink. Listen to me, love. If I were knocking on a bit like he was, and I had the choice between rotting in prison as a nonce or popping me clogs, I'd cark every time. Nice one, Bex. Cheers. One, two, three... Four, five, six. Crust to crust, smooth as you like. There you go. I reckon you've got a future in plastering there, pal. Oh. <laughs> oh, such wit in one so ruggedly handsome, eh? Oh. <laughs> so, it's our love. Oh, why do people chew them? Do you know what? I'm going to start putting something nasty on the end of these pens. Normally is. It's Blanche more often than not. I heard that. Yeah, you were meant to. Hey, such witty one so ruggedly handsome. Has she got the kettle on? Can't do me crossword without tea. Do you know what? When I was 15, I used to lie awake dreaming of this. One day, Michelle, you'll work in Weatherfield, picking up pens chewed by people whose teeth come on prescription. Oi! Making tea in chip mugs and uh, 
Oh, yeah. Copying for leery comments from your leery boss. Leery? Wasn't me drooling all over you in the Rovers last night, was it? Misery's infectious, you know. Most of it when he moved into the shelter, all his books, his old vinyl. Oh, I bet that was hard. He had not to play it on. Right, better get it in. Bill wants the truck back. Oh, I could have shown him how to download music. I'd have enjoyed that. Helping him replace his vinyl with an iPod. Hey, how come you're back? Dinner break. My granddad with an iPod. You can only text in capital letters. I thought Roy was giving you your dinner. He had no in. He's a cafe. I mean, I wanted chips. But now you're back, I'll make us a butter. No, not for me, no. I'm off as soon as the cab gets here. Can I come to the meeting? It's about you, not for you. You can make Julia butter before you go back to Roy's. No, I couldn't. Hey, you'll make yourself ill not eating. I'll get some soup in, eh? You can have it later. Oh, I'm all right, honestly. I'll only be two minutes. If the cab comes, tell him to wait. Right, that's a lot. I'll be back in a bit. See you later, Chaz. How come the hospital let your dad out if you were going to die? Do you think he knew? I lied about it. We can't know, Chaz. Not now. What's that? It was my uncle, Les, his... <sighs> oh, has what's happened to my dad made you think about Les? He lied. Said he'd always be here. My mum lied. Said she wasn't ill when she was, and that she was when she wasn't. At least you've got Fizz you can trust, eh? Fizz only doesn't eat when she's scared or when she's ill. Oh, she's probably just filled up on biscuits at the factory. How's your mum? She's at work, isn't she? Ask yourself. Are you all right? All this stuff... just looks like he's nipped out for something. I'll be back in a bit. Twenty p each extra bag or box. It's in the rules, mate. They're empty boxes. I'm not charging you for the extra passenger as it is. What extra passenger? Little. It's not born yet. Hey, excuse me, are you mine now? Uh, well, what, you don't charge you for that bag, Fizz? What? Uh, this is soup for Julie. Yeah, take it in, will ya? Where so? Uh, I'll uh, tell you on the way. <laughs> is that the Weatherfield Home School Network? Yeah, my sister asked me to check what time the meeting this afternoon starts. There isn't one. Sure. No, she must have got the wrong date. You couldn't just touch up Mrs. McGibbon's roots this dinner. I seem to be double booked. Oh, is that our dress? She did that to me last week. She's done it to you again, mate. All yours. I've got a date with the handsome head of a knicker empire. Mm. <laughs> Give over, you're only jealous. What, of you and Tony? Of me offloading Mrs. McGibbon. Oh, right, yeah. Well, you owe me one. Oh, um, would you ask Tony if he's got the crib instructions? I think he might put them in his briefcase. He'll know what you mean. What will I mean? Right, he put up a swinging crib for me the other day and it squeaks. The other day? At your business meeting? It, don't make out I'm complaining, I'm not. I'm dead grateful. Just, just ask him for the instructions. <laughs>
I, Dad, hereby admit that I was wrong and Eileen was right and is therefore better than me in every way thinkable in the world and the universe forever and ever. Signed, Dad. Dated 3rd of the 4th, 1971. You kept that all this time? Oh. I wonder what she was right about. Oh, she signed it too, look. It's so sad. All those years he was just a normal dad and... Now all he'll be remembered for is... Well... It makes me not want to do all this. I want to know less about him, not more. Oh, what's them? I thought you said he jibbed all his music. His vinyls, yeah. Oh, those will be the ones he bothered to replace, his faves. Julie, sweetheart, don't look like that. I've only just heard. I saw the police car, but I never I reckon they've just come to throw him in prison. I'm uh, going to take this lot down to him. Well, maybe you can still get him locked up. Why let him be in dead stop you getting revenge? It wasn't revenge. Murderer. So tell us about your holiday, then, uh, apart from the rude bits. Oh, that was fine, mate, fine. Great, you know. Hey, listen. Anyone fancy a coffee and something from Royce? I'll go. I I'm up now. Not for me, Tom. I'll go on. Something with icing on it and currants. Uh, or a, uh, uh, a vanilla -y thing. Streetcars. Yeah, I know you're not there, love. I'm just making you up because my colleagues don't know what to say to me and they're really doing me head in. Okay. Mm. Hiya. Ah, oh, Rita. Right, well, we'll uh, leave you to it. Well, do you know she doesn't want a cab? I don't. Thanks, lads. Are they not helping? It's good to have someone to torture. Keeps me occupied. Well, I just came to see if there's out I could do. Oh, Rita, I just want it over. It will be. I saw Julie before. Oh. It's tough on her as well. And yeah, she let everyone know it? Did she send you? No. I'm quite capable of being an interfering old so-and-so all by myself. Well, you've got that in common with her, then. Except with her. It isn't interfering, is it? Trying to find her way to say goodbye to a dad she'd barely found. Although I'm not taking sides. Losing a parent, whatever you thought of them, it takes the part of the child you are away. Goes for Julie, too. Oh, here. Yeah. Cufflinks. Might be worth a few bob. Don't want anything. Oh, these shoes are pretty solid. Tie him tight, you might be able to dance on his grave. I don't expect you to understand why I had to go to the police. Oh, you didn't have to. You can't honestly believe I wanted this. A win-win, wasn't it? Have him rot in a prison cell or die of the stress. I only wanted justice. He trashed my whole life. By giving you me? No. You were you. I wouldn't change you, but because of him... I was a child. Therefore, I never had the courage or the self-respect to stand up and say what he did was wrong. It was about justice. It wasn't revenge. He's dead. What he was in your life and what he was in mine are two very different things. He was nothing in my life. Look, I... Nowhere. A lie. And that's what you are now. Nothing in my life. I don't want you here, ever. Get out! You were the only good thing to come out of all this. <laughs> you never believed that. I was taking you off me and all. said what? Sitting but fully functional. <laughs> it's true though. And well, what did she say? Said if I didn't stop pressing her, she let my tyres down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe you've got groupies though. It was just practice. Hang on. Tomorrow, yeah? Uh... See you later. See, he's gone off me. Oh, Shan. Yeah, it was after that groupie cow. 
No way! He's just trying to make you jealous. Oi! Oi? Where did Fizz go? Oh, here we go. Someone disappears now and everyone thinks a uh, cabbie abducted her. I mean, where did you drop her off? You two fell out. No, I'm not getting involved. Do you like status quo? You saying I got bad air? This, it's collectible. You can have it if you say where she went. Henson Street, bottom end. Don't know why though, there's no down there. Not an hospital nearby, or a clinic are out. Oh, no hospital there. Unless they've got hospital wing on the uh, prison round the corner. Prison? I did try. Ask at the hospital if I can make a call. Take no notice of me. They wouldn't let me. No one would tell me anything. I didn't mean to frighten you. The prison wouldn't. The hospital. I'm going to do a month at a time from now on. Lesson plans for chess. Keep ahead. Then, if something like this... <sighs> Don't get hurt again. No. Do you know how hard I've worked not to feel anything for you? And then you go and disappear on me and no one would tell me anything. I even asked at the morgue. I'm sorry. I don't want to love you. I love you. I love you too. Phil spoke to his mum and she said I can stay with them when you go off on tour. You can't ask that of her, Ryan. Well, his brother's gone to uni, I can have his room. Well, I'm not going on tour. You need me here. She'd well left home by the time you were my age. Yeah, and how many A-levels have I got? Look, I'm not having you ending up in the sort of job I'm doing. Chasing sad punters on a sticky carpet. So, don't work there, go and sing. No, Ryan. Well, if not for you, then for me. I don't want you to have a leg to stand on when I ask to go off on tour with the lads after I've finished my exams. Stop outwitting me. Can't help it, I'm doing A-levels. Mm. You want to go, don't you? Yeah. Well, then. <laughs> How am I showing you up? I just come to see if you were okay. And what am I meant to say in front of a client? I'm the one that was stood up this lunchtime. Oh, I got caught up in a business meeting. Fine, you could have texted. Oh, when I say business meeting, I mean shopping. But then anything counts as a business meeting, doesn't it? Home visiting, DIY. Have I done something? Crib building. It squeaks, by the way, the one you built for Maria. You're angry because I built flat pack furniture for Maria's baby. And lied. You said it were business. Now, believe it or not, we were discussing lad drags while I was doing it. Not. You know, I really thought we were beginning to get somewhere. Well, how can we if you fob me off to run around after Maria? Everybody's running after her. <laughs> Everybody feels sorry for her. You really think I'd rather spend time with an eight-month pregnant, hormone-driven widow instead of getting you back to my flat? You didn't have to lie. I didn't want her to feel guilty or pitied or realise where my mind was wandering to. You pity Maria. Don't you? Where we've only picked a couple of things, but things that we know that if you don't keep, you'll regret it. You know, do you? Mama. The things from before, you know, from 
Yeah, when, when, when you were a kid, yeah. Oh, you know where the wheelie bin is. Oh. Fine. I won't try again. One thing I will ask, though, and, and we don't think that you can argue with this one, do we? Demis Roussos. I think this should be played at the funeral. Um, goodbye, my love, or forever, never. No. Well, he loved his music, ma'am. Yeah, he loved curry and all. Should we smear a chicken tikka masala all over his coffin? <sighs> this was really special to him. I think it's what he would want. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him that. As a joke, because he'd started wearing these long night shirts that looked like caftans. He hated Demis Roussos. So don't come in here and tell me you know what he would have wanted. He didn't want this, and he didn't want you. Liar! Liar! You liar! Chess! Proper thoughtful when he wants to be. Yeah. Hey, shake a leg. Carl be here soon. Mum. Mm hmm. You know today. Well, you won't like kick off or anything with Julie. As long as she stays away from me, everything will be peachy. I'm asking. Can we just remember what today's about? We're saying goodbye, aren't we? You to your dad, me to my granddad. I know, love. And I just want to remember who he was and what he meant to me. Without worrying about you getting Julian a headlock. Promise. No kick-offs, no sarky comments, no dirty looks. I'm putting nasty Eileen in the cupboard under the stairs and I'm taking nice Eileen out for the day. You scare me now. I know you're angry with me. At least let me explain myself. I don't want to hear it. Please. Just shut up, will you? It's not fair on Julie. Right then. Outside. Now. Cheers, Bob. All right, then. You know, that's a bit of a novelty for me. Being around somebody who knows how to crack a smile. What are you on about? Simon never stops smiling. Actually, I was talking about Blanche. She puts me in mind of a bulldog chewing a wasp. <laughs> Charming. Honestly, the sooner I can get her back to me dad's, the better. She's driving me around the bend. Oh, well, you've changed your tune. Thought you were enjoying having a babysitter on tap. Oh, no, not anymore. You know, she watches Midsummer Murders until she's cross-eyed. And she's soaking a flaming corn in the washing-up bowl. She's keeping her teeth in a jam jar on top of the telly. Ew. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I'm such a sad individual that I actually look forward to coming to work. You know, spend time with you. <laughs> oh, cheers. I, you know, that, I didn't mean it to come out like yeah. that. I'm sorry. What I meant was I, you know, I, I really enjoy your company. Oh, great. Now I've embarrassed you. I'm no, sorry. No, you haven't. Um, it's just... Well, I was, I was going to tell you. I'm really sorry to drop you in it, but I'm, I'm, I'm going off on tour with the band. Oh, right. Uh, well, I'm sure I'll be able to, to work around you. Yeah, not for six months, you can't. Six months? I'm sorry. Six months? Well, you know, it, it won't take you long to find a replacement, will it? I mean, it's not that hard to train someone up. You can say what you like. It's obvious I count for nothing. Jason, you know that is not true! Imagine how I felt when I heard you'd been to the hospital without telling me. I thought you were dead ill. I'm sorry! I wish you were ill. Anything's better than you sneaking off to see Steve. Cars here. Oh. What's going on? Nothing. Liar. Oh, Kirk, now's not the time, okay? 
Let's just focus on Julie. We're all she's got. Yeah, come on. Why has she gone for something so showy? What's she trying to prove? Are you okay? I sent the wrong car. Uh, no, no, no. I upgraded it. Nice one. Only the best for our dad, Eileen. You're doing it again. What? Just trying to take over. What do we say, ma'am? She's only known in five Mom, minutes. Ma'am, you promised. Steve, you got any cabs free? Um, I don't know. Eddie's just clocked on. Oh, do you want to get him round here? Because I don't want to be late for my dad's funeral. Ma'am, you oh, can't I just... I can't do right for doing wrong with you. I can't believe that you're going to go to your own dad's funeral in a stinky old cab. Hey. Uh, excuse me, we have our cab steam cleaned once a month and we use air freshener. Yeah. We'll come with you if you like. Thank you. Going to a funeral, I'd have put a black shirt on. And maybe one of them top hats coroner's worth. What do I mean, coroner? Paul Bearer. Yeah. Why have you got a wide selection of top hats in your walk-in wardrobe? I'm just saying, you know, being respectful, like. Will I get a bonus for this? Why would you? You know, fairly miserable people around, it brings you down, doesn't it? Hey, hey, hey. Button it, hey. change your mind? I don't think so. I hope it all goes well for you. Thanks. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would anyone like to say a few words about our dearly departed Colin? Yes. Me. I, I, I will. <clears throat> I've lived for a, a long time without a dad. In fact, you, you could say that there was a, a sort of dad-shaped hole in my life. When I was little, I, I used to fantasise about him being someone famous, <laughs> like an actor or a rock star or a, even a member of the royal family. <sighs> He'd be handsome, of course, and kind-hearted and clever and witty. And I'm happy to say that, that Colin was, was all of those things and, and more. Not the famous bit, obviously, but everything else. My one big regret is that I didn't get to know him sooner and... You know, in the short time that I did know him, <laughs> I came to love him. <laughs> oh, sorry. Going to the funeral then? Couldn't face it. These things are never easy. Only now I'm wondering 
Have I done the right thing by staying away? I suppose it can help, can't it? Saying a proper goodbye. Close your, as our American cousins put it. You're right. Funerals are for the living as well as the dead. I should have gone to see him laid to rest. I owe him that much. And, and to be there for Eileen and Jason. And Julie, no less. You are aware that I'm a partner in a cab firm and can have you there in ten minutes? Oh, I don't know. Come on. He was good looking, yeah. But he was vain with it. Charming too. But it could get him into a lot of trouble. But when we look back on someone's life, it's not really about the mistakes they made. It's about who that person really was. And um, one of the... Uh, Earliest memories of my dad was when I was three. I'd, I'd, I'd had a nightmare. I think some flying Dalek was chasing me. <laughs> but I was before my time because Daleks couldn't fly in them days. They couldn't even get upstairs. And I ran to my dad. And he was in the living room with his mates, you know, playing the guitars. And he took me in his arms and he held me tight. <laughs> And he sang to me, Are you lonesome tonight? But memories like that are special to me because, to be honest, they were very few and far between. Dad, you were a right royal pain in the backside at times. Stubborn, difficult, bad-tempered. But I loved you anyway, and uh, always will, so um, safe home, Dad. Boots. I'll just stay. Uh... Hello, Eileen. I'm so sorry. I should have come to the service. It was cowardly of me not to come. It's gone, Rita. I know you and your dad didn't always see eye to eye, but he thought the world of you and your boys. Thank you. Well, you're here now, eh? I just needed to see where he was laid to rest so that I could picture him in my mind and know he was somewhere lovely and peaceful. Peter. Thank you so much. Hearing you talk about our dad like that, it gave me a real sense of, you know, who he really was. I'm sorry if I've stepped out of line. I was just trying to make up for lost time. I know, love. We need to concentrate on the one good thing that's come out of all this. You and me. Us. Family. We need to stick together. Come on, group punk. There are some top gigs on this, uh, June. Oasis, Kasabian. June. Yeah, I thought we might book something up if you fancied it. Yeah, uh, actually, Luke, I was going to come and talk to you. Go on. Well, I'm going on tour with the band for six months. I thought you said no to that. I did, but I've, I've changed my mind. I mean, opportunities like that don't come along every day. So when are you going? A week, ten days. Ten days? You know what that is, don't you? It's a holiday romance. <laughs> hey, Peter! Yes, mate? Do us a favour, pal. Give Michelle the rest of the day off. 
Oh, uh, I'd love to help you, mate. I really would, but we've uh, got a lot on this afternoon, so... <laughs> Behave yourself. I can see the tumbleweed. <laughs> That's very funny. But you see, this is a shop, and people can come in whenever they want, and uh, one minute it's empty, next minute, packed to the rafters, so... Yeah, Luke, just leave it. It's fine, really. Mate, please. Surely you wouldn't begrudge us a bit of fun. Yeah, go on, then. Oh, thanks, Peter. Are you sure? Yeah. Hurry up. Before he changes his mind. How's Julie? She'll be all right. Makes you think, doesn't it? The funeral really brings it home to you that the most important thing in this life is your family. That's cheap, that is. Using a funeral to get to me. Oh, Ches, I'm not. What does John Stape have to do before you stop caring about him? Murder someone? Don't be daft. When he came out about what he'd done to Rosie Webster, I had nightmares. Thinking about what he might do to you. He'd never harm me. He already has. Having a thing with her while he was pretending to be in love with you. Locking her up for weeks, putting her family through hell. I worry myself sick over you. You obviously couldn't give a stuff about me. My feelings don't even matter. You are the most important person in my life. You're the reason I went to see John again. You're joking. He's been helping me with your education. So all those times, you said you were going to get advice from the home schooling blog. You were sneaking off to see Stape. You selfish cow! Chesney. You wanted to see for yourself, not for me. You just used me as an excuse. No, it wasn't like that. You've brought that mental case back into our lives without a thought for anyone but yourself. You pathetic! Chesney. Get out! What? Out! Chesney. Go on! Get out! No! Chesney. Go on! I can't stand the sight either! Chesney, please. Johnny? Who do you think? Oh, you've not been seeing Stape. I don't believe it. I've never seen him so angry. Chesney! Can't lend us your key. Well, Fizz, why don't you just give him a bit of time, eh? Let him cool down. Oh, do you want me to have a word with him? I don't think it'll do any good. Kirk, I've hurt him so much. Come in here, come on. Oh, here we go. Slap us at two o'clock. Mate. How good is that? You've already got groupies chasing you. Well, talented, good looking, what can you say? Hiya. Oh, yeah. When you got another rehearsal? Um. Oh, just butt out, Tam's in. What's it got to do with you? Can I borrow your phone, Ray? Yeah. Use a phone box. <laughs> there you go. You've got my number now. Call me, yeah? Why would he want to call you? Going out with Shan. Yeah. For now. <laughs> Call me when you want someone a bit more buff. Wow. Are you gonna delete that number or what? I don't know, know it's of her. She's only winding us up. I don't blame you, mate. I was shocked and all after everything Stapes done to her. Worst thing is, she used me as an excuse. I don't know why I'm so shocked. This is what always happens eventually. People use me. End of. Not Fizz. She's not like that. She only took me on in the first place because she had no choice. I'm nothing but a pain in the backside to her. You're getting things all twisted up in your head. She thinks the world of you, does Fizz? All my life it's been the same. 
Better be nice, be good. Do as I'm told, or else they might just shove me back in care. You go. I'll be fine. Honest, mate. Get back to Julie. It's like when you go and see someone in hospital and they're sort of less than themselves, do you know what I mean? They somehow look smaller than they are and more vulnerable. It was like that seeing John in prison. My heart went out to him. After everything he's done to you, I love him. I can't imagine my life without him in it. But, oh, somehow, I've got to try. For Chesney's sake. No, it's impossible. <laughs> Hey, check it out. <laughs> Ryan's mum's snogging at the bus stop. Typical. Could she be any more embarrassing? Chesney! Called the place. Well, no, phone him first. Oh, it's me. Where are you? Look, I know we've had words, but it's nothing we can't sort out. Please just phone me. At least let me know you're safe. How long's he been missing oh, for? Hey, hey, you've not seen Chesney, have you? Oh, that copper top, that. Yeah, have you seen him? Uh, I dropped him off at Piccadilly train station. What time? I don't know. Half an hour ago, something like that. Did he say where he was going? No, no. Sorry, love, no. Please, Chez, when you get this, ring me. I just want to know you're safe, okay? His phone's still off. Here you are. Sit down and have this. You look worn out. Did you go to Piccadilly then? Yeah, but he'd already gone. I just wish I'd been here. I know I couldn't have done anything, but still... Don't be daft, eh? You've had enough to cope with. The police will soon find him. I hope so. What I don't understand is why he ran off. I mean, what was the row about? Her seeing John State, that's what. Only to get help for Ches. Teaching him and that. Oh, Fizz. Anyway, it doesn't matter why he went. What matters is getting him back. No, it was great. <laughs> yeah, I've never been to Laser Quest before. <laughs> yeah. Well, I finish about uh, 12. Why? Wait. Be sure you're not sick of me. <laughs> All right then. See you then. Bye. I take it that was Luke. Yeah. He took you to Laser Quest. Where's he taking you this time? Playing your circus? <laughs> it was a laugh. You should try it sometime. Yeah, I will do. Next time I'm with Simon. When I'm with a woman, I'll take her somewhere a bit more romantic. You mean like a posh restaurant? Hmm. Best one is to take her own body. Anyway, look, I'm not after being courted. I just want a bit of fun. I mean, it's not like I'm sticking around, is it? Could do. Be plenty of other tours. <laughs> Says who? Not exactly getting any younger, am I? No, don't be daft. I mean, 
Look at Annie Lennox and Tina Turner. There's no such thing as too old in music these days. Yeah, well, maybe not. But there is such a thing as not getting a second chance. Mm. That'll be Blanche. Yeah, laying on the floor with a flaming broomstick. You'll have to get one of them baby monitors. Where will you look? Well, just around town. He might not have got on a train. He might have changed his mind. Will you let me know if anything happens? Yeah. Will you? Yeah. Of course. You're still mad at me, aren't you? Well, you never run off if you haven't been seen, Steve. Shh, shh. Hi, Fizz. Any news? Um, no, nothing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know what you're going through, believe me. Mm. Do you want us to help you look for him? Mum, Dad's waiting to take us into town. Well, never mind. He'll probably be relieved. No, no, it's all right. Well, thanks, anyway. Poor Fizz. She must be worried sick. Oh, everything all right? Yeah, I'm just, uh, just helping Blanche down the stairs. Where's Simon? Uh, Deirdre's taking him to the Science Museum. Oh. Not gone with him, then? No, no, uh, no, I had, I had things I needed to do. There are another reason you should move back home. Rubbish. We can always get a stair lift. I've been pricing them up. And if it's going to be a permanent arrangement, she'll need one. And they're not cheap. Still, I'm worth it, don't I? Now I've had a quick tidy. Oh, and I've made your casserole for your lunch. Put it in that slow cooker thing of yours. Oh, good, lovely. <laughs> Maybe she is worth it after all. Mind, I suppose you're thinking the same thing. Just you and Deirdre now, rattling around together. You should put you down for employee of the year. You what? You're the only one I know who refuses to take days off. No point hanging around doing nothing, is there? It's the hardest time, isn't it, eh? After the funeral. All right, I won't go on about it. You go on the quiz night tonight. Not my scene unless I've got a section on cakes of the 21st century. Could be arranged, seeing as I'm the quiz master. Thought it was Steve? Nah, he's bald. He's taking Becky somewhere instead. Still, at least we'll have some decent questions now, eh? Is Norris here? He might as well not be for all the use he's been. Norris? What? <laughs> Look what's arrived in the post. <laughs> it's from Mary. What does it say? It's private. She's in Brittany and she's having a lovely time. She says there are lots of pretty villages and all the houses have shutters. Do you uh, steam my letters open too? You should ring her. No, oh, it'd cost a fortune and anyway I'm busy revising. <laughs> For the quiz. Of course, for the quiz. <laughs> Name two types of peptic ulcer. Easy, gastric and duodenal. <laughs> now, I, I should test myself on a bit of history. Uh, Catherine of Aragon, uh, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, Catherine Parr. Divorce, beheaded, died. Divorce, beheaded, survived. How are we going to tell him we've invited Ramsay? We're not. You are. Well, you'll put it so much better than I would. No, no, that's great. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, of course, we'll, uh, we'll get on with it today. Don't you worry. OK. Bye. Get on with what today? The kitchens. They've sorted out the problems on site. It's bank holiday. Well, we need to catch up. We've already lost a week. Well, you don't have to be there, surely. Well, Jason's doing a job with Bill. No other choice. You're not fit enough. I'm fine. I'm supposed to keep moving. Anyway, I'll get Gary to do the donkey work. Well, can't it wait till you see the doctor on Friday, see what she has to say? No, it can't. Hiya, is, uh, is Gary there? Hiya, sis. Look what I've got. What is it? Eccles cakes. Cheer ourselves up. Oh. No, thanks. Oh, I know. I've lost my appetite as well since our dad died. Oh, no, no, it's not that. It's just I'm, I'm not very keen on Eccles cakes. Mm. Mm. There you are. Thanks. I thought you might want to talk, you know, let it all out. No. <laughs> You're being really brave. Didn't you mean brave? I'm fine, really. 
Oh, if you say so. So if there's anything you want to go and do, you... Hey. Never guess what. Chez has run off. Really? Mm. Him and Biz had a row. Well, I'm sure he'll come back. I told you to run off all the time when him and Jason had a fight. Hey, we might have been like that if we got brought up together. Oh, thank goodness we missed all that and cut straight to a good bit. <laughs> <laughs> Street cars. Yep. Yep, straight away. Yep. Oh, which are good at her job. Wonderful. <laughs> anyway, I, I really have got to get back to. Now Lloyd's gone, I can tell you, seen as your family. <clears throat> Chess has run off because Fizz has started seeing John. John State? Mm. Visiting him in prison. Blimey. She says it's to help Chesney with his schoolwork. It's obvious. She's still in love with him. She must be desperate. Oh, I think it's really romantic. Yeah, but then you did go out with Kirk, didn't you? So I've uh, really got to get on now. Oh, it's comfier than it looks. This chair, isn't it? Ah! Uh, oh, I'll be out in a sec. I've heard footsteps, so you must at least be up. Oh. Ah. Yes. Hey, Joe. Gonna dig? Oh, if you wouldn't mind, mate. It's flaming back. Yeah? You should be at home with your feet up today. Yeah, well, needs must. Ah. Yeah, tell me about it. What I wouldn't give for a lie-in, eh? You've a nipper too, haven't you? Yeah, well, if you count Blanche, I've got two of them. <laughs> Hi, Maria, it's, um, it's Luke. Yeah, I know, um, Michelle's at work. Listen, um, I just wondered if I could pop round now. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask you a huge favour, and I promise I'll clear up all the mess after. All right, in a minute. Yeah, the eggs, doing them scrambled or fried. Can't dip your sausage in a scrambled egg. Well, there's looking up. Hey, we could eat outside. Get in the mood for Paris. Ooh, good idea. Shall I get some croissants instead? Then it'll be a lot easier. Mm. Could get the deck chairs out. Mm, they need a clean. Well, it won't take you long. What's he doing in our shed? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? He's run away. I know he's run away. I dropped him off at Piccadilly train station last night. You are? I didn't know he were legging it. Not until his sister said. He's just a kid. Did you not think it were a bit odd? Mm. Do you remember when our Gary did that? Mm. Packed some cornflakes in a rucksack but came back because he'd forgotten the milk. Forgotten the milk. <laughs> We're not mad at you. You must be starving, you poor thing. Hiya. Hiya. You off out? Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought I'd um, go to the Rovers for lunch. Ah, oh, I'd have come with you, but I'm meeting Luke. Yeah, I know. He's already here. Hey. Seeing as we're having a holiday romance, thought I'd run with the idea. <laughs> you are bonkers. Sorry I couldn't magic up a donkey. I did try. Oh, yeah? Well, what about an ice lolly? Could be arranged. <laughs> i tell you what, why don't I nip to the corner shop while you slip into something more comfortable? Oh, I see. So all this is just so you can see me in my cosset? Well, I've seen you in your towel. Seem like the next step. So, how come you've run off? I haven't. Well, first you're at the train station, then you're in our shed. I've fallen out of fizz, so I went to Northampton. Northampton? 
I suppose it must have its attractions. My brother Billy lives there. Oh, at least he did. When I got there, I found out he'd moved about a year ago. Oh, all that way for nothing. So what do you do now? I don't know. Go to London, maybe. Oh, you don't want to go there. The price of beer's a disgrace. We won't make you go home if you don't want, but at least let me tell your sister you're all right. She'd be worried to death. Do you not want that sausage? No. Mm. Can I have a drink, please? Yeah, go on, go on. Coke, do you? Chess! What are you doing? Getting out of here. Come inside, Reno and Zen, quick. Shh. Do you know, I bet you and me have got loads in common that we don't even know about. I mean, apart from our looks. What's your favourite colour? Green. Number? Six. Animal? Oh, don't have a favourite animal. What if you did? Oh, I don't know, a baboon. Film. Oh, for God's sake, um, E.T. E.T.? Mine too? <laughs> Our DNA is like that. <sighs> Stop glaring at me! Hey? Oh, don't pretend. He, just, he, he doesn't like me chatting when I'm supposed to be working. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise. <laughs> don't blame her, it's mm. all my fault. I'll leave you to it. <laughs> Round later instead. Sisters are doing it for themselves. Oh, what's happened? Can't tell you. Oh, come on, Ches, it can't be that bad. It is. You don't know that you're well off you, I'm telling you. I'd love to have a sister like this. You wouldn't say that if you knew what she'd done. Oh, why? What's she done? Burnt your dinner? Give you too much homework? She's been seeing John Stape, that's what. Writing him letters and going to visit him in prison. Now do you understand? Just come to pay the papers. Oh. Ask me a question. Oh, is this for the pub quiz? Oh, he's been at it all day. Everybody who comes through that door. I'll have no customers left at this rate. Uh, 13 20, please, Ken. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are you going tonight? I thought I might see if Deidre fancies it. Oh. Have you thought of one yet? Um, what novel has this as its opening line? It was a bright, cold day in April and the clocks are striking 13. 1984, George Orwell. Correct, and a bonus point for getting the author. Well yeah, done. It was my question. You didn't know the answer. I did. I just didn't get a chance to say it, that's all. Anyway, how do you know that? From when we had the book club. It was one of Ken's choices. Only you said you thought science fiction was a waste of paper. Well, we've proved him wrong now. <laughs> ah, I hope you're not going to be butting in like that tonight. Um, about tonight? Yeah? Nothing. I'll, I'll tell you later. I'm sorry for being off with you. It's all right. I don't blame you. It is my fault. He'll be all right. And what if he's not, eh? I'm not going to live with that. <laughs> oh, thank goodness you're back. Why? What's happened? Oh, it's all right. Your brother's fine. I found him asleep in our shed this morning. Oh. I called around to tell you, but you were out. Well, we've been looking all over. So he's OK? Yeah. I tried to persuade him to go home, but he wouldn't have any. Fact, he ran off again. But Eddie saw him going into next door with that sofa. I've kept my eyes peeled and he's not coming. Oh, out. thanks, Anna. See? I told you would be all right. Yeah. Hiya. I take it he's still here then. Chaz, it's Fizz and Kirk. Don't go away. Please, Chaz, I just want to see you're all right. There, now go away. I want you to come home. You don't care what I want. Why should I care about you? I do care. Look, just come back with me. We can sort this out. It's too late for that. 
I won't make you stay if you really don't want to, but at least let's talk things through first, eh? It's Michael's been pining for you. He doesn't understand what's happened. All right, I'll come back. But just for a bit. Then I'm off. See you later, Chaz. Oh, you found him then? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, Chesney, you've had your sister worried sick. She must be so relieved. Yep. Ooh, brings it all back. Yeah, well, don't let it. That's all over with now. Chesney was back. Yeah, it was me that found him. Well, sort of. You? Oh. I seen him running through the gardens, so I just persuaded him to come in. Well done, you. Yeah, one step nearer to entering heaven. Oh, give up, Rosie. So, did he say why he ran off? Yeah. Well? Well, you're not gonna like it. How do you mean? He's far with this because she's seen John stay. Have you told him yet? No. I was waiting for you. Norris! Oh. Emily's got something to tell you. Oh. Uh, what? Well, it, it, it's uh, just that uh, there might be. Four members on our team. Well, I hope not. I mean, how can we call ourselves the triad with four members? Well, we could call ourselves the quadruple instead. Anyway, who is it? Um, Rita will tell you. Ramsey. Over my dead body. Oh, give over. If he's going, I'm not. Oh, don't be like that. Oh, you've got to come. How can we manage without your expertise? Well, you should have thought of that before you asked him. There's room for everyone. Is that man going to take over every aspect of my life? Norris, it's a pub quiz. Well, good luck with it. He might know that Canberra's the capital of Australia, but that's about it. You'll never come first with him. I can't believe the nerve of her. No, me neither. How long's it been going on, did he say? Sounded like a few weeks. A few weeks. Been seeing him from the start, more like. I think I was feeling sorry for her. Yeah, but she's not really done anything wrong, has she? You what? Well, Jesus forgave sinners. Why can't we? Uh, Jesus wasn't kidnapped and held in a house for five weeks. No, but Jesus was crucified, which I think's a bit worse, and didn't sell his story to the paper after it. Well, you both just shut it. Oh, I've had enough of this. I'm going to go and tell her to her. Yeah, I'll come in with you. Yeah, so am I. No! Wait, you... It's all the lies. That's what really gets me. Look, if you'll just give me another chance, I promise I'll be honest from now on. OK. Admit why you were really seeing Stip. I told you. I couldn't find a tutor, and Ken couldn't help. So See? You're still lying now. You're in love with him, aren't you? Go on, say it. I'll get it. No, I will. How could you? How could you after everything he's done to our daughter? Oh, please. And all this time you've been set opposite me at work, knowing that you're still seeing him. It wasn't like that. <sighs> you betrayed me. I thought we were friends. We oh! Not anymore, we're not. Look, look, I'm sorry, I, I can't deal with this right now. Don't walk away from me. Oh. I want answers. I want to know what's going on in that sick little mind of yours. You can't just barge in here. I'll do what the hell I like. She does. Fuck so. Well, come on. I want to know. I'm not doing anything wrong. You what? You actually think it's all right after what he's put us to? Whoa! Oh, oh, you're right. Oh, 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 sleep oh, sell it. Oh, sell it. Sell it. Get off it. Stop it. Just let go. That's oh, enough. Let go, Sal. Let go. Oh, 
lock you up. Lock you up in your own attic for a month and see how you like it. Sally, calm down, eh? How can she still be seeing him? I've done nothing wrong. She can't even see it. He's a criminal. He's a kidnapper. Yeah, and he's being punished. <sighs> not enough if you ask me. Can you not see what you're doing? I thought he was mad. Now I know you are and all. I was trying to help Chesney with his schooling. Oh, that's your pathetic excuse. It's not an excuse, it's the truth. You could have got any one of a million people to help Chesney with his schooling, but no, you chose a man who kidnapped and terrorised my daughter. Because I didn't know who It's else. like saying, oh, it's all right, he's a criminal. He's forced my family into a living hell for five weeks, but oh, so what? He's still a good teacher. Oh, she's off her head. Oh, Rose is right, you're off your head. You're sick and you're dangerous. You know what? They should lock you up and all. You never know. They might like two nutcases share right. a cell. That's enough. Uh, who rattled your cage? Dad. Come on. We've made our point. She still doesn't see it, does she? Look at her. Thanks. Don't thank me. I agree with him. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I have to have sand on my holidays. If I haven't got sand, it ain't happening for me. Mm -hmm. My mum's allergic to sand. We'd have these family picnics on the beach, right? And she'd make us all sit dead still before she handed out the butties. And then she'd go, Right, now nobody move a muscle or there'll be sand everywhere. <laughs> see, see now, I like that gritty taste of a sandy butty. Yeah. Where'd you go? Um, we got wet in Ireland every year. Oh, except that one year when we went to Spain and we got sunburn. What about you? Whitby, North Yorkshire. Same time, same place every year. I loved it. I should take you to Whitby. I don't think so. Why not? Um, have you forgotten? This is a holiday romance. It'll be over in a few days. Just a few grains of sand in your shoe to remind you of me. <laughs> There's no point trying to make me change my mind. I didn't say anything. Did you say anything? I didn't say anything. Good. Because my decision is final. Once I make up my mind, it's like a steel trap. It snaps shut and that decision cannot be rescinded. One of the things I most admire about you. Me too. Who does he think he is? I mean, coming here, muscling his way into my life, usurping me now from my own local pub quiz. He's got a nerve. He's taking liberties. Yes, well, I'm not going to rise to the bait. I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. You have taken the moral high ground. I have, yes. Mm. Well, you can hold your head up high tonight, watching telly in Emily's front room all on your own while he is winning the pub quiz. He won't win. His head's full of fluff. Probably addled by the heat. Mind you, there's not much by way of competition for him. Now, oh, wait a minute. Now, I see his plan now. He wants me to back out on principle so he can win. Eee, that's sneaky. And everybody knows you're the king of the quizzes. Yes, nice try, Ramsay, but no coconut. You don't fool me. I'm not going to stand by while he makes out my friends and neighbours to be dim-witted. No. No, I shall be there. And I shall be victorious. And that's my final decision. Steel trap <laughs> held shut by rubber band. <laughs> Where are you going? Out. Talk to me. Nothing to say. Then let me explain. You can't. I was seeing John to help you. So it's my fault? No! My sweet Chess, I'm sorry. It's not me that needs educating. It's you. Do you not remember what he did? Yeah, I remember. And you keep going back. Every time he betrays you. Are you on drugs? No! In that case, there's something wrong in your head. Please don't run away again. Either you dump him or I'm dumping you. Chess. You can see him as much as you want, Fizz. But I'm not going to be your brother anymore. You're on your own. Chesney! The sound of music. 
I don't like the sound of music. Oh, everybody likes the sound of music. Why? It's just nuns, Nazis and lonely goaters. Oh, don't you love the bit when they do the puppet show about the lonely goatherd? No, I don't. Oh, but, but it's bank holiday. Everybody watches the sound of music on a bank holiday. I, I've got the DVD. And... Well, if we're going to watch the sound of music, I'm going to uh, need to be anaesthetised. <laughs> oh, I love your sense of humour. No, no, I mean, I'm going to have to get a bottle and a couple of cans and an intravenous drip full of dimorphia. Oh, I'll come with you. No! Uh, no, 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 no. You just stay and plump some cushions and warm up those valves. I won't be long. Unless I get run over, which would unequivocally mean that there is a god. <laughs> oh, you crack me up. Oh. <sighs> High on a hill is a lonely goat herd, lay or lay or lay hip ho. How is she? Mad. Jess, she's not mad. She's visiting John Stape in prison. That is the medical definition of being mad. Yeah, well, maybe it's changed. He betrayed her. Twice. Chesney, look, people do things that they need to be forgiven for. That's just the way it is. Don't go weird on me. Ew, Ches, I'm not weird. Do you forgive him? For kidnapping your sister? Scaring her half to death and driving your mum and dad to the wit's end? Look, he pleaded guilty. He accepts his punishment. Yeah, I forgive him. Then you're as mad as my sister. There you go. Time to spend the bank holiday afternoon with your family. You got my wages? I'll pay you Friday as usual. And this was double bubble, yeah? Sorry, can't do that. What you said it was? I never said anything like it. What, you let me think I was on double all day today? It's standard practice. I asked you to work bank holiday so we could get back on schedule, not so I could get deeper in debt. Oh, come on, Joy. Everyone knows that bank holiday means double time. Check your contract. Think you'll find you wrong there. What contract? I ain't got a contract. <laughs> If he runs away again, Kirk, I don't know what to do. He, he won't listen to me. He's upset. We're all upset. He's been rubbish to you, and you still go and see him. It's like we care about you, but you don't give a stuff about us. I'm going to see if I can find Chesna. Um, yeah, I've got a visiting order, number 7286, John Stape. As soon as possible, please, it's really important. You're exploiting me? Ah, join a union. How can I join a union when there's only me? Uh, exactly, and I'm doing you a favour by giving you work at all, so just be grateful, eh? What's going on? That skim is trying to rip me off. I'm the only idiot who'd ever employ you. How can I be ripping you off? See the disrespect? I'm a good worker and he's refusing to pay me. Why won't you pay him? I am paying him. He wants double time. It's bank holiday. You want double time? Yeah, I am, yeah. Well, I'm not, and neither are you. How about time and after? You're useless. You don't deserve paying at all. Go get more work out of a monkey. Hey, give him a break. See the thanks I get for helping him out? You know, when his back was playing up, I was the only thing keeping him going. He's got a point. He's got a bad attitude. All he ever does is moan. So if I'm so bad, why take me on in the first place then? Because your uncle gave me no choice, that's why. You know what? You know what, that's it, cos I quit. <laughs> you quit? Yep. <laughs> see you in the morning. No, you won't, cos I won't lift a finger for you. You'll be back. We'll see. Sure. What are you looking at? No. It's creeping me out, him. Tell me to have a word. No, cos you're creeping me out and all. Well, I told you we'd have the place to ourselves. Yeah, but someone could come back any minute. Well, we could hide upstairs. Yeah, but what if someone comes back then? Well, you could go through the window. I'm not the type of girl that climbs out of boys' bedroom windows. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> oh, what a 
much for that, mind that. Don't bang me deck chair, they're only borrowed. <laughs> Hello, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, sorry, I'm getting sand on your carpet. <laughs> We've been to the beach. Are you drunk? Hey, I am not cheeky. I've only had one pina colada. I should go. Oh, no, don't go on our account. You can go in our paddling pool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to get back, so tell my dad that I won't be late. Oh. I'll see you later. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Oh. Oops. Where are we going, babe? Only I've got to get back by six, cos I'm the quiz master. She's going to prison to see John Stape. Is that right? I'm all right. Yeah, you're right. She was pretending he was helping with my schoolwork. But that's just a pack of lies. If you just let me try to explain. You lie to me, you lie to yourself. You probably even lie to him. I don't care anymore. Like I said, you're on your own. Are we staying or are we going? We're going. for a bottle. Oh, it'll go with these then. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you have a nice holiday? Oh, not really. Oh, did it rain? No. Airport delays? No. Rubbish hotel? Rubbish love life. Oh, holiday heartbreak. Afraid so. Come and talk to me. I'm a very good listener. Oh, you're an angel. <laughs> well, it all started in a karaoke bar. I met this boy. Totally out of my league. Mm. Gorgeous. I've got three bottles in case we've run out. Oh, yeah. you <laughs> With duty free booze. Oh. Uh, maybe we should leave that DVD till later with Sean being back. Oh, he was just about to tell me about his tragic love life. Oh, never mind my tragedy. What about your dad? You must be devastated. He's so sensitive. <laughs> we are actually devastated. Maybe we should drown our sorrows with the sound of music. I'm not spying on Tina for you. Not spying. Counselling. Counselling. Look, just ask her if she fancies Gary, all right? She did me. So be so. You're asking me to spy. I do the same for you. Yeah, because you're creepy and manipulative. And I'm quite a decent bloke. Well, she used to like creepy and manipulative, but now she just wants dumb. Do you have any specialist subjects? Oh, not really, no. I'm a bit of an all-rounder. I don't know much about um, <laughs> a lot of subjects. <laughs> He's being modest. He's very clever. He's got Emily on this tape. Well, you did say you weren't coming. I know, but I never expected her to stab me in the back. I'll be on your team. Oh, and, and Ken. Oh, we're going to need reinforcements. I said I'll be on your team. Yeah, exactly. Roy, Roy, come and join us. We we, we need a third man. I, I was just passing through, actually. Yes, all right, but just sit over there, see. Now, come on, this Any is for England. This week. <laughs> 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 oh, very good, very good. Yeah, play nice, don't be Yes, very good. Yes, Oh, cheers, mate. Yeah. So, have you got all your questions sorted? Yeah. Well, then you're going to be fine. There's lots of clever people out there. Yeah, you've got all the answers. Do you think she'll come back to work? I don't know. I suppose she has to. Well, everyone should know what she's been up to. Too rightly, Sean. Are you still giving her trouble? As long as I've got painkillers, I'm fine. I could do everything I used to. What if you're doing more damage? Yeah, Maradona played his whole career on painkillers. <laughs> yeah, and look at the state of him now, eh? <laughs> Wanna be a tea? Hey? For the pub quiz. I'm doing good on pop music and daytime TV. I don't think so. No, we're just having a quiet pint, mate. Oh. Okay. One, two, one, two. Uh, righty oh, if we could all have a bit of quiet, please, we can uh, start tonight's quiz. Go on, Jeremy Baxman. Now, the teams have been submitted. You've all been issued with paper and pencils, yeah? So, um, let battle commence. Question one. Who designed Sydney Opera House in Australia? Who designed Sydney Opera House in Australia? Was it the bloke who did the gherkin? Is that right? I, I think so, yes. Well, it better be. Question two. 
The caramel nut and chocolate bar, now called Snickers, was previously known by what were the name? A caramel nut and chocolate bar, now called Snickers, was previously known by what other name? I knew that. Best bank holiday surprise I've had in a long time. How are you? Yeah, better for seeing you. I never expected to see you today. Oh, it was a last minute thing. I had a visiting order burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> I couldn't resist it. Well, I don't care. I'm really chuffed to see you. Are things a bit better now? Things are a lot better. There's a, a trick you have to do with your mind. It's like you have to become another person. You have to be a prisoner, accept it, and understand that it will be over soon. And then you can survive. If you think you're better than everyone else, then it's hard. <laughs> Coffee, carrot, drinks are free. Oh. Fern and sunshine. Oh, do you know what, Luke? You certainly know how to treat a girl. After long down the beach, we always have fish and chips. <laughs> I thought we could watch the uh, sun go down over the water after this. What water? <laughs> I, hear <there's, laughs> I hear there's a pond over on the Red Wreck. Oh, God. Do you know what? I really think I should go home and get a change because I'm feeling a bit daft dressed like this. You were on holiday. Besides, you haven't had your pudding. I've got three different kind of flavours of ice cream in the freezer. Mm. Do you know what I'd love? A Knickerbocker Glory. And you shall have a Knickerbocker Glory. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. As soon as you tell me what it is. <laughs> OK, guys, come on, settle down, settle down, focus. We move on to the Oscars. Well, thank goodness for that. It makes a change from Weatherfield taxi routes and windscreen washer fluid ratio. Now, in 1976, the favourite to win the Oscar for best film was Taxi Driver. Oh. Oh. But it didn't win. What did? Hey, I know this. Oh, oh, don't say anything, don't say anything. Just write it down, write it down. I'm sorry for dumping all this on you. You've got enough problems in here. So now everyone knows. God knows what it's going to be like at work tomorrow. All I've ever done is lay you down and cause you suffering. You deserve so much better than me. Hey, I don't give a stuff about the Websters. What about Chesney? He'll come round. He just needs time. There's no way this can possibly work. I love you. You lose everything that matters to you. I can't let you do this. We have to stop this now. OK, come on, guys. Settle down, settle down. We have reached the climax. Gentlemen, do you understand the rules? Yes. Now, since the top two teams have finished with the same points, you've been nominated by your esteemed colleagues to face a final tie-break question. Here's that question. Who knocked Andy Murray out of the Australian Open in January of this year? Oh, yes, 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 I know it. And, and, and I know it. I, 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 I know this. And, I, I, I know um, it. Uh, Fernando Vadasco. Fernando... The desk. Correct me, Alvin! Oh, oh, the best man won! <laughs> he certainly did, yes. You know, Norris, I would never have got that. Oh, <laughs> Get some uh, drinks for Norris and uh, Roy and Rita. Cheers. Hold on, Norris. It? Honor, she died in a motorbike accident. She was on holiday with her mates in Greece. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. When I first moved in here, I wasn't sure whether to put the picture out, but then I thought, why not? She might have gone, but she's still a part of who I am. <sighs> Were you together long? Two years. Don't sound that long, but... It's not always the length of time you've known someone that matters. 
No, that's true. Come here. What's that for? Well, I think it's time the holiday romance got a little more romantic. You've not had your knickerbocker glory yet. I can wait. You can't do this. It's not fair. It's not fair for you to lose everything you care about because of me. But that's my choice. You can't come here again. You can't stop me. Actually, that's the one thing I can do. You've used your last visit in order. There won't be any others. John. I have brought nothing but misery into your life. I can't do it anymore. Don't do this. It's over. Go home and tell everyone. I won't leave. Please. I don't want to see you again. I don't want to hear from you. This is the right thing to do. Look at me. Say goodbye to me. No. Say goodbye. But I love you. You love me. John. Oh, please, John. Please. No. Come on, love. John. Get off me. John. Paper. Oh, I already know what's in it. I don't know why I bother. Michelle says she's got an aunt who knows all the news before it's printed in the Sligo Champion. She's not even from Sligo. Them stairs are like K2. Oh, feels like bone against bone. Well, I can either bankrupt myself for the old June Whitfield contraption, you know, the stair lift, or... And I'm presuming this is the good bit. Or... If you're after going home, which I suspect deep down you are, I'd keep a bit quiet about them hips if I were you. Why? I think you can get a better deal with a few carefully chosen words. I dare say I'm capable. Weren't you grumbling about that bedroom over there not so long back? If you can call it that. It's like a sea-facing room in a boarding house. So? So what? Keep up. Like you're suggesting blackmail. Well, it's hardly blackmail, is it? Not in your capable hands. More like grey mail. Lick of paint, and you might be persuaded. That's all I'm saying. I like you, Peter. I always did. Morning, Auntie Deirdre. Oh, hello. Oh, now listen. Next week. There's a sidekick on at the community centre. I'm thinking about getting me and our Eileen tickets. Do you fancy it? Uh, it's not really my thing. And I know Eileen's pretty cynical. It's Dolores Chilton. Last time I saw her, she spoke to this old lady's dead mother and that dead mother predicted snow. Well, an hour later we walk out and blow me if there's not a thick white blanket of snow all over at Red Wreck. Oh, well, perhaps a stage hand so it's starting. Or... Oh. Read the weather forecast. The weather forecast, she says. You don't get taken in by that old rubbish. See, the thing is, I think our dad might be in the local ether, loitering in the lobby of the afterlife. Yeah. I should check with Eileen first. <laughs> oh, yeah? He's playing up. Oh, he's in bed. <laughs> I'm your landlady, I'll have you know. I've been to impose a curfew a lot. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Miss World meets Taggart. Summer 09. <laughs> anyway, listen, I'll fill you in later because I'm late for work. Uh, well, as long as you're enjoying yourself, that's all that matters. And you'll be in Stoke all day? In that case, I'll see you in the morning. Bring me back a pot. 
I know you don't want to be here. But you have to face the world, just like I had to with the stigma of me poor old dad, may you rest in peace. Oh, I mean, you can't have it both ways. You can't have brass neck to come in and then spend all morning in kitchen weeping. This is true. This is a strict no weeping zone. Julie's no better, Aidan and Betty. Honestly, if Carla was here, she wouldn't stand for this. If Tony was here, he wouldn't stand for this. He's too lenient, is Luke. Just like the judge who put away John's state. This is true. Oh, Julie said Pissed had stepped off as he were over, and he never wanted to see her ever again. Can you imagine being told that by a convict? I mean, could you sink any lower? I probably could. Well, she wants to be careful. I mean, state's disowned her, Chesney's disowned her. She's gonna end up like that bag lady on precinct. Oh, she makes me feel sick of her. The one who's always shouting and dribbling. Val Morrison's a name. I once caught her eye, she gave me a right mouth. Yeah, well, she has a good side. Oi, Julie Fizz, back to your stations, please. Now. Oh, shut up. And they're not stations, they're machines. Uh, would you like a verbal warning? Would you? Julie. Uh, Fizz, I'm serious. Those tissues will be coming out of your wages if this carries on. I'll have to report you. Tony's in Stoke all day. I know. Me and the girls were just saying. We hope he doesn't fall into the trend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was telling him to bring me back a pot. <laughs> Similar jokes. Anyway, <clears throat> I've got a bit of business myself this afternoon in Cumbria, so you're in charge. Oh, smashing. Oh, and um, what's up with Fizz? Oh, women's problems. Oh? Tell me more. Sorry? I'm joking. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really sorry. I've been phoning you. I was in the shower. So, what's the crack? Well, I overslept. I usually rely on Ryan, which is a bit like the blind leading the blind, I know, but he's been off this week and so no alarms went off. Late night, was it? Ish. <laughs> what? Am I obliged to tell you I spent my evening now? I saw Luke, if you must know. We played catch with the beach ball and I went back to his. Oh, right. Well, that's fine. <laughs> oh, is it? Good, thanks. Just make sure you set your alarm tomorrow. Don't make a habit of it. <laughs> of what? Being late. So what we're going to do with you? Nothing. Yeah, why are you coming down to Rain's gig? I get butterflies about stuff like that. What? Music and girls? What do I have to dance? Yeah. Everyone's got to do a freestyle solo in the middle of the hall. <laughs> I'm only joking where you have to dance. Anyway, you'll take mine of things. In fairness, I'd love to see you dance. Pay good money to see that, Jezzers. This your pack lunch. Yeah, well, saves a bit of cash, doesn't it? <laughs> You've got to have a tree, haven't you? It's, uh, you know, the reward for eating no mid cheese and pickle sandwiches. Get off. Tanner on you and me growing old together. Ooh, I'd make that a fiver just in case. Take it. Thought of another one, by the way. Jodwell Bank school trip. Strangest places you've ever pulled. What were the best ones? Um, we had Wilco's, you buying paint, that was yours. <laughs> Preston Gildor watching snooker. Um, Wexford Station, waiting for a train. Cable car at Matlock. <laughs> yeah, well, sure you had lots of fun. Now, how can we help you? I actually came in to see if this gorgeous young lady would like to accompany me to Cartmel this afternoon. Ooh, the horses, come up. No. 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 Oh. It's too short notice, I'm afraid. I can't do without you, Michelle. Oh, come on, pal. She's my employee, pal. And the answer's no. Yeah, I think we better leave it for today, then. Why don't you just resign? You're leaving soon anyway. Come have a day at the races. No, I better not. I'm sorry. <sighs> Worth a try. I'll see you later. See you. I knew 
expect us to believe that that's the only reason you've been to see him? She was visiting him on a purely professional basis, strictly for Chesney's benefit. Yeah, because that's what I do, wouldn't you? For advice on homeschooling, please contact your local jail. He just told me what books to buy, and he set all Chesney's homework, like an essay on She Stoops to Conquer, which we never really got started on. Is that one of them smutty plays? Do you know something? I think brains are overrated. I bet you do. The amount you've spent with no return. Whatever happened to you and your A-level? Well, I was forced to give it up. Well, how were you a teacher? What was his name again? I think education's a joke. All you need is luck. A-level luck is what I could do with. An A-level in keeping your mouth shut is what you lot need. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea. <laughs> back early, Mr Strong. Yeah, I just on the M6 and they cancelled. Oh, the beggars. Do you think brains are overrated, Mr Strong? Is that what you lot talk about? Well, amongst other things, we've been discussing crime, education and love. Try discussing sewing. Exactly. Look, I'm sorry you're upset, OK? But you can't just swan off with your boyfriend. That's not how it works, Michelle. I pay you to work here. I mean, I don't care how good-looking you are. I beg your pardon? I've got plenty of experience with women, and I know what you like. <sighs> and anyway, if you would have turned up on time, you just might have stood a chance. Deirdre and I are concerned about your hips. Well, don't be. They're a lot better. Sorry? Fetch me a hula hoop and I'll show you. Up and down those stairs all day? Oh, they're a hop and a skip. I thought you needed Peter's help. No. <laughs> but you were saying the other day that... I mean, all that talk about the stair lift. Stair lift? You'll not get me on one of those. <sighs> well, listen... Deirdre's too proud to say this, but she misses you. Well, I don't miss that bedroom of mine. Don't you? Between Peter's stairs and that, the wallpaper's peeling off. The skirting boards are chipped. There's draughts of wind whistling in every direction. Wind swept, that's what it is. And it's damp. And it occasionally rains in there. Oh, come on, Blanche. That's a ludicrous exaggeration. Be that as it may. <sighs> well, maybe we could make it a bit more comfortable. How so? Make good use of your day, I see. Made more money than I made yesterday. Got talking to an old fella. Picked me three winners. My old man died in a bookies. What are the odds on that, eh? Very short at the time. Not a pretty habit. Yeah, well, now I'm unemployed. I'll get it any way I can. Had he, um... Had he won or lost, your old man? He'd won, as a matter of fact. Never got to collect his winnings, though, never made it to the counter. Did the bookie give them to your man? He did. Good. Right, now, you seriously need to forget about him, Fizz. I wrote to him at lunchtime. Saying what? Saying reconsider? Oh, Fizz, this is madness. But you read the signs, the bloke's in prison and he still don't want to see you. Could it be any more doomed? He's sparing me. Yeah, well, maybe that'll be his one saving grace. You sound like the girls. Only kinder. It was horrible today. Felt like school. Where's this letter? Come on, Fizz, rip it up. I've sent it. Oh, you haven't. 
I'm not daft, you know. Who said you were? I know what today was about. And he's not my boyfriend. You could have resigned on the spot, like you said. Yeah, well, I wouldn't do that to you. I appreciate that. So, what will you give me if I can volley this into that bin, eh? What will you give me if you can't? My best wishes. Okay, here Go on we in. go. Oh. <laughs> Wrong foot. Well? Here you go. What's that? My best wishes. Yeah, but I don't, I don't leave till Monday. Yeah, I know. So what? You don't have to open it now. There's no point standing around here. Right. Okay. Right, well, um, see you later then. Yep. Look who I've got. You can take down the bunting if you like. I want an apology. Otherwise, you can turn round and go straight back again. I am sorry. Good. I'm renewing the mothballs in our wardrobe. They've had a right go at me John Lewis trouser suit. Would it have killed you to sound like you meant it? I did. But you've already agreed to redecorate. So then, he says, well, you should have just resigned on the spot then, like boyfriend said. Yeah, well, you should have. I should have, yeah. Right, and then all afternoon, right, he's acting like nothing's happened. All upbeat. You know how they get when they're shamefaced. <laughs> all right, and then it gives me a card. Where is it now? A card? <laughs> yeah. Oh, have you not even opened it? Frighten what I might find. Some pitiful declaration of his feelings or oh, something. Get it open, go on. <clears throat> to Michelle, good luck, Peter. Oh, wow. He must want you bad. Hey, what are them? The Euro star vouchers are for Ryan. For if he wants to visit. You kidding? Well, Shad thinks that Ryan likes Tasman Beasley. I mean, did you see her tonight? As soon as they got off the stage, she was all over him. She even felt his bum. Shan seen it with her own eyes. As opposed to who? Sure. Did you see it? Not that Trump won't feel, no. Plus, still don't trust her. So you better stay clear of her. I thought she was going out with that Anton Scrivens. Or is it that Kenzie Judd? Shh, don't mention the Judd. What? What? Is Kenzie Judd the reason why you dropped out of school? I didn't drop out. It's a big woman. It's holding my eye, Redder. You scared of Phil? Phil? Wheelchair Phil? Don't be calling him that. Phil gave him a Chinese burn in infants, apparently. Been terrified of him ever since. So, if Judd's giving you aqua chairs, Phil's your man. And you'll have me for backup as well, if it comes to it. You? I thought you were against violence. What are you going to do? Forgive him into submission? You? <laughs> so are you sure about tonight? Yeah. We can sneak up to my room if you want. Is your mum going to be in? I'll tell her we're doing homework. My auntie won't mind. Mm, time's in bees. I touched your bum. Sarah. Do you think I like TB? Is that why you said you'd do it? Because you think I'll run off with her if we don't? No. Look, I wouldn't go near Tamsin Beasley. I wouldn't touch her with Phil's. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't touch her with Chesney's. <laughs> we don't have to do anything. We can actually do homework. Okay. <sighs> Ooh, sorry! <laughs> no, we, we were just talking. What, were your tongues down one another's throats? <laughs> It's all right, Ryan. I'm not the love police. Yeah, come inside. You don't have to stand out here. We were going to go upstairs and do some homework. <laughs> what, biology? <laughs> I should go. What? Homework didn't mean... Hey, I tell you what, though, Ryan. She's cute. Shut up. 
Is that Deirdre's? I left mine at Peter's. It's musical dressing gowns. You could have worn Ken's kimono. Has he told you about my room? I heard. Yeah, we'll pick out some wallpaper this week. Mine is the casting vote. Naturally. I fancy some of that stuff with a velvety texture. I fancy seeing the Rolling Stones one day. Pardon? There's a thing about them in here. Hey, look at Jagger. I wonder what waste those jeans are. Still writhing around at their age. It's obscene. I'm going to make some cocoa. I don't know what he wants, then. Huh. Oh. oh. I'm sorry, you should have said. No, no. No, no, come in. I'm sorry, I've just uh, just got out of the shower. Oh, it's Blanche's. Look, uh, we'll talk tomorrow. I'm sorry, I just... No, stay. no, stay. I'll... That's not right either, is it? Oh, I'll just uh, just put these on. I'm sorry, Michelle. Just... Sorted now? Yeah. Look, um, before you say anything, can I just say how sorry I am about today? I mean, the way I behaved, you'd think Simon's dressing gown was a perfect fit. And now you're buying my son presents to get into my good books. I should have let you go to Cartmel. I was jealous. That doesn't help. You know, those vouchers. I mean, they might be for Ryan to travel, but the present's for you, surely. It's a chance for you to see him while you're away. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I thought... No, I, I really do. I appreciate it. I like you, Michelle. I don't want you to go. <sighs> Why can't we just be friends? Why do you have to fancy me? It's not a particularly rational business, is it? I mean, I've tried not to fancy you. I really have. But quite frankly, I just can't get the hang of it. I mean, even the way you sulk today. I mean, you could drive a grown man crazy just by sulking. <sighs> Peter. Believe me, I don't enjoy putting me cards on the table like this. I really don't. And not for the girl who's going out with somebody else. Oh, I'm not going out with him. I told you, I'm, I'm just... Having a bit of fun for a change. Yeah. Well, I don't trust him. And I don't trust that other one. I don't trust that one you're going on tour with, either. I don't care who you trust. Stay in Weatherfield. Have some fun with me. Thank you for the vouchers. Hey. So what's the strangest place you've ever pulled? You ever tried to fly above a bookies? Try to flat above a bookies, you idiot. Joe, you know, I can't believe it's nearly June already. Where does the time go away? Eh? Are you all right? Yeah, why? I just seem a bit, I don't know, a bit. No, I'm fine. You just talked to Peter last night. Yeah. Now did it go? Yeah, all right. No, so what's wrong then? Nothing. Not had a row with Luke, have you? Okay, right. All right. Right, I'm gonna get the bathroom while it's free. Hey, right. I'm sorry if I stuck my foot in it last night. We shan. Don't worry about it. I've not messed things up for you, have I? Nope. Right. So is everything all right between you both now then? I don't know. When when are you seeing her again? Don't know that either. Day. Don't you get sick of asking that question? Sorry if I sound concerned. Because I get sick of being asked it. It's the same as it was yesterday and the day before and the day before that. Well, I won't ask again in that case. I'm sorry. It's just there all the time. Throbbing away. Driving you mad as well as me, I expect. 
won't last forever. <sighs> Sit down, I'll get you some breakfast. <sighs> Can't help going into work every day. Oh, staying off doesn't seem to either. May as well go in. Not much choice anyway if I'm to finish this contract. Gary not back yet? No. <laughs> Don't know that to moan or celebrate. You must be missing him. Yeah, but I had to carry him half the time. Could do with him this morning, though, whilst I got at doctor's. Has he not got another job? Hadn't yesterday when I saw him. Must be feeling the pinch. I'd say flat broke was near the mark. Oh, morning, Chess. How was your gig last night? Did you have a nice time? I'm going back to school. What? On Monday, when the orders are over. I've decided. What's brought this on? Can't stay off forever, can I? And what about the bullying? After I to stick up for myself. <laughs> Against Kenzie Judd and his mates. Ben and Phil said I can hang around with her lot if there's any trouble. They'll protect me. Right. Well, if you're sure that's what you want. It is. Oh, I'll, I'll ring the school and sort it out then. If you're doing this to stop me seeing John, you needn't bother. It's to stop me seeing you. I don't want to pass my exams next year. It's not like you're giving me proper teaching, is it? Well, no, but... As for you seeing him, you saw out my life. I don't care what you do anymore. Right, uh, I've got a few things to do. You'll, you'll be all right on your own, won't you? Yeah, yeah, why, why wouldn't I be? Well, I've got my mobile, you know, if there's any problems. Fine, yeah. So, um, did you think about what I said yesterday? No. What? Not even a, not even a moment's thought? We were 200 quid down yesterday. Never rains but pours. Hi, gorgeous. Hiya. I wondered if you were free tonight. Oh, I think I could be, yeah. You haven't got to work or anything? No, no, uh, not tonight. Oh, don't worry me, mate. I'm, uh, I'm off anyway in a minute. Right, we'll get some organised. Anything you fancy or shall I just surprise you? Oh, well, um, I'll leave it to you. You OK? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, yeah. I'll see you later, then. Bye. Bye. And that's what you really want, is it? See you about 12. <sighs> economics, you say? Yeah. I was a trainee economist in the Indian Treasury after graduating at the university, you know? Really? So can you explain price elasticity formula for supply and demand? Uh, Chaudhary Charan Singh was prime minister at the time. Who? He was a good supporter of the free market. You'll have studied free market versus uh, state-controlled economy. So you can't explain price elasticity formula for supply and demand. Oh, <laughs> Audrey, Audrey, Audrey. <laughs> How wonderful to see you. <laughs> Hi, Umid. Uh, you are looking radiant as ever. Oh, I bet you say that to all the hairdressers, don't you? <laughs> Only for the glamorous ones. Don't get away with you. How is your daughter? Uh, if that's not too impertinent a question. Same as ever. Ah, oh, still having problems with our gentleman friend? I think it's more me having problems with him, actually. Huh? So why not come later and tell me all about it over a drink? A, a problem shared? It's a it's... problem everybody knows about the next morning. I know. I would never divulge the confidence of a friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we had similar family problems. Yeah, yeah, I suppose we do. So then, how about it? Oh, go on. You've twisted me arm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how's the new Eric Clapton, then? All right. So you've heard of him, have you? Eric Slowhand, Yardbirds, Beano album, Cream. Of course I've heard of him. Yeah, all right. I thought I might be able to catch you out. It's the only bit of pleasure you know you get at my age. <laughs> 
You sure you're all right? Yeah. Everything all right with Sean? Uh, what's wrong? You had a row? Sort of. Whose fault? Mine, I suppose. OK, well, take my advice. Get round there and sort it out. She won't answer any of my calls. No, but she'll be glad that you're making them, though. You reckon? Oh, yeah, I guarantee you. If there's one thing a woman can't stand, it's being ignored, OK? Well, no one could accuse me of that. Oh, you've been trying to rush things, have you? I think I've blown it. No, look, they always like to make you suffer before they take you back, don't worry. That is if you want her back. Yeah, I do. I really like her. Well, keep on at her. Until she hears you out. All right. I mean, I can go on my dinner, then. Yeah, sure. Everything OK? Yeah, I'll see you later. See you, mate. Good luck. Bye, love. So, you two look like you're having a cosy little chat about something. Man talk. You won't understand. Shout us up. Any pain? Uh, across here, d down here. Bend forward. <sighs> Do I have to? Let's see how far you can get. Uh, aye. Hmm. No real improvement, is there? No. Nearly eight weeks. I'm wondering if we should give you a scan. Find out exactly what it is. You said it was a slip disc. That's what it looks like. A scan will tell us more. If you think so. You might need referring to an orthopaedic surgeon. It's not that bad, is it? If it isn't getting any better, well, it's better than it was. I could hardly walk at first, remember? Back at work now. You're still in a lot of pain, though. But it itself in time. How are you for tablets? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm running low, actually. I, I was going to mention it. I'll do you another prescription. You think it's definitely getting better? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll put you on a lower dose in that case. Um, are, are you sure that'll be enough? If it's improving, like you say. Stay on strong painkillers forever. No, no, and I, I, I don't want to, but, um, what? I'll come back in three weeks and we'll look at it again. <sighs> oh, can you stick a pickled onion on mine and all? <laughs> Rue up and get barn you, and you can eat your own flaming pickled onions. <laughs> Have you had a row with Luke? No. Well, you've been out of it since breakfast. You've only been seeing him five minutes. It's not Luke. Oh, it's not Peter again, is it? Michelle, just ignore him. You've been gone in a few days. Hmm. Can't ignore him, though. You are kidding? Nope. Against all my better instincts. <sighs> you do know his track record with women, don't you? And his drink problem. Yes, I know it all. You don't make these decisions with your head, though, do you? Well, you have a damn good try with men like him. Yeah, but if, if, if someone just gets under your skin, I mean, what, what can you do? And he's great with Ryan. Why, cos he buys him Eurostar vouchers? Oh, it's more than that. They just get on really well. I don't get this. You were furious with him yesterday. Yeah, and then I went to see him and we got talking. And... What, and he's give you some old flannel and you're falling for it? After you've slagged him off so much. And... Yeah, well, maybe it's called denial. And what about Luke? Do you know what? He is a lovely bloke. But he just doesn't do it for me. Not like Peter does. Have you told him? So what are you going to do? Only wish I knew. my dinner. All right, you've come all the way back here just for your snack. No law against that, is there? You got that? No. <sighs> Cornflakes for your dinner. Why not? You've only just woke up, haven't you? 
What's going on? Because oh, I ain't got a job anymore, have I? Hiya. Yeah. Huh. What'd the doctor say? She was quite pleased. Really? Said it was coming along fine. Well, that's not how it seemed this morning. Well, it just goes to show. I mean, it is better if you think how I was. Did she give you another prescription? Reduced strength. Well, that's a good sign. I've known cases where it's ended up in surgery. Not what she said about me. Excellent. A little bird tells me you are a singer in a band. Um, now and again, yeah. <laughs> a beautiful voice is a wondrous gift. Well, I don't know if it's beautiful, but... <laughs> let me hear and I'll be the judge. I'll tell you what, next time we're playing, I'll let you know. I was friends with Asha Bhosle back in India, you know. Who? You must have heard of Asha Bhosle. She made over 12,000 recordings and sang playback on 950 Bollywood films. No, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. You know the song, Brimful of Asha? Yep. That was a tribute to her. Really? I knew the band who recorded it. What, a corner shop? How do you think they got their name? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> it's perfectly true. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> to meeting you here. Oh, small world. Seven o'clock OK tonight? Uh, yeah, great, yeah. I'll pick you up. All right, see you later then. Don't you want to know where we're going? Well, you said you'd surprise me. Oh, by the way, David, just so as you know, Sarah's asked me and your mum over to Milan next week. You see? She just snaps her fingers and them lot go running. No, oh, jump at the chance, more like. All that shopping. So, that means you'll be in charge from next Wednesday, Natasha, my love. Fine, OK. Uh, could you lock up for me tonight? Cos I want to get off a bit earlier. Sure, have somewhere special? No, not real, love. She's hiding something. Oh, I wish. Hot day, I reckon. I'm too over hot flushes, let alone hot dates. <laughs> you see, you still not a straight answer. Deary me, are your life so boring? It'll be, mind your own business, next. Always a sure sign. <laughs> I'm having a drink with Umid, if you must not. Umid! Umid! Deb's on call. <laughs> yeah, now we're getting it. Well, come with me if you like, I'm just doing it, so stop in pestering me. Aye, aye. When's your next break, sire? Uh, oh, actually, Grant, can I go now? Oh, David, come on, it's only three o'clock. Oh, please, and I'll be back for the rest of the afternoon. <sighs> yeah, go on then, but don't be too long. Thanks. Oh, dear. <laughs> she was easy. Well, that's what grands are for. Crystal Ball says we'll have grandkids one day, and it'll be them twisting us round the little fingers. Not me, though, what? Crystal Ball, she's fading eyesight, senile dementia. Yeah, that's years off yet. It's only 540 months. What is? 45 years. Right, just say no to me. Okay. Look, it'll be a doddle. What? I know where everything is. We'll be in and out in like 10 minutes. No. No, no way. There's about five grand's worth of stuff in there. Well, then you can keep it all to yourself then, can't you? Oh, come on, I can't do it all on my own. Listen, I've done one stretch inside. I'm not doing another. What's this? Come on, I can talk some else. What is your deal with him? Luke taking you somewhere special tonight, then? To know. Don't sound very keen. I'm looking for Eddie. Oh, I've not been today, love. Uh. I've I need to check his passports in order. Are we going away? Paris next week for my birthday. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, has he arranged it? Oh, yeah. He's dead romantic when he wants to be. Don't be fooled by the air. <laughs> I'll be up you have a nice time. Of course, at the end of the day, it's not about how you look, is it? What isn't? Romance. It's about all them little things. Saying what you feel to each other, even if you find it hard. As long as it's nice stuff, obviously. Eddie needs about eight pints down him before he can do it, of course, but he gets there eventually. <laughs> I'm rambling, aren't I? Nice. It's a nice ramble. I'll leave you to it. Au revoir. Buku. <laughs> you haven't seen 
already have you. Oh, never mind, Daddy. What's this about our Gary getting the elbow? Oh, he's told you then. What happened? Oh, I don't know. He just came home from work the other day saying he didn't have a job anymore. Well, so McIntyre sacked him. Well, he wouldn't sack himself, would he? Can I give you a hand there? Oh, no, you're all right. An eight-month pregnant woman should not be doing heavy lifting. Well, it's eight and a half months, actually. All the more reason. Oh, go on, then. I wouldn't mind grabbing them heavy ones from me there. Too. That's great. Just dump them anywhere. Oh, thanks, Tony. No problem. Good turn for the day. Just before I dash back to work. Well, let's hope you'll have enough energy left for me tonight. I didn't realise we were meeting. We are now. Well, if you put it like that, I'll get you around eight-ish. See you then. Bye, Maria. Yeah, thanks again. You know, you don't have to mark your territory for my benefit. I'm not. Well, I was jealous of the attention he was giving you. Till he told me he's only helping you because he feels sorry for you. And there's no way he goes for pregnant hormonal women. His words. Here, yeah. on a word with you, sunshine. We had an agreement about you employing Gary. We did indeed. Take him back, or I could make life very difficult for you. That right. Sure, your missus would love to know you're in Oc to a dodgy loan, Chan. Hold up, hold up. What's he been saying? Don't deny you sacked him. He was asking for double time on Bank Holiday Monday. I said I couldn't afford it, which I can't. I'm practically doing this job for nothing as it is. So now I'm on my own working at half the pace I was, all thanks to your illustrious nephew. If you want to have a go at somebody, pick the right man. Sorry to bother you. I meant to give you this. It's projection seals for lad rags. Oh, right. There's a few things I want to discuss. I'll take a second. Yeah, sure. These figures should be under this heading. Ignore that paragraph. Rosie's redrafting it, but I thought you should see it first. Right, fine. So, happy reading. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? You don't seem it. No, I'm fine. And you don't mind me just popping round? No, of course not. Well, something's wrong. It's got nothing to do with business. So there is an it, then? Is it something I've done, something I've said? It's just... it's stupid. Well, it's nothing, then, so spit it out. It's Natasha. What about Natasha? After you'd gone outside, she was like gloating about how she's got a claws into you. And she said that you said there's no way that you could ever fancy me because I'm a pregnant hormonal woman. And that the only reason you're helping me is because you feel sorry for me. No wonder you're upset. <laughs> so is it true? Well, I did say I wanted to help, but the rest... What, it's a lie? It's an absolute, total and outrageous lie. guitar work last night, Ra. Cheers. Sean thinks you're it, but I suppose she's told you about a million times. Are you seeing her tonight? Is that your dad? Oh, yeah. Oi! I wonder what he wants. So here you are, you little scumbag. What's wrong? What's wrong? I'll give you what's wrong, as if you didn't know. Forcing yourself on my daughter last night. What? I trusted you, we yeah. I didn't do anything. And this is how you repay me. Pete! Honest, I didn't touch her. Chance, that's about to come right in. Well, I'll show you what I do to people who cross my family, shall oh, I? Whoa, mate, what, what's all this about? What's it to you? Just let go of him, mate, yeah? Or what?
Do yourself a favour, pal, and stay well out. That's not going to happen, sorry. Look, I don't know what your problem is, but he's just a kid. He's 17. And last night he slept with my underage daughter. That's my problem. What? No way, we wouldn't. Anyway, we had an argument last night. She didn't even stay. You expect me to believe that? Hey, just listen to him. Just hear him out. Come here. Come here. Look, I respect you, Mr. Powers. I respect him more than anything. I swear on my life. If he says he ain't done it, he ain't done it. He's a good kid. They don't come any better than him. Yeah? And what do you know? I know the truth when I hear it. And so do you. If I find out different... You won't. I'd better not. For both your sakes. I thought we'd dead meat then. You and me both, mate. Cheers. All part of the service. See you. See you later. See you. So this isn't a joke anymore. You're really planning something as we speak. And just so we're absolutely clear, you don't need me as backup. Exactly. But just to clarify my position, if you did really need me, I'd have to say no. Whatever you say. Because you know, I'm, I'm done living on the edge. That crazy cat you once knew no longer inhabits this body. Where was I? Not a clue. Okay, so my services aren't required, but you want Gary to think they are. Yeah, which is why you knocked me back in front of him. Well, see, now I feel like I've failed you. You know, you're my mate, man, at the end of the day, and I love you. Great, will you just get up? I should be there for you. No, you really shouldn't. I'm out of here. Who the hell does he think he is? I knew I shouldn't have said anything. You wait. Mum, it's cool. No, actually, Ryan, it's far from cool. The things he's accusing you of, for starters, is against the law. It doesn't matter, cos it never happened. Maria, tell her. I'm going round there. No way. Look, Michelle, you make things worse. He threatened you! Peter already sorted it. Peter? Yeah. He stepped up for me and said how great I am. Mr Powers didn't even have a comeback or anything. Oh. Still doesn't make it right, though, does it? Mum, just leave it, yeah? It's all fine now. And where exactly do you think you're going? I haven't finished with you, Buster. Not by a long shot. I'm not one for making a big head of myself. As if. Uh, but on that day, I was like Shiva himself. Here. Allow me to buy you a drink, William. Uh, if it's all the same, I'll get my own, thanks. I insist. It would be my great honour. Well, you put it that way. Half a bit of love, please. Uh, Umid's just been telling us how he took on the Mumbai Mafia. They tried to pinch his vegetable cart. Oh, eh? Little did they know that I am a Palwani wrestling master. Two minutes later, those seven fellows were kissing the dog and not a scratch on me. Wow. Oh, incredible. Mm, certainly one way of looking at it, yeah. Mm. Uh, I must say, all this fighting talk has given me an appetite. Are you sure you will not reconsider my offer of dinner? How can you say no to this face? <laughs> yeah, go on, do you know, I think I could manage a small bite to eat. <laughs> Smash it. Oh. <laughs> well, if you'll all excuse me, I'll bid you good night. I've just realised that I've got some very important paperwork that I need to tackle. Thanks for the drink, uh, and the entertainment. <laughs> One more round of drinks, Poppy dear, and I'll tell you how Vijay Amritra cheated me out of a role in Octopussy. You know that I trust you, love. Could have fooled me. Well, there is no smoke without fire. Something must have kicked him off. For the last time, I never slept with Sean. Look, <clears throat> right. I know you're at an age where you, you know, you get urges. Oh, oh, oh someone kill me. I, I'm just trying to understand. Funny that, because it feels like an interrogation. I'll get that. Well, it shouldn't, unless you've got something to hide. I can't win with you. Do you know what, right? You used to be able to tell me anything. Hi. Hiya. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. 
So you've heard then? Yeah. It's all sorted. I am so sorry. My dad's not a bad guy. He just flies off the handle sometimes. Mm, and you think that makes it all right, do you? Look, let's get out of here. We're just popping out, OK? OK, well, I'll tell you what, Rye. We'll finish this later, yeah? You must have a sixth sense or something. Woo! Only where certain <laughs> people are involved. <laughs> so, where are we going? We? Nowhere. You, on the other hand, can go to hell. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, don't play the innocent. What on earth possessed you to say those things to Maria? She spoke to you then. We are friends, remember? Oh, sorry, we were, thanks to you. Can I explain? I very much doubt it. I get jealous. I admit it. She pressed some buttons and I reacted. I'm not proud of myself, if that's what you're suggesting. Look, I'll make it up to her, I promise. This doesn't have to be a big deal. Unfortunately, I have to disagree. You see, while I can ignore your non-existent personality and mind-numbing conversation, I find jealousy a very ugly trait in a person. And believe me, it gives way to so many other baser emotions, like disgust and anger. Tony, you're scaring me. Then I suggest you get out of my sight. Please. Don't make me ask you a second time. Oh, Natasha, one other thing. Don't ever upset Maria again. I'd hate for us to really fall out. I thought you'd be ready by now. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I must have just lost track. You better get a rig along, cos the restaurant won't save the table. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, Luke, I'm, I'm gonna give it a miss tonight. Um, look. If I've done something... No, no, you haven't. It, it's Ryan, actually. Well, he's had a, a bit of a set-to with his girlfriend's dad and it's freaked him out. OK. Scratch dinner. Why don't we go for a drink, at least? I'd rather not. It's your last night. Yes, which is why I would like to spend it with my son. Sure. Well, have a good, um... whatever. See ya. Here. Well, there we go. Thought we had an agreement. But you can lose the attitude, all right, because we're not sleeping together. Well, what was all that about with your dad, then? I don't know. We got the wrong end of the stick, OK? Well, what do you mean? Good question. Sean won't tell us. Does it matter? Yeah, actually, it does, considering he almost obliterated me. Oh, look, Sean, if you don't want to say it in front of me, then fine. Look, you found a packet of condoms in my bag, OK? Oh, are you happy now? Oh, me sick. Leave you guys to it. Yeah, that's it, so Go on, go and tell God on me. Look, it's my fault, and I know that I should have been more careful. I tried to tell them they were mates, but he just went ballistic. Do I feel so embarrassed now? I can't even look at him again. You shouldn't have had him on you. Yes, I know that now, thanks. No, I mean, you shouldn't have had him on you at all. Not for me. Yeah, but I thought you wanted to. No, we're fine. Yeah, we are. That's a good one, then. I bet you can't wait. I'll be well glad to get out of here and all that. Oh, things will get better. That's just it. They won't. They can't. Cheers. Before you start about forgiveness and whatever, it's not about that, OK? What's it about, then? I don't trust her, all right? Simple as that. But you rebuild trust. What? Everything's one big lie with his. She's my sister, and I don't even know her anymore. Ah. 
our chairs. That's well said, that. Tell me about it. A problem shared is a problem heard. Do you like breathing? On second thoughts, ignorance is bliss. You two could be twins with those faces. Same again. Definitely. Bye, darling. Bye-bye. Oh, that was Sarah. You'll never believe it. She is planning an itinerary for mine and your mum's trip to Milan. The girl is an angel. According to the Bible, so was Lucifer. Oh, David, come on. <laughs> you got a second. Fine, then. What the hell happened to you? Just had a debt to collect on. Should see the state through the book. I love Italy. Oh, I haven't had a good shop in ages. Hey, if you need a bag, slave. Oh. I prefer the history myself. You know what? I always fancied being a Roman legionnaire. You should get this one together with Umid. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I better be going. I'm picking him up. Uh, would you tell my grandson I think he's keeping very poor company? Hmm? So what do you want? I know you've got a house job lined up and I want a piece. You're not very big on fall play, are you? I'll just tell it how it is. Don't forget, Graham, the bloke's a liability. You need a pro, you need me. And when I'm in, I'm all in. No half measures. I'll think about it. I want an answer now, yes or no. All right, you're in. Good, you've got sense. When and where? You'll know soon enough. Well, don't you trust me? As you've said, you've got sense. Fair enough. Layers, then, yeah. Layers. We're in business. Hi. Where's Big Daddy second you, then? What? Oh, do you know, if you're referring to Umid, somewhere tasteful, I hope. <laughs> well, in that case, you best tell him to leave his spandex later at home. Oh, 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 very <laughs> funny. Hey, what are you seeing in? What? What are you seeing in? Good company. Ah, if I won't admit it, the man's a joke. Look. Well, he's doing no harm, so just leave him be. You're not falling. I mean, oh. well, why is it then? Bill, pl look, he's very funny. He makes me smile. And you know, right now, that is exactly what I need in my life, actually. Are you having second thoughts about Luke? Nope. Oh. So what do you want to do tonight then? Don't know really. I've done most of me packing, so I'll probably just wait for Rai to get back. Mm. Reckon I should thank him. Thank him? Peter. You know, for stepping in like. I should really, shouldn't I? Yeah, I suppose so. Where are you going now? Mm -hmm. No time like the present. Are you sure this is a good idea? Just want him to know how grateful I am for what he did. Yeah, well, don't be coming across too grateful. Give me some credit, please. Don't be long. <laughs> mm. Looks like it's just you and me, honey. What do you reckon to these sausages? Eh? Gorgeous or what? Yeah, they're nice. After your tea, fetch us your uniform so I can get it washed and ironed. It's all right. Hey, you can't go back to school looking like some of the cats dragged in. I said it's all right. Oh, we're only offering. Well, don't. Look, I'm not being ungrateful, but I don't want anything from you, OK? Not this. Nothing. From now on, you do your thing and I'll do mine. With any luck, you won't even know I'm here. Listen to yourself. Come on. I know we've been through a bad patch, but you can't mean that. It's the only way this is going to work. Really? Well, I'm not prepared to live like that. Then I'm gone for good next time. Don't you dare threaten me. It's not a threat. I'm just being honest. Please. Chairs. I'll make it up to you. At least let us try. What's the point? You can only go and blow it again. I don't deserve this! No, you deserve John. <laughs> it's a 
what's that? Hey, Tash! What's wrong? What's happened? You're telling me you don't know. No, what? I've been dumped, Maria. Are you happy now? Oh. I don't know where you and Tony are going, and it's none of my business. Hey, listen, we're friends, nothing more. Whatever. All I know is you made me feel like dirt, like I'm nothing. Be honest. This isn't sour grapes. Tony scares me. The guy is bad news. Watch yourself around him. Watch yourself big time. Hey. Is this a bad time? No, no, not at all. I'll just, uh, I'll just close Simon's bedroom door. He's only just gone to sleep. Asleep at this hour? You're good. Yeah, well, you know, I have my moments. Actually, it was a combination of football practice and, uh, and my incredibly monotonous reading voice. I swear, give me that Harry McClary book and I'm like a human anaesthetic. Hey, what? Sorry, I lost that's, there for a minute. That's good. So, that's a nice surprise. Do you want to have a seat? I can't stay. Oh, no. I'm more boring than I thought I am. Uh, I just um, wanted to say thank you, you know, for looking out for Ryan. It was really brave of you. I didn't exactly take a bullet for him, did I? <laughs> well, all the same, you know, you, you didn't need to involve yourself. Just wish I knew how that guy got the wrong end of the stick in the first place. I've no idea. And to answer your second question, I'm positive that Ryan's not sleeping with Sean. Ah, uh, no. And that is absolutely all that you're going to get from me, OK? So well, can I... I interest you in a, a cup of the finest Darjeeling? I... Only I thought the hero was supposed to get a last wish. Uh, I think um, you'll find that that's the condemned man. Well, I'm a recovering alcoholic, it's the same thing. Please, Michelle. It's one thing having to drink endless tea, but having to do it on your own. Go on in. You twisted my arm. So she came running to you. That girl beggars belief sometimes. She was in bits, Tony. Of course she was. She just said her meal ticket cancelled. Is that all? Well, didn't she give you the gory details? I want to hear it from you. Well, that's something. You want the truth? The relationship wasn't working for me. I tried to put an end to it, but she wasn't having it. Yes, things did get ugly. But since when was breaking up ever pretty? You scared her, Tony. Don't tell me. She told you to stay away from me. It's just some of the things that she was saying would... Disturbing. That's Natasha in a nutshell. Jealous and neurotic. Why do you think she made those lies up about me? All right. Maybe I did go a bit over the top, but when it comes to you... Maria, I can't change the way I am. I'm not asking you to. Look, if you want... I'll go round and apologise to her right now. Oh, don't be silly. Well, this is between you and her. I shouldn't have even got involved. You were just looking out for a mate. Yeah, well, so were you. I'm glad you see it that way. I'm glad that this unfortunate incident hasn't damaged our friendship. It won't. <laughs> Women, eh? When the hell am I ever going to learn... Well, make half decent brew. Well, I'm getting better. Hey, who knows, I might graduate to a pot and loose leaf soon. Oh, steady, tiger. You don't want to run before you can walk. <laughs> How long's it been now, then? Sixty days and counting. I think it's great, you know, the way you're coping. Yeah, well, you know, good days and bad days. Still. It helps having the right company. And being a dad? Yeah. 
That's definitely something else I'm improving at. <laughs> well, you must be doing something right. It's usually almost impossible to get our Ryan to open up. Not since our Liam. Well, he needs a male influence in his life. What? You mean me? Oh, I'm not sure most folk round here would agree with that. Yeah, well, I'm not most folk. No, you're not. And that's why I wouldn't have got through this without you. I wouldn't have got this far. Don't talk rubbish. No. You know, you never judged me. You didn't even judge me after the fire. You know, and that made me think, well, if somebody like you, somebody as amazing as you ain't turning the back on me, then, you know, I must have something that's worth saving. Well, I see plenty worth saving. And don't let anyone ever tell you anything else. I wish you'd seen it sooner, Michelle. I wish we didn't have to say goodbye. <laughs>